Before I start the show, I want to invite all our Lower Mainland listeners to the Vancouver premiere of TGR's Flying High Again. Join F and Rad in celebrating the latest film from Mike Hatchett, the guy who brought us a TV series, on the big screen at the Rio Theater November 9th. I've linked to tickets in the F and Rad Instagram bio, or you can buy them at tetongravity.com. This is the one movie I want to watch on a big screen. Plus, we're going to be giving away prizes and you can drink at the Rio. So come to the Flying High Again premiere at the Rio in Vancouver, November 9th. Early show at 6, the late show's at 8. Hey listeners, this is the and Rad Snowboard Podcast and I'm your host, Eric Trollson. Welcome to Season 9. When I look back at the last eight years of my life and how it's changed, I'm just blown away. I've gotten to meet and ride with so many of my childhood snowboard heroes, guys like Jamie Lynn, Sean Farmer, Dave Downing, the Hatchet Brothers, Blaze Rosenthal, Chris Roach, Terrier, Nicholas Mueller, like what the actual hell. So I quit my job as a mailman over the summer and I'm trying to make F and Rad my full-time gig. So that means there's more ads up front this year. Also, there'll be a Patreon. Sorry, it's not ready yet. It will be ready shortly where you can access weekly exclusive content plus ad-free episodes. Wow, I've also been slow getting my merch going. Man, I should have had t-shirts in like season two or something or one even. But I'm going to release a limited amount of a Mark Fankhauser F and Rad t-shirt on Printful to coincide with this episode. You can get that by going to our Instagram link in bio, which will take you to our Shopify, or you can go to the F and Rad Shopify, buy it directly. I'm going to do 25 of those and then cut that off. I'll be dropping cool merch throughout the year. So this is the episode many of you have been waiting a long time for. Let's hit the ads. Welcome back, everybody. The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers. This game-changing tiny home camper is built by Never Summer in Denver, Colorado. Inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture, these 12-foot lightweight campers at just 1,500 pounds are a masterpiece in design. Enjoy sleeping like royalty under the stars on a true queen-size mattress with a moonroof in your secure home-like bedroom surrounded by ample ventilation and shades for privacy. Stay cozy with a propane heating system and enjoy well-lit interiors powered by rooftop solar panels. And when it's time to cook, ingenious exterior countertops include a sink and a double burner stove all under a giant bat wing awning. Skyview Campers, redefining adventure. Visit skyviewcampers.com to start your journey today. Wired Snowboards offers quality hand-built custom snowboards built and tested in the coastal mountains. Wired has built me several one-of-a-kind boards that have stood up to my daily shred habit. In fact, my first Wired Chase is still my go-to PAL board after seven seasons. Wired brings my imagination into existence. That's fucking rad. Check out wiredsnowboards.com and design yourself a board to last a lifetime. Fixed snowboard bindings are simple, durable, and functional, featuring tool-free adjustments and a lifetime warranty on buckles and base trays. Fix makes bindings you can count on. Jason Bros created Fix after a bald face trip where his bindings failed and he vowed to build the world something better. I've been riding Fix buckles for the last three seasons and they're still like brand new. He's on to something. Fix snowboard bindings built better. Rip Curl Outerwear is designed to search further in the snow, offering strength, durability, and all around performance. Whether you're venturing into the backcountry or on the resort, Rip Curl Outerwear's got you covered. With a team that includes Chris Rasman and DCP, you can be confident that Rip Curl prides itself on creating jackets and pants with technical features that will keep you comfortable on your search. Outlive your friends with New Green's Turbocharged Organic Drink Mix. 
New Greens is a great tasting, 100% organic, vibrant green juice mix, and they include sprouted seeds that leave the food in its most natural, healthful, raw state for fast digestion and maximum health. Use code FNRAD at newgreens.com for 20% off your new daily breakfast routine. New Greens, my daily go-to. Stay tuned after the show for a chance to try New Greens for free. For over 35 years, the Boardroom Snowboard Shop has been Vancouver's premier snowboard shop. Check out the Boardroom's unmatched selection of snowboards, bindings, boots, outerwear, and everything you need to shred. The Boardroom's passionate staff and performance guarantee ensures you'll love what you buy. And remember, the Boardroom ships to anywhere in North America. So go to boardroomshop.com or visit their stores in Vancouver and North Van. The Boardroom Snowboard Support also comes from Grouse Mountain, Mount Seymour, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. I've set the intention that FNRAD Season 9 will include a big focus on mental wellness, so I'm stoked to be partnering with The Haven on beautiful Gabriola Island. The Haven's 40 years of experience sharing knowledge about how to live more effectively as humans has helped many people. I just got back from a five-day retreat and I'd describe the experience as transformative. I know I've spoken a lot about psychedelic assisted therapy, so I feel the need to say this was not that and it was just awesome. The Haven has a full range of programs based on a foundation of radical honesty. Tap into your inner resources and liberate yourself from self-defeating patterns within the context of a group, in it together, helping to provide empathy, witnessing, and self-acceptance. Go to haven.ca for more program information and use FNRAD10 at checkout for a discount. Also, feel free to DM me your questions about the Haven. This week's guest is Ethan Stone Forche, a solid character in the snowboard community. Ethan invented baseless bindings and the toe cap strap. He ran Tech 9 for years and became a senior photographer for Snowboarder, where he became one of the most successful snowboard photographers of all time. Ethan started the bomb hold with Chris Grenier and a few months ago was let go from his position as co-host Aside from a vague video explanation from Chris, not much has been revealed about the nature of Ethan leaving. A few weeks ago, I went to Salt Lake City to get Ethan's side of the story. He's supported by his bombhole fans and was able to set himself up with a home studio and a plan to launch Stoney's Buds, his own podcast, which you'll hear more about in this episode. But anyways, let's get rolling. Let's roll. Let's, let's roll do this. Thing. What do you got to say up front? This is what's up. Welcome to the Stoney's Bud Show. I am so stoked to be here. I mean, I'm stoked that you came out yeah, as well. Thanks for having you me. You know, we've been talking on the phone. Um, everything went down at the bomb hole. And uh, I don't even know. You just reached out to me. Well, I had my own, like, you know, I, I made up this story in my head. And yeah, I what was going and, on. And, and kind of just, like, reconfirmed what I thoughts. thought I knew. Yeah. Yeah. But you reached out and it was cool. We just yeah. kept talking. Yeah. And you know, I is that we're gonna get into this story about uh, the bomb hole and the future. But right now, let's talk about this show and its equipment because uh, I'm in a phase where I probably would have been. I don't know. I might have had to put the show off until uh, next season. Or you can't just start a show in the middle of winter. <laughs> sure. You can, I guess, but it would just be rough goes. But. Uh, you know, a lot of people were reaching out to me. They missed hearing uh, this gravelly voice. <laughs> I quit smoking cigarettes, so one of my voices is going to get all, all rubbery. Dude, you sound way <laughs> Does better. Does it sound better? Oh, my God. There were times in the late bar where I, might fall days over. <laughs> where I was, like, worried for you. Like, you could <laughs> couple you people hear you. <laughs> dude. Yeah. I got to be yeah. honest. I was smoking cigs, dude. Yeah. You know, I quit for 10 years once. Wow. And I went on a trip to Japan. Yeah. And, yep. uh, and let this be a lesson for anyone who's quit smoking out there. Um, you can't just go back and have, I can have a couple, dude. It's cool. Because I went to Japan 
And at the time in Japan, people are smoking in hotels. They're smoking at dinner. They're, Fuck yeah. they're like right up. They're basically smoking in the shower with you. <laughs> You're taking a shower. I mean, <laughs> the people are smoking. And I'm like, I might as well have a cigarette. Jesus, I'm smoking them anyways. Yeah. Bam. I went in deeper and harder than I had ever smoked. And then here I am. I've been quit now for a couple months. And dude, it's just, you still jones. But wow, like I'm sleeping better. Yeah. I had this thing where I was... I don't know if anyone's a smoker out there, they probably experience this. Like, dude, you all of a sudden wake up in the night and you've been sleeping weird yep. and you can't breathe. Right. And I thought to myself, dude, what's going to happen when I'm like, and I guess I'm getting older, so I'm thinking this way, 75 years old or something, and I I have to have like freaking a tank of air next to me or I something. Think, I, yeah, I think it's eight, I think it's eight years your your lungs go pink again, right? Like, Dude. So you won't, you'll be good. But I had this, it's only happened to me twice, actually. And I talked to a couple other people. T-Bird used to smoke. He said he's, he's had this happen. So I think it's a thing that happens. Just woke up in the middle of the night, couldn't breathe at all. And I just, like it's like a panic attack. And then uh, I quit that morning. Oh, wow. Good <laughs> Cold turkey, never yeah. had another one. Nice. But, uh, and I can actually, uh, yeah, just, there's so many things. It took a little while, but then you're all of a sudden you're, you go through this period of <laughs> like oh, hacking yeah. and yeah. the loogies and but yeah, it's, it's feeling great. So if anyone's thinking of quitting, smoking, quit. I, I also quit uh, about January. So I quit. oh, you did? Yeah, I quit in January. Were but you full like pack plus a day? I, no, I was a guy who uh, smoked what he drank, and um, but I had to have a pack because I smoked enough. Made when you comfortable, I drank. and you had the you yeah. needed that. And well, I just didn't like bumming them off people because yeah. like in Canada, you get to a point where it's the, like come Canada, on. Canada, the, the, there's places where you're buying cigarettes and like you just, give the guy a twenty, yeah, you get back like four bucks. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're like fuck that pack was just yeah. fucking fifteen, sixteen bucks. So you can't just be that dude. No, like you used to be like. You'd offer a toonie or a loony, which is a Canadian I weird love loonies money. and toonies, yeah. man. Um, but now people kind of like, and also I'm getting older. Yeah. I'm not that mooch guy. No, so anyways, you can't be. You got to be a guy that supports himself, what right? Ha- what happened for me was very psychological. Uh, my dad offered me a smoke. Really? Never, he smokes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He has my whole life. In the car. Windows closed. Ooh. On a road trip for hours and hours. Windows closed. <laughs> Windows closed. It's Canada, man. It's cold as fuck, man. Windows closed. That's true, Hot dude. box in the car, Siggy's, just one after the other. <laughs> like, so I grew up with that Did he shit. realize that you were smoking, too, at that point? Did he realize that? No. I know. I, I don't, like, no. It dude, wasn't like he I always had this smoking. idea for those parts of Canada. Um, man, I had a name for it and everything. Uh, to create these little guy cigs, because it's so cold out. Yeah, you can't go out and smoke Shorter cigs, dude. dude that had a name, dude. That's a great idea. Great idea, dude. That's you have a this really little great idea. Because otherwise, you're like three drags. I can't be yeah, out here yeah. anymore. My dad just told me <laughs> the cigarettes got more expensive, right? Like, and that's a quick help to try. Tax and, went up. And then they made a five pack or something. So, like, oh, I've seen those. Yeah, I man, thought those were like a joke or something. Yeah, no, it's like a five pack of smokes. So, Australia you, made a 50 pack, and yeah. I don't know what that cost, but, oh, but Jesus Christ. Geez, they're like crazy looking, dude. It's like the, having a box of crayons in your pocket. The crazy thing about smoking, like, I also had a similar experience. I smoked and then I quit. For over 10 years. Yeah, you too. Dude, that's crazy. And then what I we went thinking? to Cuba. And Cuba's You're got... You're smoking Cubans? So I was smoking these little Cuban cigarettes with filters. I've seen those. Like, yeah, I've oh. seen those. Those are... And I was having them only on special occasions. And then... Yeah, you're that's fucked. the thing. Then you start at special occasions. Yeah. You know what the bummer for me was? So I started smoking. I was on a trip with like T-Bird and Bridges. And then all of a sudden T-Bird quit smoking. And like, I only started smoking because you were smoking. <laughs> he quit. And then the icing on the cake, dude. Pat Bridges quitting smoking. Yeah. And telling me how great he feels. And right. like, oh, you're still smoking? And right. Like, the day that Pat Bridges quit smoking, that's like hell freezing over. <laughs> everyone should quit. The whole fucking planet. Anyways. <laughs> so uh, you might notice this equipment, right? Like, yeah. I was, uh, you know, this. we'll get into the separation and the bomb hole. And yeah. I'm still at a period where I wouldn't financially be able to get this equipment, but I know I wanted to keep talking. I had people hit me up on social media, like missing me. And by the way, dude, the love from everyone was such a special thing. Like it is incredible. Something I never expected. Um, I would just get DMs that said, 
I love you <laughs> from oh, grown men. That's fucking like great. straight up. The only thing they said is I love you. That's that so was sick. the shit. And then other ones just saying, I'm missing you. I hope you're okay. Like whatever's going on, like it was incredible. And, uh, and I guess maybe, you know, my good friend Trent Bush, you know, saw everything that was going on and he was like, you know what, you know, people want to get you back on the air. I'm going to do a GoFundMe. Yeah. And or he like was like, "Are you? Is that okay?" Like he, I kind of did it all up, and I was talking with him at that yeah. time because like for the first few days, it didn't really go anywhere because nobody was sharing it yet because we were yeah, kind of tentatively I didn't even going <laughs> yeah. like, "What are we?" I never like, done one, ra- you yeah. know. Like it feels yeah. it's a I like mm-hmm. I wouldn't have just done one myself. It, it's a weird thing, you know. Too it's weird. like yeah, it's like Too a, weird. It's like what do you do? But then. He did this, and uh, it was such a special thing. And I remember I guess, the day that it yeah. started going up. Remember, yeah. it just well, went, I, think like, I finally it posted was going it. Like bam, once yeah. you posted it, it, was like bam, bam, bam. Like I'm looking at it, going, "That's six thousand dollars in the first yeah. like, few hours or something." It was insane. And I uh, apparently, like, I didn't even know this, but Trent like needed some work one day in between things, and I like. Without even thinking about it, he's a talented dude. Of course, you want to design some boards, you can design some boards. Yeah. But it was like a special thing to him that yeah. I just thought it was, uh, you know, like, dude, you're dope. Of course I want you to do some boards. I didn't even think it was a favor to me, not him. Right. And he, him and I have been very tight. He sponsored me, dude, when I was 18. Like, through. It's funny. J2 told Justin Hostinek, yeah, who was the team manager of uh, Twist. Yep. He was like, you're sponsoring Eastone. Oh, not wow. like a question. Yeah, yeah. And Justin finally told me this, I think, a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it wasn't a question. It was like, you're sponsoring You <laughs> ripped, man. You were a ripper. But it was just funny that Two's implemented that. And so <laughs> Trent and Troy and Justin um, put me on Titan, which was their, like, oh, offshoot. Oh, I remember Titan. And uh, I ended up getting, we went to a shoot um, with Two's and Merriman, rest in peace, both of you guys. Oh, wow. Um, I got Two's on this mug right here, which is dope. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about those at some point. But uh, I ended up getting the cover of the uh, Titan catalog, which is cool that Justin shot. Not even action, just catching a pigeon. Or not a pigeon, a pigeon. <laughs> a backcountry pigeon. Do those exist? <laughs> what the fuck is <laughs> no, that? No, it was just a freaking bird. <laughs> how sick would it be if there was backcountry p- pigeons? But uh, it was a bird. I'm like catching. You know how they land? Just you don't even have food. They just land yeah, on your yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were doing that. I think we were in uh, like Aspen or some something like that, somewhere in Colorado. Whiskey Jacks. It was. Is that what they are? Yeah, they're not backcountry pigeons. <laughs> I wish there was backcountry pigeons. That's a because shirt. I was <laughs> you and a fucking pigeon. <laughs> a pigeon. <laughs> Dude, backcountry pigeons, you get them flying in formation. You yes. can find out what the other crews are doing. You can communicate back oh there. <laughs> Messenger backcountry pigeons. That's, that's the only way to figure out what's going on back there, dude. There's no cell service. That's so good, dude. That's so good. That's some good, good shit right there. <laughs> Better than an inReach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we, uh, Trent gets this thing going, man, and the, the people came through, dude, and it was so cool. I don't think he knew how much money I needed, so he just... Threw a number on there. It was like 20K, which is too much. I didn't need that much money. It was more like 10 to 15, 12 to 15. Money. I'll take that. Money. I mean, you need it, but like, do you need, like, how much? I mean, there's still stuff I need, but eventually I'll be able to, you got, you got to every, get there. You got everything you need here. You got three cameras yeah. set up. You got two lights. You got four mics. You got four yeah. desks. You, you just, you went all out and got the right got, shit. Yeah, I did a lot of research. Yeah, which and, is good. And uh, I'm actually going to, uh, and I think I mentioned I would do this. Um, I'm going to put it all either in the Patreon or in the Discord. Yeah. A full list on uh, basically a play by play on how you get a podcast going. It's a great this idea. This is the equipment. It's a really good idea. Um, kind of a document, a little kind bit of, of video. Ruins my business of selling people podcasts. <laughs> no, you can just take this as your sheet. Dude. I'm actually going to go sit in on it and just <laughs> use your, just record you talking. <laughs> I actually just put a recorder on you, and yeah, there it is. Perfect, perfect. Um, Wireless no, but mic. that's yeah. This is what to buy. Your yes. thing is there's a lot more to it than just what to buy because you can go you can go look online and figure it out. But you you're sitting down here kind of showing the rope, the step by sure, step. And, sure, sure, sure. And that's big because and I'm just joking around too. Yeah, but I'm it's uh, the people came together and uh, it's it's freaking awesome. The love I felt um, was was huge, and and I'll tell you what, dude, you're sitting there. It's real easy day one of uh, of not being part of uh, the bomb won't be. I'm gonna start a podcast. Yes. Day two, day three, day seven. I'm gonna do a podcast. Mm-hmm. Day 
45. Fuck, can I do a podcast? Like, the the confidence. I mean, you got to stay. You got you to, like, push. You got to. And it's with anything. You know, the, like, anything you're going to do. The longer the procrastination, yes. the bigger the the push to not do it is. Yeah, or, you haven't or the, done it that for voice really in your head. Time. The voice Just gets bigger. Like, uh, this is going to yeah. be harder than I thought. Or yeah. do I want to do this? Or, yeah. or what are the other options? Like, people start hitting me up with some different things. And it's like. Fuck, like, do what do I do here? Can I do this? Do I want to do this? And you know what? This is what I want to do. I, I love never, it. You know? I never had any doubt about it because the money was coming in, and you're so convincing that this is what you want to do. And yeah. I don't just Well, mean, there's more that just that voice in your head. Right. But you shut right, it up right, and you right. just get back to work. <laughs> the, conv- the convincing thing wasn't just what you were saying to me while we were talking. It was... I've seen you on the mic. Yeah, and and when you're on the mic, you are you're meant to be there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I love it. You know, it's something yeah. I really enjoy. You're the first podcast guy to have a catchphrase. Yeah, <laughs> very first snowboard yes. podcast guy to have a catchphrase, which is uh, exciting, right? And it people probably, I don't know, cue it up. Cue it up. How are you doing? So good, my dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't even know how that. Uh, you know, Chris is always asking me how I'm doing, and yeah. And I would just be like, yeah, good. I don't even know what episode that started. I'm going to figure that out. I'll have to go back and look. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, one day it just came, and uh, it's, I, I don't know. I just then bam, again. again it made again, it to Canada. Yeah. It made it to Canada. Like, my friend was saying it to me a lot at, tight. at my local mountain. Like, yeah. just like, he's like, I like podcasts, you know? Yeah. And he would say it. Uh, and I uh, I don't think I it. even aimed to do it. It just kind of no, happened. No, no. Which guys is funny. You guys didn't sit down and say, Okay, let's start a podcast. Yeah. And we were a boneheads. Few, <laughs> a, few, a few months in, let's yeah. get some sniffing salts, and, no. then you, and then you get your catchphrase. Yeah. Like, that's it's not all how dumb this luck. Went down. <laughs> right, right, right. But the cool thing on this, and, and something else that kept me going, was that support, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then especially um, a couple of the big dog supporters that come through with so much love. It's like a sponsor, dude. And it's, and, uh, it, it's huge, man. And... and um, that kind of love like really pushes you to be like, all right, I'm doing this. And, you know, I'm going to get everyone's names that submitted and uh, lower levels, high levels, maybe put a little more space to the big dogs and and somewhere in here, maybe up in that space up there. And I'll uh, make oh, sure there's photos wow. of it. But like That's a great I want them each to maybe they can do a little bit of art. Yeah. Um, I was actually doing some community service work for uh, – the food bank for the homeless. Brad. Which just feels good. You go and do that stuff. It's fun. It's a shortcut to feeling good. Yeah. And uh, I saw that there. I'm actually going to go back down there in Salt Lake. But they had this wicked whole big wall of everyone that's donated. That's dope. I mean, I think their deal was you can buy into this wall. Yeah, of and course. And it was so cool reading. Everyone could put it. You could either put your name or a quote. Oh, and dope. And me and uh, the other people that went and did this. We just sat there and re- you sit there for like an hour almost like reading them all. Some are in different languages and some are ones you've heard and others you haven't. And that sounds like something it was really you cool. Do. Yeah. So you just invite the people that, that donated. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I, I heard from Trent today that Chris donated 200 bucks. Yeah. That's kind of sick. He donated 200 bucks, which was rad. And we, you know, it was at a time where we we're uh, back to, we, we were talking a little bit and, and things were smooth. I'm sure we'll get there again sometime. But it was cool that he did that. It was awesome. It was like, well, and he posted about it too. Yeah, he did. Which was cool. And I remember that. That was you know, a boost. That would have given a boost. Yeah, the bomb hole people there seeing it, and that's huge, dude. That's kind of that kind of stuff is. Yeah, dope. the bomb hole people are your people. Like, yeah, you you. you we built those you people. Built that not shit built together. it, but we yeah. all formed a community together. You certainly did. So going back to the beginning, when do you meet Chris? Your first, your first meeting with Chris is probably snowboarding related. Yes. It's so funny, man. I'm really trying to pinpoint that moment. Mm-hmm. And man, it's so weird when you can't just pinpoint that exact moment. Yeah. How um, many snowboarders do you think you've met in your life, though? Like 7,000. Oh, probably. <laughs> oh, many, many snowboarders. That'd be so sick if you had like a ticker number going up. <laughs> 6,957. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, you meet a lot, and especially in Salt Lake. Um, yeah, this really, is a scene down it's here. It's a scene, dude. Holy it's shit. crazy, man. It's yeah. and it's only getting bigger and bigger. And you know, with Chris, it's like you meet someone that's a like-minded individual through music and and interests, and you you kind of make a connection 
that maybe you won't make with with others. And so I think we had that. And uh, with shooting photos, you know, I I have uh, this awesome opportunity to be able to not only just meet somebody like Chris, but get to travel with them and yeah, and really uh, get you when you're in it. You know, it's funny people. I mean, people. Myself and some others who've been there equate being out in uh, the field shooting on yeah. a foreign country or even wherever around, yeah. maybe not local, but it's like going to war. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we think about it as in the trenches. You're battling tricks. Yeah, and basically yeah. it's like any time um, a group of people are out where they have to like persevere and, and do some teamwork and yeah. maybe there's some risk of the police kicking you out. But at the end of the day, somebody getting hurt. Yeah, someone like, getting fuck, hurt. Yeah. Maybe someone does get hurt. Yeah, um, it, that is is like war because they have that. They form a special bond, super bond. Yeah. And uh, you know they're going through some gnarly shit out there that is nothing. Like I can't compare it because they're on they're on this crazy level of what they have to deal with. But we're on this little snowboard level of you know we have to work together. We have to persevere and. And that's why, like, summer camps are good for people. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's like anything like that is you go to Mount Hood and all hang out together. It's like I you went form to Wendell's a bond, you know? in 90, dude. I yeah. went to Wendell's in 91, I think I figured that out. That experience yeah. is yeah. like a bond, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's, uh, you get that on road trips. So you make a special re- relationship with the, the riders that all go and the, the media that goes and and uh, it was cool. I was able to get that with Chris. And so, at some point, you guys are road tripping together. Road and, dogs. And it's starting to become like <laughs> the Chris and E Stone show, right? <laughs> like you're, you well, guys are the it's banter, funny. the We're banter like, brothers. I remember a couple particular trips because uh, we go, and maybe the trip's a little bit bigger, so you got to get two vans, right? Yeah. And uh, you're like, who are you gonna ride with? You know, like. Yeah. It's easy. I'm going into hip hop band. You know what I mean? And there's one band that's going to be playing the music that I like. Yeah. It's also the one he's going to be in. Yeah. And yeah. what we actually noticed too is because uh, that every now and again you might have to get in the other van. Yeah. Because that's just the way it worked out. And for me, I'm shooting a group of people. So maybe those guys are scoping, but I'm out with the other van. Whole different vibe in the emo van. <laughs> The emotional van, dude. In the morning, it's like, you don't know what to expect. It's really quiet. In the afternoon, it's like, is it going to be, if someone lands their trick, it's going to be like Mariah Carey and who knows what's going on, like show tunes and everyone's singing. But if someone doesn't land their trip, it's like head down, freaking black makeup on and we're maybe there's a tear shed. And uh, it's crazy, dude. <laughs> this is for real. I it's, love this. And it's for real. It's behind the scenes. You get into like hip hop, man. Yeah. It is just let's go. Yeah. In the morning, yeah. let's yeah. go. In the evening, let's go. Sick. And the music's dope. And yeah. we're comparing notes on what do you listen to is what I'm listening to. And what's cool is like I could be with Chris or I could be with like the young crew that's like 18 years old, the Dustbox kids, or when they came out, or yeah. or the young snowboarder movie crews. And all of a sudden they're like, well, you listen to this too? And and it's like all of a sudden you have this bond. Yep. And are you yep. up on the new shit? Yeah, I'm on the shit. You're in, you're listening to this and and uh and it's rad, and that's the van I'm in, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and so Chris and I would always be in that same van. Yeah. And you know, you're arguing who's gonna get the ox cord because you wanna play your shit, he wants to play his shit. <laughs> nice. And it's fun. And then also, you know, you get because you're on that level that's not emo, you're like your conversation's a little different. There's a lot of joking and not yeah. that those guys aren't joking over there. Sure. After the shots got like, it's a funny, it's fun. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. laughing. Everybody's having a good time. Dude, three days of no shots at the emo man. It's suey watch, dude. It's, <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like you gotta like, I don't know. It's gnarly. You gotta be careful. Hell yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rad. And so Chris and I would have that bond and it brings us up. We're starting to joke and, and trip to trip, it's like the thing we look forward to is like, ah, I can't wait to get in the van. Sick. And you know, it's cold on some of those trips. The best part of the day is getting in the van. And it's sometimes it's like, dude, let's go up longer. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you got to hop out and it's going to get a rider could get in some gnarly situation. You're going to be dip, moving some snow. And yeah. it's like that you're just looking forward to that ride home. What are we going to listen to? You know what I mean? That's amazing. Yeah. And it's dope. And so I think we just got to bond that way. And then I think sometime, you know, 
two, three years before you guys actually pull the pull the trigger on this. He's doing some projects that are kind of podcast adjacent, yeah. right? Like not a like more like a video podcast, right? Like as opposed to like what's going on for me and my guys yes, with the, with the audio different. thing. That's just kind of like hey, audio. Yours you know. is more sophisticated audio, telling a story. I think it's maybe just, the culture of the it's, sport. It's a little more simplistic. It's yeah, not, simplistic. It's just let's not. Say. It's not as ambitious, right? Well, well, and his, his his like inspiration might have been more. Let's not say jackass, but right. But he, they had this crew. It was like Bam and his crew back in the day. Yeah, he had SFK. Chris did. Yeah, which uh, stupid fucking kids. <laughs> yeah, he's sort sort of like Camp Kill Yourself. C K Y. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, That's what it is. And yeah. and it's funny because like there was a whole crew of people before Chris that started uh, stupid fucking kids, and it was like. Doman and this dude Simon, uh, rest in peace, man. Oh wow! Yeah, he's he's dope. Uh, but they had this crew, and eventually, like Chris became roommates with Doman, maybe and Simon, and all of a sudden integrated, and and all of a sudden, like Scotty Stevens and and Chris are part of this so SFK, rad, so and rad. they made a snowboard video at one point. What yeah. sucks is I don't know if it's it's not on the net anywhere. Somebody has it, like. Maybe on a freaking tape or something. Digitize it. Yeah, it needs to be. We've tried, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know who has it, but yeah, dude, you go over to the the crib they lived at, and there is uh, Dobin's doing artwork. Simon's used to make motorcycles for everybody, and they're these custom. They would always say SFK Granger uh, is now a cook. He has stupid fucking kitchen because oh, wow. he he involved. You know, I he works at that. he works at Traeger. I love but he that. used to be just part of this crew of, of boneheads yeah. filming funny stuff. That's great. Dude, Granier might be jumping a golf cart over somebody. And <laughs> like there was always this golf cart in the loop jumping stuff up, jumping off the skate ramp. That's amazing. There's people skating the skate ramp. It was like, it was good times. I, yeah. That's, that's, I think they were filming snowboard videos. So Chris is just kind of inspiration to that. He comes up with board size and banter. I remember that one. Yeah. That one I saw. And it might be like a day in a life with another rider, or just Chris. Yeah, yeah, I remember that it it had it was it was in its infancy. It had yeah. its, hadn't found its format yet. But well, it was, it was a bummer. It was getting some love, but it just wasn't. It wasn't gonna pop off. Yeah, it wasn't but it was cool. Off, but it was. You know what? I'm not gonna say it wasn't popping off. It was getting views. Yeah, it was, but it wasn't. It w- it's it, probably got more views now because you can find it at the. And he, I mean, I don't even know this, but if you want to find it. Go to the bomb hole, and uh, it's linked as like a friend site or whatever. Like, a, this is what we follow, I think. And there's not many that they follow, so it's it's one. And it's uh, check out the Frank April episode because that's the one that got me stuck. Yeah, Frank's a little hungover, and he's he's so hungover that all of a sudden his English is out the window, and this guy is like, it's funny. That's the bottle <laughs> yeah. or butthole one, yeah. right? I remember that. Yeah. I remember it's that. Bottle. <laughs> I you, this is my butthole, and you just don't know if it's a butthole or a bottle. And uh, the snowboarders have to look at what's next. Yes. Where are we going? You can't snowboard forever. Yeah, yeah. And you need to be able to find that, what am I going to do? Because if not, it's like uh, losing identity. And in front identity of the crisis, camera, let's say. In, the front, in front of the camera, he, he's coming alive. Yeah, he's, and he's enjoying it. He's enjoying it. What's the first time you remember a kind of mention of like, buds, we should do this. We should do this on mic. We should get, let's... Let's get a kit together and put together a podcast. I think he was, uh, maybe he was going to just do it anyway, but then mm-hmm. he realized from us being, or I think I even said at one point, I was interested in doing that as well because I had like a, I wanted to do something with microphones because uh, I just had an affinity or a connection because I used to like, it's stupid too, because I, I used <laughs> I used to like freestyle Jamaican dance hall at parties. And what's crazy is I was good at it, dude. And like, it was like a possession. Yeah. People would call it. It's like I'm channeling, if I could get drunk enough, which is a shame, <laughs> I'm channeling this like spirit to the point where it's just like, what is going on? Right. And right. Battling other MCs. And I had to have a crowd and I, I had to have this right vibe, this right amount of alcohol. And it's like, Something that now I would probably pursue if I was a young kid. Sure. Back sure. then, I felt like, dude, this, I'm a culture vulture. Like, this isn't okay. Like, 
my lane is snowboarding, dude. Like, right? How am I gonna? So you're I'm not him. Like he's you're, he yeah, has this yeah, skill that is yeah, just like, yeah. dude, that guy can put together like rant, like lyrics like a mathematician, dude. It's crazy how yeah. he does it. Yeah. And there is like a mathematical science. Have you ever seen that video, dude? It's freaking incredible. I have. I'll chew it up as a uh, show note link. But holy shit. The, Him and Biggie and certain people rhyme to a mathematical science that is just totally. mind-blowing. It's epic. It's absolutely epic. So I wasn't that. <laughs> and I'm not Jamaican. And you had to be hammered. So had to be like, hammered. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's, yeah. You know, And that's a skill that you... We have talked about this. It's like a skill where if you're playing beer pong... Somehow, the more drunk you get, the better you get. Yeah. And it's because, and this is like a proven fact, you can look it up. If you learn something drunk, you have that skill drunk, you lose it when you're sober. <laughs> or maybe you still, you can do it, but you don't got it. And yeah. that's why some some band uh, people in, in the music world, they like, all of a sudden they quit doing drugs. And they're not the same, dude. Yeah, like, they don't sound yeah, the same. Yeah. What's going on? And it's because they have to relearn that talent. And it's there, but they have to like start over almost to get that, that special twang they had. That makes sense. It's crazy. Yeah, and I, I learned that in like a uh, uh, alcohol class well, <laughs> that I was mandatory. I, you know, I was just <laughs> thinking that can't be scientifically right, man. Because you think you're a good driver when you're drunk, but you're weaving all over the road. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I don't even know why suck. the guy brought it up. It's actually like in the book they gave us. It's That's like some weird crazy. Thing. And but, I don't yeah. know why they're yeah. even telling it to us, but yeah, it's usually in your head that you're doing yeah. it. But I think yeah. it's like there's a certain uh, threshold. I get it. You know what I mean? You get, get too it. drunk. You're... Yeah. But you yeah. have a certain amount. You, it's like, it's just, I think it's just saying what it does to your brain. There's a couple of things you know what I mean? that doesn't work drunk. Snowboarding drunk sucks. No. Nah. You're but so bad. But there's that dude, if sometimes. you have like a beer and a half or something. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Bam, you're cruising. Go into a movie drunk. Bad Wait, idea. yeah, and they just fall what asleep. What a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> you like trade one eyeing at the screen yeah. and trying to drink Might out as well of go it. to bed. It's the worst. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at some point, Chris is like, it's time to pull the pin. What what are the circumstances surrounding that shit? So uh I would say for like three years, we would we would do like a trip like international that's like pretty serious and and uh Serious meaning is like a big trip. I get a plan and go to some country and 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 we're hanging out and we would he would just be like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, talk about a podcast. But then all of a sudden, um 2020, 19, 20 season, the COVID year, we uh we're, we went to Kazakhstan, which is an incredible trip. Sick. Um, such a fun trip. And we he was like all of a sudden like getting way more serious about it. And it's funny because people would even say other people. I think John, uh, Young Jock, Johnny O'Connor on that trip was like, you guys should start a podcast just from listening to us in the van. Right. And uh, we were like, dude, it would be so sick to be just like we were driving around and and trash is building up up to. By the end of the trip, the trash is up to like your neck. <laughs> if you're in Japan, dude, it's So insane. this is like a gimmick. You're yeah. like thinking, okay, we could do the trash Trash talk podcast. It'd be podcast like the summer in Salt Lake City, yeah, yeah, and we're in a yeah, van yeah. with freaking trash up to our neck. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually wanted to do it. That would be our set. Yeah, you and yeah. I yeah. still want to do it. I think it'd be funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was yeah. There was Young Jock would even said like, "You guys should do one." So it's like not even just us saying it. It's just the banter, you know. You get you get people with the right banter. It really makes that trip fun. Yeah. And yeah. it's fun for other people listening too, because they're just laughing and chiming in here and there. It's so cool because you think about it, you're on a road trip to get your work done, you know, get your tricks, film your, film your shots, get your photos. And you need something to pass the time of the yes. actual travel time, Yeah, which is when probably most people listen to podcasts. They're on their way to work True. or whatever, yeah. you know, you get, you get a live just, one. Yeah. You just try. <laughs> yeah. You're driving, you're driving and you're just trying to make that time go by. So yeah, well, the, it, it's kind of the perfect storm. You guys are already, you've already come up with this kind of persona, which is make the, make the trip lighthearted. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Yeah, and because there's gonna be some serious moments, you know, like this trips are serious. This is these guys' career. Like when Chris goes to strap in, it gets serious. Like the whole vibe's gonna change. 
yep. depending on the battle. You know, if it's a lighthearted, small feature. Yep. But if it's something you can get hurt on, like, it's the vibe's going to change. And so, yeah, I can imagine, dude, if you're you're him, that time in the van is, like, really important. Hell yeah. Because it's going to change his whole perspective and get his mind right. And if he didn't get that trick earlier, it's going to make him feel better. How often do listeners reach out and say, like, I, I got a long trip ahead of me. Can't wait for this one or whatever. I'm saving up a yeah. couple for this one. Yeah, they trip. say that. Like, yeah, yeah, I got a trip coming up and I'm stacking them up. Stacking them. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. And it's cool. What's cool is even when they're like, oh, listen to this one three times, you're like, whoa. That's <laughs> nuts. Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, listeners will reach out about stuff that yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's a good one. But you want to, some of them, you know, there's some important oh, messages. Wow. We just got bumped. Is it good? Yeah, we're good. There's some important. It got a little. You know, I have uh, sandbags that we can put on those. I'll put on those hooks. Look at like, that. I just moved I have to fill like them. I have to. I can move it. There, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, dog just bumped the camera if everyone wants to know. He's one of Stoney's buds, though, so he's he's down to stay. Um, yeah. yeah. So, he. where were we at? We're going to talk about Moonchild because it's right behind <laughs> me right there here. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got sponsors for the show. I do. And Moonchild is... Moonchild is one, man. And yeah. uh, they... Uh, had you heard of them before? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, from Europe. Jeff Fulton's on them yes. right now. That I was going to say, that's yeah. what attracted yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, I was... I don't know where I was, but I'm cruising around and I see uh, Tarquin's art on a board. Oh, shit. He did a collab. Wow. With these guys, with, with Moonchild. Moonchild. And, yeah. and it was his shotgun art. And I was just like, whoa, I got to get one of these. And I have I one. That. I have one I in my collection. That. I Actually, I'm going to put it on set. And, dude, it is so sick because that's some of my favorite favorite art going. Um, there we go, dude. Boyaka. Yeah, so what we have here behind you is the Malibu. And you're going to see it's a special shape. And uh, that's another thing that attracted me to these guys. These guys have mad love for snowboarding and that you know it always like draws me to a brand makes them stick out because they have the passion they uh both worked at the board factory elon as well as it turned into the mothership through that process oh cool and that's why they got such cool shapes and you go on their website dude they got this thing going called skunk works you can design a one-off board with your own custom shape that's you design a shape yeah that's and amazing. then and then your A figures it out and uh, does it for you, and you have a one-off mold, or you can pick from some cool ones yeah, we're that they a, have going. We're at a point in our life where, like, you're having your own shape, dude. Showing up at that saying you that hill that? where you, with yeah. your own one-off—that's bad. That's that's some special stuff right yeah, there. That's and a lot of people maybe they're scared to experiment with those shapes. Yeah, you gotta get on them, dude, because they yeah. can they can really change the way you look at the mountain. But you know they also have like the shape looking behind you and the. The quality is insane because these guys have a background where they've worked at the factories and, and they know what they're they doing what and it do. shows in the product. Yeah. And then they're linking up with these legends like Fulton, Ali Goulet. Oh, um, nice. They, they have a whole crew that yeah. they're linked. I think Tina Bassich was on there. Amazing. It's it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So they're kind of like paying homage to these people that, that kind of like really got them into snowboarding and changed, right. changed the dope. sport for them and, and did important things like... Like, Fulton deserves the respect that he's getting and getting aboard. Like, that's cool. Mount Baker Hardcore Original, man. Yeah, dude. That's, yeah. It's like these guys deserve respect, so it's really cool to see a brand doing that. And, uh, yeah, get on the it. boards, dude. They ride dope. Killer. So we're, in, we're at the stage right now in our conversation about setting up an actual studio. Yes. So who goes out and buys all the equipment and sets it up? Well, I already know the answer to that. Chris does it yeah. in, his, in his house, right? Yes. There's um, some circumstances around a girlfriend or something. Yeah, all of a dude. Sudden he's gotta, yeah. <laughs> After that trip to uh, to Kazakhstan, where we got pretty serious, dude. We were like to the point where, like, I think one of the nights he know he got sick on the trip when he got there because his traveling is tough. And this guy is like before the trip. I think he was at like X Games, and before that he was at a thirty two shoot. And shit, these guys are busy. They got to cram their whole shit in, into a short time. Yes. And uh, it got him beat down, and and he's, like, in his room, like, taking notes and doing this and that, and when he's better from this little sickness he had, and he pulls me into the room, and he's like, all right, let's get serious about this. Let's start working on names right now. Let's go. Amazing. Yeah, and so, like, we're Do you remember we're writing, some of those Dude, I remember, names? like, Boots on the Ground was one, because yeah. 
because we talked about uh, how we like, you know, we're always out. There are a lot of street, a lot of street names. Streets are calling or some shit. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> wow. Could you imagine if you would have made Streets are calling? That would have been, yeah, it's there's, not the bomb hole. There's a lot of cool names. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, dude, we made like 50 each or something. Holy and fuck. It's, and, you know, I think you have to these days because... It's like you got to have a name if you want it to work and really turn into a business. It's got to be able to have a website, and you you can't go in and look at your website and someone else owns it because you don't want to uh, like yeah, alter it and have some yeah, whack whack yeah. one. Right. And right. Uh, nowadays it's hard because there's a lot of things have been taken. I think I could still get fffnrad.com, com, man. Like, Dude, I'm surprised. I, I lucked out. You better get the, it before. <laughs> <laughs> now that you just said it, it, someone's right, buying right. it, dude. I think I've looked into it and it was like 60 bucks and I was like 60 that's a lot or whatever maybe it was more Dude what's crazy yeah. is there are people that buy up names that they think are going to be dope Oh yeah and they're not 60 dollars or thousands of dollars Yeah no, I've heard podcasts about it yeah Yeah and sure. depending on how cool or how sought after they think it's going to be is where that's why you're just 60 Yeah but I would think <laughs> yeah yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's interesting to search and so you might find a name you're we might have looked up Streets are calling or boots on the ground. Right. And then right. there's like, fuck, someone's got the Instagram. Yeah. Someone's got the TikTok. Someone's got the Patreon. It's like, yeah. Then you're screwed, you know? And like, huh. the plug, <laughs> like Russell Winfield, rad yeah. fuck. When yeah. I heard that yeah. name, I was yeah. jealous. I was like, that's a sick name, it's dude. That's a great name. Uh, there's, I think I looked, there's like 30 podcasts called The Plug. Oh, easy. Yeah. Yeah. And so easily. it's got to be like, so, so and so the plug and then even the try plug, to fund the website yeah, yeah. there's a plug company that you just plug the <laughs> yeah. shit in and there could be a butt plug i mean no you don't you gotta be careful out there dude <laughs> there's a lot of plugs there's a lot of way to plug things <laughs> i remember that i remember like yeah i remember russell's choice for the plug being like dope Rat name <laughs> dope name but like yeah, really gonna How get far lost can in the go? mix. Gonna lo get lost in the mix because there's a lot of plug podcasts. Yeah, and, and there were multiples. Chris yeah. and I, you know, through my experience with companies, and then Chris's experience of of uh, him being a product as a professional snowboarder, he's a product whether you like to look at it or not. Yeah, that's what you're selling. You're selling him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you start to think is like. Okay, we got to think of this differently if we're going to be successful. Like, we have to have a name that has a... It can't be some website with some wild shit in it that no one's ever going to remember, you right, know? Right, right, right. It's got to be... Yours has to be effing rad. Boom, that's easy. Like, I lucked out. I'm seeing it. Yeah. There it is. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's rad. Same with Stoney's Buds. Like, I couldn't even believe it, dude. That thing's available. To me, that was a sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I remember like, when you told me that... The day that you told yeah. me about it, because you were going back and forth between... The boarding house. Yeah, which was also bus. available, yeah. which was a trip. That's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the bomb hole was available. It's like, it's like all of a sudden it's meant to be like, yeah. this is the name. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's the name I liked. And then my wife threw, uh, and that's paying homage to um, the shop at the East Coast that, Coughlin's. to me. Yeah, Coughlin's yeah. shop. That's where I went, and I discovered the culture of the sport for the first time. You walk in there. VTSP crews hanging out. Wow. You get, you're hearing Brushy talking about snowboarding. Chris Swears and, yeah, Brush, Swears and uh, fucking Matty L and Brownlee. Dude, they're sitting oh, there. Wow, wow. They're watching vids and they're talking game with Coglin and you're just sitting there a little freaking half, half pint just stalked a little Grom coo really just like rad. just like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. uh and then you're watching videos, you know? And and Maybe before I didn't even know these really existed, and you see in a whole other side that's the culture, yeah. and that makes this this is so much more than a it's not Me a sport. Remember it's, those? It's, it's, it's now it's this time of year right now, where it, you, the movie premieres. The first first round of movie premieres was like when the shop got the yes. VHS tapes, and, and you were there. Yeah, <laughs> and you and everybody. I can remember sitting around with 20, 30 people. After At the doors shop. closed, yeah, like in having that day, that whole day, being like, can't we just put it on and watch it? Yeah, like, like we really got to wait. Why do we got to wait? Why do we got to wait? And then, and you know what? The, except up. for yeah. uh, what's his name there? What's his the ski ski movies? Oh, Warren Miller. Warren Miller yeah. though, that yeah. like in Burlington, dude. That was like was that they a real would big out, deal? Yeah, yeah. That was a big deal, and even for snowboarders because it was just yeah. winter, you know. Yeah. yeah, and there would be a couple shots, you know, not many. Yeah. Maybe Craig Kelly ripping some turns. Right, which right. I waited through that whole movie to see those to turns. To see those turns. And then you hear 
you know, Warren Miller talk about how, you know, it, it, his little, his shtick and how he, he does, does it. Yeah. 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 His I'm funny real. way of talking. I met him, I think. He really? came up. He, oh, this is insane. He did a movie premiere or a, his movie tour at the Vancouver And they're Snow still Show. doing them, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. His son's taking his, it yeah, over. His kids took yeah. over. And guess who the guest pro was? Who? You will never guess in a million years. Mike Jacoby. It was Noah Selaznik. Selaznik. Can you believe that? What? What so, year? What year are we talking? Ninety-five. Oh probably. wow. M three Selaz. Good. Ninety-six wow. maybe. And did you get to meet him? I got to meet yeah, him. Yeah, because those premieres are intimate. It's cool. I, I it, you know what? This is a deep pull, so I can't remember what we talked about. But I think we may have talked about that he got invited to be on Forum. Wow. I, I think didn't know so. That. Yeah, yeah, he did. I know that's a fact he did, but... Wood must have done that, huh? I don't know who was... Yeah, or, I think Wood, yeah, yeah. Was he marketing and he maybe was. not he was putting together. He was putting together the... Uh, yeah, Dude, that's that, crazy. You know that story, too? Wood told me it. That, oh, why uh, is the for me? Yeah, Burton 7 was <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> oh, wow. What a move. What a, what a, what a move. smart guy that yeah, Travis Wood. Yeah, he's a very smart motherfucker. Dude, that's that's really cool. That's a Laz, dude. And the fact yeah. that Warren Miller's got a Laz rolling. That, Way to go, that really says Miller. Something. How, yeah. Like, how the hell did you do that? Yeah. That's fucking dude, sick. Dude, that is so cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Those are a big deal, though. But yeah, the snowboard videos, they were in the shops, closed door. We weren't having, I don't even, I'm trying to remember now the first snowboard video I went to. I don't know, dude. When I think did that I think thing? I think the first premieres for us were like t- the the mid, you know, the early TVs, like TV mm. five maybe. Yeah. And I think mm. Mac Dog would do whatever was going on, like Simple Pleasures TV five. Yes, I remember those. You know what I mean? Like, and they were huge, dude. Those, yeah, they turned into. Yeah. Dude, when I remember coming to Salt Lake, the premiere season, and it's still it's only gotten crazier, I guess, or or maybe not. It's different now. Now it seems almost more like a party. We were gonna go see Dorothy last night yeah. with uh, I mean and that's with Kennedy that goes Jack. to this cool like college clubhouse. Yeah. It's called the clubhouse. You rent yeah. it out. Dope. And it's all ages, Sick. which is really cool because yeah. anyone can go now. Yeah. But you, you can go there if you're just a local and, and meet the whole you never know who's gonna be there, dude. It's crazy. It's amazing. And I remember though back years ago when the first premieres were starting to go, dude, they were at movie theaters. Movie theaters. And they would do like showings all day. And then they got so big, they were at the university. We did like, ours at the Jumbotron at the stadium. Yeah, dude. It's like, this shit's getting big here. Especially when you bring it up to the forum premieres. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. And the team was there. The team and was autographs. There. So they'd be at a table like this. Filmmakers were there. Yeah, Kearns everyone's in those. a line, and yeah. you're shaking hands. You can ask any one of them a question, and bam, dude, it was a good time. That's crazy It's time. like, yeah. And now they're, they're still going, which is awesome. But yeah. it's a little bit different. Than that, it's not like kids in line to sign autographs, and it no, could be maybe. Like, it's but. kind of a kickoff to the season. Yeah, and, it's more like a celebration. Yeah, the yeah. season's but, here. But listen, we don't know what we're talking about because we aren't going to those. That's like, a problem. We should have been there last maybe night. Maybe the you know maybe the next generation of kids are are getting their inspiration by meeting their heroes. And yes, things again. And I because the well, no, industry that's a, doesn't since change. Since that one's right? being. I'm really stoked that it's all age though, because there yeah. are there's young kids there. Yeah, that's cool. It's actually BYOB too. Jesus, which that's, is pretty that place cool. Is dope. I don't even know that's a thing in Utah, but that's one of the reasons there. we didn't go. Is I'm not drinking right now. You, yes, you don't want to be around right cigs now. I don't want right to be now. cigs or yeah. anything. It's, yeah, it's uh, but man, I bet it was a good time. Yeah, and I bet sure it was packed. It was. Yeah, I'm and sure that, it was. that was a torment one. Yep, and uh, maybe torment and ride or torment mm-hmm. and vans. And uh, I think Torment and Vans. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I think there was two movies. Yeah. And what's cool is Torment has like more coming. Yeah. And and I think Slush has some coming too. But it's cool yep. that that the mags are supporting these things to come through and yep. and that premieres are still going because we need that. That's, if you're a kid and you can go meet your favorite pro, that's huge. That's the fabric. That's the, that's what weaves the fabric. Of it the weaves. It's it's epic. So let's go. You guys pick. The bomb hole. Yes, and it's and like, Chris. Chris chose that name. Yeah, give him props because I think choosing a name is kind of a special thing. And it is when yours makes it. That's cool. That's a cool thing. For My sure. wife's all stoked because she named Stoney's buds and yeah, and uh, it's a cool thing. I, like I think it. that's dope. And I love so, it. Yeah, bomb hole was uh, and I and I love how it's that double entendre. Yeah, of being the whole as well as what it might do to your life. 
Yeah. A bomb hole in life. Blows you up. A bomb hole in the ground. Yeah, man. And uh, that's cool shit. You know, like, that's a smart name right and there. And you guys hit the ground running. You kind of had a formula. Um, you're going to have... You it's got funny. Two, I don't think we sat holes. down and designed a formula. No. <laughs> you just... Yeah. We just... We got in a garage walk, and we just... Walk us through how... Show. <laughs> walk us through how exciting it was, like... Shit, we got this equipment. Is it going to work? Well, no, you know, it's we don't the, even know if it's going to work. The funniest thing, Chris builds a desk. Yeah. He puts it in his garage. That yeah. set, we didn't build a set. That was his garage. <laughs> yeah, that was just <laughs> it, what like, was in there. Pretty much everything there was yeah. just there. Yeah. And everyone probably thought we manicured a set. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> And yeah, it wasn't. I, I don't even remember the first set. I I definitely. It was a lot like what was the set now. I mean, it's, I I haven't seen it in a bit. Yeah. But it was just like he had snowboard stuff on the wall. He had tools on the wall. He had <laughs> yeah. pictures of snowboarding. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like one of my favorite moments from doing my show was being in Dave Sioni's garage. Dave Sioni, yeah. Right at his house, hanging out with him, but being in his garage and watching. That he uh, he's putting the tools on the wall, and then he does the outline trace. Oh, sick! You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's like he's like I may have done some work in set dressing before. <laughs> <laughs> he made a sick set, and if you go back and look at the backdrop of Dave Sioni, there's like a vintage chainsaw. You know, like really? Yeah, there's some old Damn. ass tools. Like he went through all his shit and like made an epic wall in behind us. There's yeah. like a fucking american flag there's Dude. some real shit yeah. you know and, and chris uh, is like yeah. that too but he just made it in life yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which was really yeah. cool that was his real shit like but he did like spend 60 bucks on building that desk and that's amazing and uh he ordered you know I, I don't think he went and bought cameras at first he like borrowed them from beresford <laughs> like that's amazing you know what i mean like that's oh, and, actually amazing yeah and i think the light kit might have came from justin at vg and and it was like Oh, Bearsford's camera's pretty sweet. I guess we'll get another one then. Yeah, yeah. And then we had like a GoPro and a spoon. And a, it was like a bucket and a spoon and it was taped. And like, there's our wide angle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember Chris calling me up because he like put a TV there. Yeah. Because he didn't have someone with him or something. And and like just figured out that the mics would work or the recording process would work. And this is because he hadn't set it up before, you know. Yeah, this is yeah. He's doing it from scratch. Yeah, from doing it from scratch. YouTube and, videos and shit. Yeah. yeah, but what's funny is you know one thing you learn out there as a snowboard media crew is how to figure that shit out. You, you know, gotta so you got a little bit of a background in in setting working with GoPros, and talking with Derek. You can put Hite, him on a spoon. <laughs> talking with talking with Derek Height, uh, I realized. I mean, he just told me that. When you work on snowboarding films, mm -hmm. you're the editor, you shoot the thing, Dude. you're fucking marketing. set and dressing, you're marketing, you're yeah. all these things. So You're running a gram. When you go into movie production or commercial production, he was just like, this fucking lighting's not right. Yeah. He, and he's going up to the director saying, this lighting's not right. Well, there's a whole lighting department. Yeah. And... The director's going at first, like, why is this asshole talking yeah. to Yeah, who me? is this guy? <laughs> There's layers of people between me, assistant director, blah, 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 blah. But also, <laughs> how come the lighting guys don't know that this guy's right? Where well, there are yeah, lighting right. are What the fuck dudes? is going on? Dude, we did uh, something where Mac Dog was hanging out at our set. Oh, wow. And uh, which was freaking awesome. Legend of Legends. Yeah, Legend of Legends. He was there. He's a quiet it, it dude. It was too. with. Uh, it was for Danny's event, Davis, yeah. his event at out in Oregon with Woodward and Burton, and uh, he backed out. Was like working on the video side, but right. when it was time to, it was like Todd, Chris, and I, Todd Richards, Chris, and I. Wow. Doing like a live show. Yeah. And so he just happened to come over maybe to grab some footage. This guy is like messing with all our lighting. Just because he, it was killing him. It was killing him. Yeah, He's someone like, was wearing a baseball up, hat, and the, the <laughs> yeah. shadow was forming, and we had to set everything up, and he just is like, you guys don't care, right? <laughs> We're like, do your Mac dog. Your Mac dog. Yeah, and he like, he just messed, and he came over like every day and like reset up the lighting. I love and that. And moved, dude, that mic is blocking your face. Yes. Like, you cannot yes. have that mic blocking your face. Incredible. And he moved it, and 
And we were just like, whatever you want to do, dog. And it was so cool to see that level of professionality. How fucking amazing. Yeah, and it's Mac Dog. You're just yeah. Like, Ooh. So these early days in the garage. I was like, so good, my Mac Dog. <laughs> 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 but it was dope. These early days in the garage go on for how long? Well, do you know what's funny? Uh, we, we were hanging up. The chief put that board up there. I don't know if you probably see it on the wide. Um, we, I remember Chris telling him we were going to move out of the garage. Yeah. He's like, no, you can't do that. Oh, wow, really? And he was like, serious. He didn't, he wasn't joking. He's like, why would you waste your money? This is perfect. No, he was just like, that's what you guys are. Oh, <laughs> like, you can't, yeah. Like, you can't yeah. ruin that vibe. That's, yeah, that, yeah. That's the vibe, man. Like, yeah. you, you can't do that. And he yeah. just told, I think Chris was on the phone with him. I wasn't on the phone. But he was just like, adamantly, just no, you can't do that. Please don't. Yeah. No, he goes, no you're not doing that. <laughs> and he's just like, dude, yes, we are doing it. No, no. And uh, lo- losing some of that, I don't know, just that you're down in your mom's basement vibe or something, or, <laughs> or you're in the garage. And well, looking for a new space, did you guys look in like the cool parts of town, like Dude, across from the coffee well, shops and shit? Or- what was funny is Chris's crib, you know, it was great. It was, uh, his guest room was like merch room <laughs> where, uh, where we kept it all. You his guys kitchen- already had merch at that point? Dude, we had merch like day three or something. Dude, over. I'm season nine. This is the very first merch I've ever <laughs> fucking made, dude. Season nine. I'm a little late to the Dude, fucking I'll have game. merch out as this episode drops. Like, Look at this. We already yeah. got merch. Well, and this is like a whole other brand is advertiser. These yep. guys are really cool to sponsor the event or the uh, the podcast, Nomi Mugs. Um Love it. And it's a wonderful world we're living in right now. Yeah. Where where anyone and it's and it's huge. You'll notice it too. I think what it comes down to is kids, people, anyone, they don't want to be that cookie cutter dude that's has we all have the same shirt on, and we got it from. I don't want to say any brand names and break their hearts, and because yeah. they're all making rad merch. And they might sponsor the show. Yeah, they might be a sponsor of the show. <laughs> but I, it's like. Not everyone wants to have the same T-shirt on. It, com- right. it, it comes from that thrift store vibe. Sure. But now instead of a thrift store vibe, it's a merch vibe, I guess. And you get it in your feed, like you know. I just, Dude. I just did a funny one of me and my wife. There's like they they set up the like, hey, do you want to do a shirt with you and your wife? And, <laughs> and saying like bugging each other for fifty years or whatever. And I did one of us as like really old people. Sick. <laughs> and I've got the photo on my phone. I haven't showed her yet. But it's like she should be now, stuck. You don't have to wear anything that you can have anything. Isn't yeah, personalized. You can have your own shit. You could always be in something that is dope <laughs> and designed from a bit of your imagination, or that's like supporting something that you feel a part of a community. Yeah, of. and that's yeah. that's the thing. It's something that you identify with, and I think it starts like you're looking at. I don't know if you know these guys, but like Jake Paul and Logan Paul, like these I know guys who they are. recreated like turning shit into a business on YouTube. Right. And there you go back and look at their merch numbers and they both had two separate channels going on. Wow. We're talking millions. Oh yeah. We're no. talking millions. See, dude. I thought you were talking Jake Paul. Isn't there He's a boxer now. Isn't there like a a, a Paul a, a pro snowboarder last name Paul? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a different dude. Yeah, but but Brian these, Paul. you're yeah you're talking about I'm talking you're, YouTube. You're talking about here. those YouTube kids, dude. And now and the boxer and now he's guy, a boxer, and dude. Holy and fuck, they, they told him money. he could be a boxer. They, and they recreated boxing. They made boxing exciting again. Isn't that mo- messed up? It's crazy. Up. And yeah, they, yeah. When he first came into boxing, they told him, "No, dude, you're not going to boxing. You're a fucking joke." Yeah, yeah. And he yeah, had to yeah. do all these fights against whoever would fight him. And now he's beating fools down, and it's and it's serious, but. I saw a clip of Tyson being like, yo, you guys need to be thanking him. And it's like, you need to be thanking him. In Tyson's voice. I love it. They were like, these guys recreated boxing, made boxing exciting again. Well, that is where we are in our lives, that that this kind of thing can come together. Yeah. Like, I mean, yesterday when we showed up here, this wasn't here. Yes. And I don't think Trent or I could figure it out. I think like, in our words when it came we out of do. your mouth that I don't think you can do this. Yeah, <laughs> that possibly. wasn't so tight, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we were concerned. You got to take a vision. Be, yeah, and yeah. and you have to. Uh, yeah, like I think we talked about this off the air. Um, you take like uh, I have a picture in my head because yeah. maybe it's from being a photographer. Huh. 
And when I said, first of all, when we had a split up with the podcast, um, it's like, this is what I love to do. I'm not going anywhere. And I knew I had this space. I had this room. This room's cool. I like. That's why I was here was because you were so convincing and like, I missed the mic. Yeah. I'm like, shit, well, let's get you back on the mic. Yeah. And I knew I had this space. Like this room has a cool vibe to it. The light does. The light comes in there in the morning. It comes here in the afternoon. When I'm done with it, like this fireplace is gonna be insane. Your house and is a is a mullen, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a designer crib. Which yeah, is, I'm, I can't believe I found this place. Yeah, listeners, look that vibe. shit up. Yeah. Like this is a pretty badass neighborhood. Yeah, it's a Ron Mullen, and it's yeah. cool. Yeah, and it just has a, it doesn't have that cookie cutter Mormon. Not anything wrong with Mormon, like just yeah. cookie cutter vibe. None. And uh, it's custom. It's designer. It's got some flavor. But I had this picture in my mind of this room. With this being here and uh, the vibe of being in the house and people coming through yep. and the way that has its own, like, I'm going to be able to seal that off with barn doors. Once it's all done, I will uh, show everyone, you know, but this will be like almost just a separate spot. I almost thought about putting a door there just to go through there because I'll be shipping merch out of the garage. <laughs> but I have a plan, you know. I love it. I like love when it. I launch. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's gonna launch with a Patreon. It's gonna launch. With you gotta everything. have a launch party Instagram. here. Instagram. Yeah, like we were saying. Party here. And, and, get, and record get people coming through. The launch party live. With, I think that with just guests coming in. Yeah. Coming on the mic and and being like, congratulations. Yeah. Glad that you're back on the mic. This is fucking sick. Your place looks great. Like, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's and that'll go. be fun. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's 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 a cool spot for it. I had the vision in my head, and I knew I want to be the mic. And like I said, we're gonna launch with all the pieces and even even more. Like I got a uh, a Discord that's gonna come out, and I hope people will be able to get on that. And it's uh, are you familiar with Discord? Not yet. I'm doing one. I'll do one. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> it's been, like I, a, Rob Dow's been telling it, me to do it. It's a community. It's a community where you a schedule events. Well, if you're a listener, and then well, you, if you're, you just go it's live. It's cool. It has a lot yeah. of uses. Yeah. No, even besides that. Yeah. Like. One, you and I could have a private meeting on there in our oh. own room, like we're doing a Zoom. Ah, nice. And it can be on video. Okay. I could do. Uh, it, it, it was cool. I was on the uh, the Nine Club one. Oh wow! So I'm hanging out, and it's got a lot of followers. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, they and, do. And let's say we're both fans of the Nine Club, which we are. We are, yes. So we're like minded people. We can Oops. go on the Nine Clubs and meet each other there and talk shit. Oh, There's a, like like, like snowboard.com. Yes, like that old. Vibe. It has that vibe. Ah, cool. I like so. That. You're going to meet like-minded people, and and you can either... There's a a video room. You can do it with video from your computer. Or you could just do the mic. And then you could schedule guests Or you could just be hanging. Yeah, I love it. And and you might be hanging out like I was in a chat room. Yeah. Chris Roberts jumps in, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like he's just hanging out, and wow, and and that's he just pops in, and it's dope, you know. Yeah, there's yeah. moderators kind of keeping it cool. <clears throat> there's a uh, kick it out people who are causing the ruckus. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Somebody's got to do that. Make sure it's kept clean. But yeah. there's also a spot where the photographers are talking equipment. There's people uh, trading skateboards in a God different. Damn. There's different. You build out what rooms you want. I like this. Yeah, it's this pretty is, cool. So you got a big vision. You go for play what video doing. games together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fun. That's but that goes back fun. to the community element. Yeah, and I think that's what this is all about: is trying to, uh, like, snowboarding is a community, man. We need to be here for each other. Well, I think if the, I think if you hadn't built such a rag community at Bombhole, if the thing would have went your separate ways, I don't know that you would have had that kind of like cheerleader style. Of, yeah. Like I remember in the, in the first days of us talking about you doing this, there was, you know, you were, you were telling me people were reaching out all the time. Dude, like it, was it was just like, it was crazy, man. And even so, yeah, it starts at the bomb hole, you know, people, uh, they'll identify with different things. And I, you know, as a photographer, I had my photos going into magazines and, you know, you're out, Wherever you're doing whatever you're doing, and uh, people are like, "Oh, that was a dope photo. Should have been a cover. Or that cover was dope. It was really cool." Mm. You mm-hmm. put out a podcast that has some serious content. You're getting a message like, "Dude, you inspired me to move here and do this, and it changed my life. You inspired me to go get that job. You saved my life, dude. You, yeah. you, you had me. I was yeah. so down. I hit you up, and you, you talked with me, and I'm not gonna." Do what I thought I was gonna do. That was really negative, or it's just like you're you having this effect that 
people are listening and, and maybe you're helping them through some stuff and they're helping you too. Long form Because I went through a yeah, dark time. Yeah. yeah and yeah. people are hitting me up, telling me they love me yeah. and how you doing and what's up and, and donating so I can be doing this. And so it's like, let's all be here for each other. And what's our common denominator? It's snowboarding. And yeah. that's, yeah. And that's it's a cool it. thing. And it's also that like, you're at a resort, dude, you're riding a lift. With some homie you never met, don't not don't not talk to him. How if he's got not? a snowboard on it, some people don't. You How know, and could it's, you not? it's yeah. like, dude, yeah. <laughs> what's up? I've had I've had like the greatest experiences just bumping into people when I'm so far from home, yeah. and they're like, "Evan Rat guy," I'm like, "Yeah, man, that's so cool." Yeah, like take, I've heard you refer to as snowboard Jesus. Sure, yeah, Love it. I did Love that for a while. I did that for a, <laughs> Be a while. Good Halloween until, costume until until. That uh, other one, the other Jesus the, came out? He's snowboard Jesus. I'm shred Jesus. Oh, you're shred Jesus. You know what? I, I, I got rid of the name because, because of Because of snowboard Jesus? Because, yeah, that wasn't really the vibe well, I was going for. Did you create it or someone just called you that because of your vibe? Graham Cam. Yeah. His brother is the guy who plays the music at the beginning of my show. Oh, sick. Evan. And Graham just called me Snowboard Jesus. Then he and grew his hair long. Yeah. And they call him Snowboard Judas. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other, I don't know, I haven't checked up to see if he's still around. The other one. You know what the thing was for me was that I, you know, it's fucking 2023. You yeah. know, you don't want to, you don't want to offend people. And I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be like the woke guy. Yeah. I'm just trying to say inclusion is more important now than ever. Dude. And if I'm hurting somebody's feelings because I'm making light of Jesus yeah. and he's their dude. It's not worth it. It's not worth yeah, it. Like, it's not me. You shouldn't. Yeah, there's no reason to hurt someone's feelings over right. something you could just pass right. over. Right. And the, it's a process to learn this shit. And I was really stoked it when is. we were it talking about learn, huh? Kennedy. Yeah. And I was like, I said she. And I'm like, wait, I think... It might be them. Yeah. It might not be her, she. It might be they, them. And then you're like, yeah, yeah. dude, it is they, I was them. at an and event. And I was like, it's like, yeah, why Why not fucking... Why? That's not hard. It's, yeah, it's, it's not hard. That's it's, the thing. It's And it's worth doing because why And to not? not do it is just being ignorant, right? To not do it, especially on some weird principle, yeah. is... Like insensitive. Yes. And it's and it, and you're you know and I don't I don't want to call out anybody. You do you. Yeah. That's right? the whole thing. You do you. And if if you don't want to be if you don't want to be polite to a certain group of people because you got a problem with that, I want to be polite to you. Yeah. Even though you're in the group of people that is, yeah, exactly is, doesn't it's, like being polite to for, to a certain degree. And we're at a time where people are just beating themselves up. Fuck yeah. And there's too much suicide. There's too there's much way negativity. Too much. Yes. So yeah. don't be yeah. something that adds Th that to that. Was, don't stack on yeah, to that. The, the pronouns thing for me was always based around the um, the suicide yeah. statistics. Like so, it's if, crazy, dude. It, 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 you're you're statistically more likely to commit suicide if you're in a marginalized group. Which that's, is a, that's that's a fact. What it comes down to yeah, because so, there's less. So if you're not, then you know, the, the least, the absolute least thing you could do is just, you know, listen. Yeah. And, and how hard and is try it, and right? be polite. It's, <laughs> it's not that hard. It ain't that. You know, it's impossible in some situations. Yeah. But it's not that hard. That's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and also, the pronouns thing is difficult, man. To even, come up on all of them? Even trying, like, even trying, you fuck up. But if you, if your intentions are right, then just keep fucking up. It's just, yes. like, it's just like anything. Someone was telling me, and I don't know if this is a fact or what the word is. Or I know it's a fact because someone confirmed it. Yep. But in like New York, the amount of pronouns is like a crazy number. Right. Which people get. Okay, but here's the thing. And but so we, we don't need have to be able to stay updated. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Staying updated is important and they change. Yeah. It's difficult. Just pay attention. Just, you know what? Just be a good person. Be a good person and That's don't hurt all. feelings. Yeah, no right? hard feelings and then and and change because well, life's hard enough, dude. dude <laughs> <You> shit, <laughs> that's changed in our lifetime. Yeah, right. Like from like we were talking, we were talking real childhood trauma yes. shit the other day. Yeah, and I mean, it was normal. My mom went to a psychiatrist to be to to, to, to like, oh my god, when I hit my kid, I yeah. feel so bad. What did I do? And then the psychiatrist is like, hitting your kid's a normal part of life. Like you, you gotta. The psychiatrist said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like stop. And it's like stop beating yourself up and keep the, beating your kid. This person's yeah, not updated. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but at the time that was the current thing. And it was. Yeah, yeah. it was. The t times change, and I, let's let's roll with them. I, I guess. think they gave us a, a book series. I'm okay. You're okay. I I, I, I need to go back and read it because it was like a comic book almost, 
And really? I, I don't think there to was get- much... Com- I don't think there was much, much comedy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think there was much comedy, and I don't think there was much content there. <clears throat> mm. Like, hey, give your mom a break; she's okay. So she beats you a little bit. So <laughs> <big deal. laughs> Dude, you're okay too. Hey, you're I'm okay. okay. You're okay. Yeah, you're okay. You're okay. Maybe it was like, I'm okay. You're okay. Well, I don't what's know. crazy, and there's levels to it. Um, you know, a slap on the wrist, which still isn't okay today. Sure. Is a lot different than some of the beatdowns some of these people are getting, and right, that's just messed and up. And there's probably good science b- behind, like, you know, somebody who's a tough guy, yeah, saying like, I, I fucking took that shit, and I'm good. You go, okay, someone but who hits kids yeah, or hits yeah, like someone yeah, weaker yeah, than them. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's the, to me the worst thing. In yeah, the, the world. bottom line. Thanks for the opportunity to say this on your wonderful <laughs> show. That well, you made a discovery if, with it recently, and that's right. dope, dude. If you can, if you can, if if it worked, if hitting worked. Like, say your kid runs in the road, right? Two years old, kid runs in the road. You grab him, you hit him, you say, don't run in the road. If it worked, then now the kid can just play by the side of the road, right? Yeah. They learn their thing. You hit them. Now just leave your kid by the side of the road. What a great <laughs> parenting move that is. And what what if that hit, though, created something deeper than, well, the than fr- they thought? And that's right, the because, problem, right? Because the kid doesn't know that no. was because they were running in the road. The they might not even just, remember that yeah. there was an issue with the road. All no. they remember is the hit. And what's crazy to me and what I've learned as we get older is your parents, they weren't perfect people. They're us (laughs) right now. Uh, (laughs) And I don't have kids. You've been through that. But man, especially when I was, let's say the parent has a kid of like 18, 19. Uh That's a kid having a kid. And when you're a kid, you look up at them as this person that's your parent. And you think they know everything and sure. what they say is the gospel. Yeah. But they don't know what's going on. No, they don't. And they are not perfect. And they no. the problem is they don't realize some of the effects they can have on other people. Or, or not other people, their kids. How could they? And that's messed up. And because, how could they, right? Because they are doing their own life. Yes. And they're trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And there's factors. You know what I mean? Like just and shut so how up do you and eat your French fries. Out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I got a fucking meeting tomorrow and you need to go to bed or yeah, whatever. Dude, you know that crazy, kind of shit. Man, it's, yeah. Yeah. And life's just hard, and I guess we all got to remember that. And yeah, let's and let's and get through to be more thing. positive. The, the community thing is really really fucking good. And so with snowboarding, we got this community. You guys found community with a bomb hole immediately, which was cool. Yeah, you found listenership. You you. We got, had, we, got we the had merch that together. Captive, captive you, were starting to, you were starting to get money, and you were. I remember our first T-shirts. They shrunkled up and <laughs> <laughs> growing pains, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literal go- growing. Literal. Pains. That's amazing. But you learn as you go, and you know you get your samples of your merch, and it gets better. It gets better. It gets How, better. Tell me the conversation about the salts. Tell me the conversation. Dude. Did it happen on mic or did it after happen after? Like, hey, it would be fucking hilarious if we uh, got these. I things. think it did happen probably on a show. Yeah. Like Chris probably mentioned something about because he's like, you know, we hockey guy. It comes from hockey. And yeah. you still if you watch hockey games, kids are not kids, but players are popping are, those are things. Popping those things. <laughs> I also remember way back in the day boxing. Uh, someone gets knocked yeah, out. You wake them up with the yeah, or they salts. used to actually be in uh, emergency kits. Yeah, man. And right. Boom! Like s- someone, I don't know what it was. People used to faint more than they used to. <laughs> Remember, like people watching the Beatles and they just, yeah, they, <laughs> they just peel over and faint. Like what is going on? There dude? was quicksand, yeah. which was weird. There was quicksand <laughs> everywhere, and you would faint. You'd people faint. would faint. Oh, and you, oh, you oh get they get some bad salts. news. Oh, yeah. yeah, or scare them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. then the smelling salts. Was smelling for that. salts would wake That's them so up. That's so fucking funny. Or if you got knocked out by yeah. Mike Tyson. Smelling salts. Smelling salts. And yeah, that would have been a good like like pre fight banter. You better bring a lot of smelling salts because yeah. I gotta knock the I'm shit knock out of you. you. Out. <laughs> and no, that was Chris's idea. But what I, yeah. I do remember is sitting and having a uh, meeting. Yeah. About run through a wall smelling salts in the commercial <laughs> we're gonna make. <laughs> I'm Mikey. Yeah. Oh my and it's God. like that shit was fun, you know, yeah. like and maybe that's when you get into an office scenario where you just are like going through like, all right, what are we going to do now? And you come up with stuff like that. Absolutely. And that's cool. And Absolutely. you have a space to make it happen. Yeah. So and when, that's cool when do you get the space? Like kind of what episode? Like, is it before Dude. episode 50 or is it after the first year? That's a really good question. Um, no, I'd say we went through a, I'd say we did a year at Chris's and uh-huh. then went over. Yeah. 
and, and you're was, looking for spaces. But we, and, like I said, we his house, the kitchen table was was like where Jules was doing uh, spreadsheets and secretarial stuff, and she was there that early, uh, just at the tail end of Chris's. Man, oh man, you guys just grew so fast, so so big, so fast. You got a staff. I remember seeing there's a it's media out deck. Of his, it's out of his garage. Media deck and we like. Dude, our numbers, you know, they went, they skyrocketed pretty quick. Yeah. Within like the first four months. Yeah. And that was probably that COVID heavy time. You know what happened? I remember, I remember where I was when I saw the numbers on the Lizard King thing. I fainted. <laughs> it was just like Elvis walked through. <laughs> I couldn't believe the fainted. numbers. I was like, that's impossible. I, I think I Dude, almost he's a funny quit. Guy. I think I almost quit. You were going to pack up I, and I quit. was like, I'm done. I, I'm done. I called Sean Kearns and said, I'm there's done. these new guys, call the bomb hole, and they've been doing it all summer while I was off. I don't even know why to do it. And he you goes, don't even know where we came and from. He goes, <laughs> yeah, and he goes, so you think there should only be one snowboard? Yeah, one that's podcast? the thing, dude. That? And that's even the thing with uh, with with this going on, with Stoney's Buds and bomb hole. Dude, there's, how many TV channels are there? How many radio stations are right, there? Right, right. And, uh, Maybe we have a smaller pool of people to interview, but you know, different people are going to do different interviews and get different things out of people. Remember, I interviewed you. Two years you. might go by. Remember, I interviewed you yep. at the bomb hole, and your episode for the bomb hole, you had either just recorded oh, it, you're right. or you were going to record it. But you told but me after. I think after, yours came out first. Yeah, and I think you said, I, "Hey, I recorded it, and we didn't yeah. talk about any of the same shit." Yeah, like there's other stuff the same to talk stuff. about it. Right, you're gonna right. ask different questions. Right. There and are some. There are some guests that their show is the show. Their yeah. episode is the episode, and you hear it on another. You know what show sucks and go, oh, is wow. when, and I don't see this in snowboarding, right. but in L.A., people do the circuit. They do the circuit. <laughs> like, all right, I, I live in New York. I'm gonna yeah. go to L.A. Yeah. and do the podcast yeah. circuit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you'll see someone pop up in like six podcasts, yeah. and it's the yeah. same show. Yeah, it is. You're like, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> you got more to you than that. Like, let's go. Yeah, they must not. They have. Yeah, I can remember that. Well, they're probably like have an agent be like, you got to talk about this. You got to talk about that. I'll tell you with Travis Rice, I got Travis Rice at the Depth Perception uh, Vancouver thing. And I I had all my gear to set up at a table at the premiere. Yeah. And I was like, that's rad. (laughs) Like, please do this interview with me. I want to have your name on my show. It's a fucking big deal. And he, uh, he said, sure. But then he kept it to the fucking talk of depth perception only because so was i there. was like so what was your first snowboard he's like well we started on depth perception in Seriously? october of like <laughs> it wasn't that bad yeah, but it yeah. was like we're talking about this <laughs> yeah. i'm doing press for this for right this. now that's how yeah, it he's works. like this is what i'm doing but this is where my mind is you know what's funny is that i had my pack of smokes on me there and i was nervous and he's like i'm gonna set up i'm like i'll just have a smoke before he goes and he saw i had a joint in there and he's like Oh, is that a joint? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I don't smoke weed on the mic. I just don't. Oh, that's a good call. It's just, I hear it. Because you should be like, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can't hey, do anything. Yeah, my memory's shot, hey, and bro. I can't do pulls, and I'm laughing And your no eyes more. are just peeled back, <laughs> like blind you with dental dental floss. Just, yeah, hey, so, man, we just a stoner show, bro. But... Smoking a joint with Travis Rice, I couldn't. I couldn't we can pass that pass up. that up. And then I, also, just his attitude about it. He's like, "Let's get weird." And I dude. was like, "Let's fucking get weird." Now, what an amazing and then we human didn't you got get right weird. there. Oh. Guy, because he was what was weird was he wanted to talk about depth perception. He probably had an agent like looking at him. <laughs> he. 100% for sure because I was so high. I was looking at that dude <laughs> and I was like, number one, he's a giant Devin Walsh. He's just like a giant version of that exact kind of stocky yeah. little guy. And so he's like, like. Has Dev been on your show? Yeah, a couple times. I bet. Love I'd love to get Dev. that guy to him. Oh, uh, yeah. He's on Airtime podcast this week. Sick. Yeah. Hey, is... he must have been on that before. No, never. Huh? Jody's been on him forever, and he's a huge fan, and he said he what? would do it. And yeah. That's yeah. crazy. What's the. Uh... Dev... Oh, I guess Jody doesn't live. No, no. Jody no. lives so close. Oh, he does? Oh, <laughs> it's so, just yeah. That, it's, it's just, just Whistler, to, Whistler to North Fan. It's nothing. It's just that hard. The problem is, Devin is a very private person. Word. He's a private person, he's a dad. 
and he's not that active in snowboarding. Yeah, so he's like, this isn't my priority. Right, right. Yeah, that's Sorry. what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, gotta, it's going to be an epic show. I bet, dude. Oh, my God. Probably yeah. going to be freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah. That That's really cool. But Travis, dude, he's so that, what a boss. At that thing, when I was looking at Travis, I had this thought in my head. That he was godlike. <laughs> dude, I don't know, man. He might be kind of Norse godlike. Like, something about him, dude. Not that he's Norse in any way. It's but like he's aligned himself with his purpose in life. Yes. And he's just fucking knocking it out of the park. He's he's like, uh, yeah, some sort of fire. The that's, opening that's... question of his on the bomb hole, what's the meaning of life? Dude. And, and he wasn't he just... even primed for that? No. And he just nails it. Just like. He, cre- he crushed it. Well, and I just got that energy from him, too. Like, he was not what I expected, you know? The fact that his boat was named Falcor, and yeah. there's this creative side to him. There's this business side to him. There's this, like, I don't know. It's just, uh, what an amazing human. Like Amazing human. If there was more humans like that, um, I don't know what society There's would There's a magic like there. side to him. That's the thing that yeah. you didn't quite get to the magic side of, like, magical thinking, like, really Dude. magic shit. Yeah. Like, it's cool. I think he... Yeah, I, he I'm nerding out on Travis Dude, Rice right yeah, now. He, I think he's worth it. I mean, look at his snowboarding, did too. you Did you see that natural selection? We'll do it for once, and we'll talk about that run. Yeah. Where it was, like, Dustin... Uh, he it, Dustin should have probably won. Yes, and then everybody was sort of like, "Well, how do you get how do you get judges that are going to be nonpartisan when the signature on the check yes is Travis <laughs> fucking Rice, right? So true. Dustin <laughs> Craven gets robbed, and so like people are mad a little bit. But then his run that Travis just like knocked it so far out of the park I mean, for that one, dude. He's good. He, <laughs> uh, but he was he he was. Otherworldly in that yes. run. Yes, let's say otherworldly. <laughs> that fuck it. That he did like a he did a, like a line for a movie. Yeah, in a and that's what's crazy. Yeah, yeah just we're doing a line for a movie yeah. in this in this yeah. live thing where the pressure's there. Yeah. Talk about Ma spaghetti M M&M and M style. Like yeah, palms dude. are sweaty. That yeah. fool was ready, dude. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, he wow. was ready. He was dude. ready. So uh, when you move into the okay, let's do it this way. Were there any problems in the garage that got exacerbated by moving to the office? Masturbated or exacerbated? <laughs> exacerbated. Exacerbated. Exacerbated? The big word. Was there a masturbation problem <laughs> there in the was, garage? There was a huge masturbation problem in the garage. <laughs> I, I will be the first one to say that. It was. Were you guys bickering back and forth? Was there like things you couldn't agree on in the garage that by the time you get to the, uh, you know, to the to the studio and the offices? That it, it's going to compound, and you kind of have a gut feel like, "Oh shit, this could go off the rails." Um, you know, I would, I would think even from the start, there's like an undertone. Okay. Not a bickering in the garage, but just like an undertone of right from, like, really clear to me that he needed and have to run things, and. It wasn't going to be a partnership where, like, like 50, I didn't want to go into a thing feeling like an employee. It wasn't I wasn't 50, an employee. 50, right. It, and, but, and that's fine with yeah, not being yeah. 50-50. Yeah, yeah. But you don't go into an ownership scenario thinking you're actually an employee equal with the employees. And I not that you. we're not equal, but you're also, you know, you're a shareholder. No, you're the owner. And you're a founder. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. you're doing the show. You're yeah, not shipping yeah, the merch. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever. And it's like, yeah, sure, the team makes everything. And one person, you got to have one person steering the ship. That's a fact with any business. Yeah. Or else it's going to get a little bit convoluted. Unless but, you have two people that, like you were saying. That yeah, there's like an accountant. Together. Yeah, there's yeah, an accountant. Yeah. Yeah, it's and then there's the a guy on the creative guy. side. Creative guy, accountant guy, and the and the salesman. Yes. That, that's a great trifecta yeah, if you can do a, it. Yeah, that's a trifecta. Yeah. And, and it works, and it's great. Yeah. And. Dog's <laughs> just like. Getting crazy. He's like trying to get a camera angle going. Yeah, nice. So, so yeah, yeah, and it's like. So you guys hadn't talked about the dynamic of like, uh, you're going to be a co-host versus. But and it was, two, and it was put on the yeah. site as hosts. You know. Yeah, two hosts. And you're and, both co-hosts. It's not like yeah, he's the. And, and but, what's funny? Yeah, it wasn't scripted, right? Like it was just like it was just like, 
You know, you one, know what our problem was. You would and start this, the other well, week. He would start. Well, right? No, and it was it was always down. Like okay, like you need one person doing the thing. It would get weird if you just maybe changed it. Okay. And the dynamic, I guess, that was cool for me. Like, you can't have uh, like one thing we wanted to be really clear about is when you're doing a show, the show's about the guests. It's not about us. Hundred percent. And we wanted to steer. We wanted to stick to that. Hold on one second. <laughs> no, let him do it. Let him do it. I just want him to knock your camera over. Oh yeah. Oh, he's grabbing. He's he's out. He's grabbing tools. He's out. Dude, he shit. loves. He loves being a problem child. This is Uno, my dog. Well, yeah. He likes to make noise too. But yeah. so, you, uh, one guy needs to steer the ship, and that's important, or else it's going to turn into a hectic thing. And when you're doing the podcast, it's got to be about the guests. Because I don't know, man. You can go through and watch a lot of podcasts, a lot of YouTube shows. And they're really quick to go back to themselves every story. <laughs> That's the first three. That's the first three seasons of my show. And the you learned, reason yeah. that I had such a hard time. Yeah. Because I don't want to tell people You're drawing upon me. your own thing. Yeah. And yeah. it's hard to yeah. not relate. Yeah. And Yep. But at the end of the day, like, we're here every show. This guy's here one show. And it sucks, dude. When you're sitting there, you're watching. You want to learn about this person. But all of a sudden, here you are hearing about... Uh, are you familiar with uh, Adam 21? No. He just got actually, uh, he got canceled. But he had this big YouTube show. God, these dogs, they're going to have to get kicked out of this yeah, thing. Yeah, they're, they're kicked like out. frolicking. They're frolicking. We're and still good over there. Shot. Yeah, you're good. You're good. So he got canceled, long story short. He was uh, doing rap shows. Okay. Let's take that thing from him. Natives are restless. The natives are restless. So he's doing he's doing rap shows. Okay. And he this was, is Adam Twenty One. Yeah. This is the Adam Twenty One part of the show. Uh, no jumper. Jumper. What is no it? No jumper. No jumper. Uh, and it, he interviews what would be the newest. Started with SoundCloud rappers. Sick. And he had a real affinity for picking out who's going to be that new hot shit. And he, he built this big show. He had a killer ear. Yeah, yeah it turns taste. out he actually ended up having a contract with a music label, and they were feeding him that killer ear. Oh, but yeah, whatever. Right, right. But so this guy, whenever he interviews somebody, he'll ask you a question, and somehow it always comes back to his uh, him boning some chick. Oh wow! <laughs> and it would seriously happen like so much that you just be like, dude, I do not want to hear about your butthole again, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, what is yeah, going yeah. on? I don't care what threesome you had. Sure. Like, this is killing me, this dude. This is killing me. I would love to hear what this, how this rapper came up. I came to the show because I saw this guest's name. Yeah, dude. And now or I, I might have not heard of him yet because he's right, new. Right, right, But wow, right. I'm interested. I want to hear yeah, about this yeah. guy. Not about your sex yeah, life. Yeah, dude, because he had some dudes that ended up being killer rappers that... Ended yeah, up passing yeah. away, and oh man, and they're like, it could have been this insane show, but unfortunately, now I didn't get to hear what I wanted to hear, and this guy's not even with us anymore. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, dude, I and I, it, he still do, did this to his day, and and I've always like, this guy is not gonna eventually because he's dude. Uh, Trevor Andrews was on a show, and sick. I remember being like, dude, what's that guy like? Is he cool? And he's like, he's cool, man, and I figured he must have some sort of. Uh, Something about him, because yeah, yeah. he was getting cool people. Yeah. But I was just like, I remember telling Angie, I'm like, dude, one day, this guy is going to get handed to him, and it finally happened like a month ago, and I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I uh, sometimes slip into it. I was, I was in a particular... Well, we were when we were starting. I was a particularly... Uh, I, had a, I had a monster energy drink, and I'm not against them, ah. but I can't be on Mike on Monster, baby. They fucked me up. They get you too hyped. I had that because I'd been driving for too long. I had my friends in the car, and we pull up to Scott Stevens' house, and this is a this is a get. Scotty's a get. Yeah, because he's too close to Grenier to get on the show. Yes, he hasn't done oh, his dude, bubble. We tried to get him on. We know he's got a kid, and he's having another kid, and we've tried and. Mm -hmm. You're going driving to his place. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm at his house. There you go. Yeah, his dog. I bet if we this. drove to his place, he'd do the bomb hole. Yeah, sure. he'd do the bomb hole. But so, but I spent that entire show saying, you know, oh, you're like <laughs> setting him up and then talking over. No. His, yeah, no, it's the worst. It's my. It, it is and my shit. It sucks, right? 
it, it hurts me to think about. What's cool is that it hurts you to think about. Yeah. Because that means you know. I know. That it wasn't cool. I know. Because some cool. people are so not, they nah, don't know. Man. They never get. Yeah, they never get. They don't get realize it. It's it. true. So it's him and true. I made a big point of that. Yeah. And uh, we just kind of had certain things. But let's say both of us were like doing that, like leading the the charge on on like the intro and the thing. It would just get confusing. Yeah. And, and yeah. at first, you could almost figure out your cadence with each other. You do. Or else you're going to be talking over each other. Like Totally. And that's like, we needed to watch out for that. And, uh-huh. and so, but also at first, I remember being like, Shit, sometimes I gotta fight for getting in on this thing. Right. And sometimes I get over it. And I remember one episode, it made me just back up a little bit. And then I was quieter, and that episode sucked. Mm. And so I had to just be like, all right, I gotta fight to get in there. Yeah. And, uh, but then, you know, we worked it out. Yeah, because over, over the first course of the first year, there it went from. You know, Chris was kind of the host. He's like welcoming you to the show. He's introducing the guests. Yeah. He's getting you to do your catchphrase. And then he's kind of leading a scripted talk with the person from the point of view of like, this guy's done his research. Yeah. He's gotten, you know, in touch with the family, people that this person's been on trips with. He's doing a lot to to make the episode as good as he can. And then you're just coming in with the with the vibe of like yeah like remember that trip we were on yeah it's a thing like is you know the 90 percent yeah. of them i know yeah, yeah. from yeah. a long career i guess mm-hmm. maybe even mm-hmm. rode for the brands mm-hmm. i worked for or i shot photos with them and the nice thing about it from a listener point of view was you're getting the best of both worlds yes you're getting some of these guest uh questions you're getting patreon yeah. stuff you chime yeah. in with the patreon so you were in charge of the Patreon, obviously. Uh, yeah, like, it's funny. It was Angie's idea to even do it. I don't think Chris even knew what a Patreon was right. when I started it. Right, that's cool. And that's uh, cool. with all her watching of uh, YouTube videos and, yeah. and this and that is like all of them have Patreons. And and at first... Uh, that's how you make good money if you're doing a niche thing, for when, sure. And you got to like, you know, cater and make cool things for them and make it a special thing. I talked to the guy from uh, Fretboard Journal. And he's like, if you get big enough, if you've got a good enough following, you guy, the the one guy he was saying doesn't do shit. He just he just doesn't, and he he makes a couple, oh, and he doesn't do any special for him. A couple thousand bucks a month. He's like, this is how you this is how you keep the show going, and that's that. Yeah, and it, yeah, I'm gonna I mean, make the show the best. It costs money to yeah. make to. I mean, if this is your job, it's taking all your time, and you got to be able to survive. So, it's like when you hear an NPR ad, like. We need money to keep going. It's yeah. it's a fact. They need money to keep going. Yep. And uh, so it's important. And so that support and knowing that the people back you like that, that's huge. That's cool. It's super huge. And, and it had something to do with the support that you got uh, after you were asked to leave the show or you were fired from the show um, because you'd been engaging with these people. You'd been, you were the one who Oh, was, like the people listening? Well, the Patreon well, listeners especially. I started uh, as we as we grew, um, you know, not even just Patreon, all of them, anyone who hit us up. Oh, like cool. I would go on to the, uh, not my personal gram, but the bomb hole one. And when Chris and I started, our attitude was anyone that writes us, we got to reply. 100%. Because that's not cool if you don't. Yeah, I think I've I think I've replied to a hundred percent. Yeah, and and I would go I on hope. and see people that weren't getting replied to and be like, oh shit, I'm, I'm gotta bam, play catch I'm up. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there'd be the the Patreon ones you're dealing with at first, and then those ones, and then your personal ones too. But it like something I wanted to make sure was that any person that emailed, any person that um, wrote in a DM, like, dude, they got to get hit back and. And that's just that, you know, because they're taking the time to watch your show. They're taking the time to be part of your community. And uh, they're homies, dude. You talk to them and they're rad, you know? Yeah. It's really yeah. cool when you get people that they're becoming your friends on there. And that's rad. Yeah. And, and so it's important, you know? And, and so when you move into the into the bomb hole office where I saw you, I remember you showing me. You guys had offices. Yeah. And you're like, this is my office. Here's Chris's office. Yeah. Here's, here's the shipping guys. Here's, yeah. you know, whoever had offices. And I, I mean, Chris has a dream. 
I think, or wants to have, I guess we're different. We're very different people. Yeah. Um, he wants a, a building. He wants a, a team. He wants yep. a crew where, like, look at you. You're, you're like, I want to do this myself. <laughs> yeah, you know totally, what I mean? Totally. That and, me. and uh, you know, I want to be somewhere in the middle, I guess. Like, I don't want to have I a, got a big giant. I don't have this vision to keep going and keep going. Yeah, you, you mentioned it earlier on in this episode. Like, the energy that happens in the office is a, is, is a part of the creative energy that moves the thing forward, gets it bigger, For and sure. builds the community. So you understand 100% that being in the office has big perks. Yeah. For sure. It has perks, but there's also that perks at being at home at night and being able to write all these DM dudes. 100%. And knowing the, uh, in my opinion, what goes on out of the office, in Chris's mind, anything that happens out of the office wasn't work. Yeah. And everything, in my mind, there's so much to get done out of the office. There's a whole world out there that works 24-7. Well, that was where And you I, just need the yin and the yang. Yeah, you need it all, yeah, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, need, that's, where, that's yeah. where I really connected with you because I'd had a job where it didn't count if you weren't yeah. staying late and doing all the shit. But I, I could get the kudos for being a hard worker if I stayed late. Yeah. And but didn't do anything. Yeah. I'm just there. We're just having a you know, we're just having a coffee talk at the and, fucking cooler and or whatever. I've worked this way for a long time. I'm not the dude who's gonna like leave my computer at the office. You didn't five have, o'clock. You oh, okay, yeah. I'm done. You didn't That's not have uh, an office for your photo you had a, career. No, or tech nine. I worked out of a home office for the past 30 years or something. Yeah, so that's something that probably could yeah. have, should have, would have been taken into account when you guys are setting this whole place yeah. up. Well, you know, I, I wanted to say this earlier. When Chris and I started this business, we there's something we did very wrong okay. that people should do. Um, and I'll say this to everyone. It's very important. Ye, we did not have any sort of a agreement. <laughs> and uh, 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 we had like a quick little, you own this, you own that. Sure. But you need to have a shareholder agreement that actually outlines a sit an answer for every situation that sure. might come up, yeah. whether it's a divorce in three years, like we just had, or we're doing, we're in the middle of, or it's something very minor. It's like every single thing has to be written out and accounted for, and then there's no fight about it. Right. It's it's written there. Yeah. You both agreed, and it's got to be written up in the benefit of both people because I think. He started with one a couple months in that was only in his benefit. And it's like, yeah, it's not tight, bro. That's not working. Sure. It's got to be something that's very, very uh, universal. And, and, and it's got to be right from the beginning, not a couple months in. Yeah. Because things are already changed in a couple months. And that's uh -huh. when, when I think Chris is like, oh, shit, I need to have one. And he was right to have one, want to have one. Yeah. It needs, it, like anyone starting any business with another person, the first thing you do is make this agreement. And then there's going to be no fight. It's really easy. You know what you're reminding me of? Marriage is a religious right or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. And they've been doing it for a really long time. So they've come up with some pretty good things. And one of the things is you want to do a kind of all points division of labor. Like, hey, who, well, that, that who should be in, in your, the agreement. Who in yeah. your uh, household did the laundry, the dad yeah. or the mom? Who in your household cooked the meals or washed the dishes or whatever? So you don't get in this situation yeah. where your expectations aren't being met because you never talked about these things that you don't know until you cohabitate. And it should have been in the agreement also. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you have, you're supposed to have uh, the shareholder meetings and you can update those things because right. all of a sudden maybe someone's role changes. Yep. And but you have to have that agreement. Okay. Or like, who's hey, doing the laundry? This is yeah, <laughs> this is now we've got merch. Yeah. Who's in charge who's of merch? Who's in charge of merch? It has right, to be right, fully right, documented right, and laid out. Right. Then everyone knows what to expect. And uh dude, and Chris was learning, dude. And to his credit, dude, dude, he jumped in and he's good at being a boss, dude. Yeah. He's a boss, you know? And and he's a bossy dude that does a good job being a boss. And you're at a later stage in your life and you're a little more go with the flow. So you can Well, and also yeah. like pick and choose when you're going to like have an issue because some things are so not worth it. Yeah. Like to fight over, like, is this t-shirt the one to go with or something like pro just whatever, t whatever one you like dope, you know, right, what, right, what sells right. is dope and what doesn't, doesn't figure out that way. But if you like that dude, go for that. You know, like at, at tech nine, I've designed so many different products that I don't have to be a dude that's like, oh, I designed that, I designed that, I designed that. <laughs> right. Because at the end of the day, you'll learn that that's really irrelevant 
and my I like to look at a brand and figure out ways to push a needle and the needle being pushed isn't like one t-shirt it's like building a leg of the table that actually like created a revenue stream do a that good, keeps you up, you do know? Do a good job on the merch, not just to do a good job on one t-shirt. Well, it's got to be the whole right, merch, right, yeah. Right. And, and how are you yeah. going to sell that? How are you going to roll that out? Yeah. And like, what's your plan for it? And where are you going to, you know, make sure your margins are good. At, when we put out the first one, no one even looks at margins, but do you, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's got to be all looked at. You got to have your landed cost and, and know exactly what you're dealing with, because then you otherwise you might be spinning wheels, and then you just lost a bunch so of money. So you being the you being the business guy uh, who's done this well, before, how, how did that not <laughs> fall into into it the wasn't category even, of your plate? It's just like wanted to figure out his way and and learn from that, and you know what I mean. Cool, and then, yeah, and then. And now we're getting kind of yeah. into the nitty gritty of what, not, what's going on. And I don't even want right. to go into the nitty gritty because no. you know Chris no, did a great job, to. yeah, and it's evident. The, yeah, the shit looks works great, you know. But Absolutely. you can't have two people being can't like have the two. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. Right, right. And and it's like you gotta have a, a clear leader. So you and he's a leader. And, Chris is a leader. And and by the time you guys do this contract a few months in, no, it, we didn't even do it. It didn't really get done. Oh, okay. So but so but, there's no real contract. Okay. You know what I mean? But the agreement was essentially like some division of ownership where you were a lesser owner. Well, yeah, no, we, from the beginning, I was like, you know, he gave, I told you, uh, he helped me a little bit financially. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, I don't know if we talked about this off air or on, but I was like working with, uh, with magazines and shooting photos and the magazines are disappearing and Shit's my up. income's disappearing. And Chris yeah. is just, he's a boss snowboarder making a good income. Yep. And, uh, it's like. I don't have the ability to be able to work full time and uh, still be able to do what I need to do. So he gave me a chunk of money and it was able to help me like get back collected on bill, get back up on bills where I needed to be. And uh, it was huge. Dude, that alone got you out of a small bam, hole. You were no question, into. dude, right, you should definitely right, right, have 10% right. more than me, you know? And yeah. I don't want to get it in the nitty gritty of percents and this and that. Yeah. But so, and then, you know, another deal was worked out that changed the percents and, but it was uh, it was all accounted for and cool, and uh, you know he wanted more percent, right? And like going into it, he's like, that was something he wanted, and I think he had a concrete business where everyone had the same percent, yeah. And that's a problem, kind of too, because I think it creates situations. There's that no get, leader. Yeah, There's it gets two weird. Leaders. You yeah, need to yeah, have a clear leader, yeah, and yeah. I'll back Chris on that hundred percent. And yeah, in your situation at the time was, uh, you know. We've already talked about it. He's bought the equipment. He's put it in his garage. Put it in his garage. He paid the sixty bucks. He built the desk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, dude, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah, yeah. Like he yeah. had the money. I didn't have the money. Right. That alone is always going to get someone more shares. Of like, course. Any right, scenario. Right. And, right. Right. And you know, I knew that. Any people should know that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter who you are coming in, you might be some big dog that he needed in to be part of this thing as an athlete, and it made it cooler. Yeah. The guy with the money still get, is going to get more yeah. shares because he's putting out that risk, yeah. and you're not, and you don't get extra points just for being whoever you are that's getting pulled in. So it's like that's a really common thing with business. And so when you guys move into the offices, obviously that's a a cost yes. that is not coming out of your pocket or Chris's pocket. He's yeah. managing the money. Um, and are you involved in those money management decisions? You know, I wasn't, and that was kind of a bummer for me because I would have liked to sat there and then had this debate, like, you know, how much are we going to spend? Is it the right thing? Or do we really need to, to move with this employee and pay him that much money? Is there a smarter way to do it? Um, or is this the right thing to do? And that wasn't happening, and so that already started to create probably a, a little undertone. I got of a you. disagreement. You so know? like he's filling the he's filling the warehouse with people that he works well with. Yes. And and it, or and maybe we're all we're I don't know, was everyone needed? And he'll have a different point of view, like, oh, you weren't stepping up and doing it probably, you know, and that's of totally course. fair. Right, right. And of so course. it's just like I guess a difference of uh looking at things and, and how to do it and what his vision for the thing was. Because I think maybe when we sat down and did it. I didn't think we were going to need to go so fast and get this employee, that employee moving to a thing. Yeah. Um, and maybe that 
is part of me sitting back and, and we haven't had to go get money from people, but with snowboard companies, you know, tech nine, we like, we go to a trade show and our first trade show, we have this $500,000 order from Japan. Yeah. Where do we get 250 grand? Like, what are we going to do? So we had to go get money. Yeah. And luckily podcasting's different. We didn't have to, like Chris and I never had to like take out a loan, get credit card that was going to like fund things. Or call somebody up. Mortgages your houses yeah, or any of yeah, that shit. Yeah, and people shit. have to do that with brands, right, right. you know. And yeah, you you guys you guys struck some success. Yeah. And and he's making these money decisions, which well, all, somebody's gonna make them for all intents and purposes seem to be elevating the show to this. Well, and that next, was another big level. that was another big thing in my mind was something's happening here. Uh, I mean, I've worked at enough businesses. To be like, it, it's actually pretty rare to have a business just skyrocket the rare. way we did. Very rare. Yeah, it's very, very rare. Yeah. And so I had this theory in my mind, like, fuck, we don't want to fuck with anything here. Like, holy shit, <laughs> like, something's going on that's cool. Yeah. Like, the fact that, uh, like, I don't know, you just don't, certain things are going a certain way, you don't want to fuck with them. I got you. And yeah. that, what my opinion was, the answer is, or he was doing things. Things were working. Let's keep going. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But then you know it turns into what it turns into. And well, did anything change when you went into the studios? Like I would imagine it would have been kind of exciting because now you've got this. Giant oh no, dude, space. that kind of shit was cool. Yeah. 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 Having the you've having got, that space down there. You got there. the landing zone yeah. for like where you got merch for sale and you yeah. got people coming in off the street. Like, hey man, no, the dude, day it, I was it was there, really really cool. The, yeah. Like some listener came in and was like, yeah, I'm in Salt Lake City. I just came in to say hi, and he saw you and his eyes yeah. get big, and he's like, and I remember and people were coming sign. in a lot. It was really yeah, really cool. It was super cool, yeah. man. I mean, it's just like little riffs, you just I guess turn bigger. And they all probably could have been fine. It probably could have worked out. But I, I think at the end of the day, you have two people that maybe have a boss mentality. It's going to freaking like, a, it's like, you know, it's like a, a rock and a wall. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's some yeah. Batman yeah. quote about a, I don't know what it is, but it's about like an immovable force. And it's like, I don't know what it is, but it's a dope quote. I'll yeah. put it up yeah. on the screen. But it's like, at the end of the day. How does it change for you when you guys move in there? Uh, nothing at all now you're just going to a different no, there's place changes all of a sudden there's all these meetings there's this and that and and i mean i, I don't want to talk bad about how anything was ran and all that because at the end of the day he was doing his best yeah and that doesn't and sound it is bad. what it is that sounds yeah. like meetings sound like relevant and no they're relevant yeah. until yeah. they're spinning the wheels and I what you. you know what i mean it's but yeah but there's you know there's just it's just getting all of a sudden there's like a i mean i don't even want to talk about all this stuff chris was doing a great job yeah. And uh, it was working. Shit was dope. Did we you, were both having... Did you... For the most part, we were both having a good, great time. I mean, we went... We had years of going on rad trips. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. having a really great, really great relationship that was deep, deeper than, you know, a lot of friends and, yeah. m like, a family, more than a family member even, just really tight um, relationship. I joked he was like my father. My younger father. <laughs> I'm not tight with my father. Right. Chris sometimes acted like, <laughs> like I got my you. father. I got yeah, you. Yeah, so nothing but respect. Yes. And uh, so so did you move into the office, your office? Like, was your office ever like a functional place that you worked out of? Uh, well, I, I moved into it um, more so. I mean, more so the work for me is the podcast. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. Like, that's my office like, for real. Like, you were invited to make a space in here and you're like i've never had an office away from my home office yeah I, I, i'm it's good it's like i do good work in I'm there I, I, the meetings whatever is cool the tell me this when, is yeah. cool tell me when you let's want film me. a commercial yeah. that's cool right. i'm there and then someone right. else was put in my office which is cool but i'm like a loud talker yeah and it's like this i'd rather just go home and, and do that kind of work sure. you know what i mean sure and then and you're still showing up for all the episodes like it's like Hey, you guys are doing a great job shipping the merch and doing all these things and coming up with these ideas. Tell me where I need to be and when. Yeah. Like, give me the time and I'll be here. Yeah. And he would give a time and it would be like an hour before. I'm not the most prompt person. So sometimes I'd be like 10 minutes late, this minute's late. And Chris is a dude who's 
late to him as, as 10 minutes before, you know? I got and you. And so he, he made a funny that. statement that, like, as talking about two bosses and splitting up, he's like, dude, like, you don't want to freaking come in and have me yell at you for being two minutes late. Right. And, like, you don't want to deal with that. And I don't want to deal with you. Th- you know what I mean? It's the whole thing. Like, I neither I, of us. I want I don't you to just be understand. that dude. I want, yeah, I just, I want, I need you to understand that you need to be here early yeah. because well he like gets nervous in his head because it's right. gonna be like this this and this yeah but he's like i don't want to yell at you for two minutes late you don't want to be yet. like you shouldn't even two minutes late what is two minutes late what but i'm just that guy yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. if you're two minutes late i hate that it makes a boil inside because uh, it's just like certain things have to be a certain way okay and uh and he even said that he's just like you know we both have a different vision and that's you know, that's a problem, you know, it's and it would have gotten worse and worse and worse and worse over right. the years. You know? But it didn't really get that bad. Is, no, it is, wasn't. It, you weren't really at that at that stage. It was getting there slowly. And it, it just I could tell down the road it would have been better. And I can I can do different I, businesses. I, I can tell right now that we're at this most awkward part. And I don't know how <laughs> we I don't know how we transition. Let's from, transition. So but <laughs> I think where we have to go now is. Yeah. I'm I'm Ethan. I'm an addict. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I'm gonna cut in here with the intro I wrote on the way home from recording with Ethan for this episode. I woke up yesterday from a fitful sleep at a very comfortable hotel, just a short distance from Ethan and Angie Forge's home, where they live with two pugs and their cat. This trip has taken me to Los Angeles and then a full day's drive with snowboard industry legend Trent Bush to Salt Lake City through some of the most beautiful landscape in America. But the 1100 kilometer drive was short compared to the emotional distance I traveled yesterday. I've been talking with Ethan for months since he was removed as a host of the Bombhole podcast, the number one snowboard podcast on the planet, where Ethan's banter and comical personality were showcased for the better part of three years. Two years earlier, I'd interviewed Ethan at the Bombhole headquarters, a spacious office and studio where the success of the show was on display with signed pictures and memorabilia that would make any true snowboarder's heart race knowing the absolute legends who've graced the booth. Ethan and I recorded there through Bombhole mics for two and a half hours, an episode that I'm very proud of, actually. Afterwards, while Ethan smoked out front, I asked, How's the money? He told me that he and Chris Grenier had agreed to take a modest paycheck and save until the podcast had a safety net in the bank, and then they'd take bigger paychecks. This conversation planted the seed for me to make a huge assumption that would eventually bite me in the ass. Choosing how to love and support someone going through addiction is anything but straightforward. Often an addict gets so good at lying, it becomes impossible to know what's even going on. I'd glazed over this predicament with Ethan, focusing mostly on supporting him in building a podcast. I thought it entirely possible that his co-host, Chris Grenier, had made a money move, remembering that Ethan described their relationship two years earlier as, I don't pay attention to the money stuff. That's Chris's territory. Ethan's go-with-the-flow attitude reminded me of myself. I rarely put money ahead of personal comfort. And if I'm being honest, I have a bias that people who care about money or are good at managing it are greedy by nature and would take advantage of us go with the flow guys. So I made the plans with Ethan from a very trusting and naive place, taking Ethan at his word and never putting his behavior or his claims to any scrutiny whatsoever. And I showed up at his door without even sending Chris a message about what had happened. I'd assumed it was a simple money grab, and now the flaw of my assumption was laid bare before my eyes. Despite my concerns that Ethan Stone Forche's rehab had not gotten him clean, he invited me into his home to tell me his story on mic. Special thanks to Ethan and Angie for including me on this journey. What's the first time you did drugs? Can you remember? And I mean anything. Yeah. Like, did you drink coffee as a toddler? Oh, dude, or, I drink you know, what? coffee as yeah. a toddler. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what's no, not coffee, more alcohol, dude. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, I remember shit, and I don't want to, nothing against my mom, but 
I was that kid that wouldn't sleep. Okay. You know? Yeah. And uh, they would give me a little aperitif. Oh, fuck. Irish mist, I remember. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude, a little aperitif to put me to sleep it's at like, like a, a young age. Here's dude. a little drink yeah. for, for this young This will put him to sleep, yeah. We, are we talking grade seven or are we talking like grade two? Yeah, we might be talking like grade two, like young. That's fucked up. Yeah, that's messed up. And apparently that, you know, it's not normal. It is what it is. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> You, you learn that after the fact. Yeah, my mom did say they put brandy on the Sioux there. Well, yeah, that's the thing, like, for the teeth. Shit. They but, put it in the teeth. and I don't think... So, yeah, no. So, parents, they, they try in their hardest. Yeah. And I don't think they meant anything about it. Obviously not. Because, like I told you, I ended up remembering a memory of, like, my grandfather letting me sip his uh, Canadian 7. Yeah. And I, or 7 and 7 is a cocktail, right? Yeah. Whenever I smelled 7 and 7, I would associate my grandfather i never knew why until recently i had that memory he was giving me sips you know and it wasn't a big deal right and to him you know right and it would be just me and him he was like watching me or something and i don't even know where my brother was or or sister it's like a bonding thing it's like yeah it get to like, him is like yeah. you know he didn't i don't think we hung out with him that much he was pretty old he had uh emphysema yeah Maybe he knew he was on his way out and with wanted the breathing those, machine. Yeah, the whole with the thing. he had the nose yeah, thing yeah. with a tank. Oh wow! And maybe that was his like bonding, and he wanted yeah. that time. It's like here, little guy. Have yeah, a, have a rip on this. <laughs> yeah, this is the good stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And or being at a a parent's party and going around and cleaning up all the ends of the, the wounded soldiers as a child and everyone laughing at it. Right, yeah. right. As a child. Do you yeah. remember getting drunk? Do you remember? I don't the remember getting of, drunk. I probably just like, passed Ooh. out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You like pass out? You certainly do. Yeah. Let me fill up my drink and we'll do this. Yeah. Get back to the film. Yeah. <laughs> Doing what I'm doing here is hard. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like it's a big thing. Yeah. It's and a, big deal. a result that's going to come from it is wild. You know, it's intense. Very, very wild. So I. But think, it's got to be done. Yeah. So let's uh, uh, because I think what we come out with after this conversation is that your show is relatively fully formed. That you built something huge with the bomb hole. Absolutely, you were you were a constructor of that thing. Yes. And you're building something new. New. And in this new thing, you want to include support for people who are going that through. That need it, yeah. Or that, and I'll get there yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I think that's huge, and I want them to be able to know they can reach out. And, and I think what what we and I'll talk to every single one of them. What we yes, exactly. I think what we re, require to do here is to now we're we're returning to the to the beginning of what we were talking about before, but like what was going on for you behind the scenes? Yes, because that wasn't a part of the bomb hole. Nobody no, knew. No one. Nobody knew. Right? Yeah, or even like at the store people order. might have people might have wondered about it and asked. I think only close, close people like right. Chris, sure, or people I spend time with, right? Like Bodie, Chris, but, right? But and so, so, that's it. And even Chris was so unsure, like he didn't even know, had no clue. So we're so far. That would just disappear in the weekends, and that made Chris wonder what was going on. But right. to be honest, I think as you get older, you do that anyways, and Chris will get there too, you know, because he puts his. He does the same thing, but doesn't. It's like when it's on your time. It, it depends whose time it's on, you know. Because at five o'clock, like I said, Friday, his computer's there. Right. And it's not coming with him. Right. And right. On right. the weekend, mine, I'm out. You know, like especially if I had like a big week of shooting and doing an episode, like I turn off my phone, dude. You probably don't get a hold of me. Yeah. And I he got took you. that as, oh my god, is he okay? You know what I mean? When really, it's yeah. Okay, so let's. I think. We went all the way back to the grandpa story, and the but we could cut into maybe just uh, move through it kind of quickly. Or let's start an involvement. At, let's start involvement at like, of drugs. Yeah, let's start at at like high school. High school, or yeah, something. that's what I was thinking. Because by high school, there's a there's a social aspect of drinking and drugs that is, you know, you're living in the states in Canada. We could start drinking legally at 19. Mm. So like we were coming down to the states having. You know, like left the bar the night before, yeah, and go on a road trip. We're twenty years old. And we're not allowed to go into bars and shit. Yeah, and it feels weird. And Dude, I was running up to Montreal Club Super Sex. Right, you know that's I mean? eighteen. <laughs> yeah. That's 18. eighteen. So one of the things that I noticed was that 
because there's this prohibition in the United States to 21. Prohibition. <laughs> you got 18 years old to 21 years old where you're kind of on your own. Like it's illegal to get beer and it's illegal to get weed and it's illegal to get, and, and everything's kind of. And we were getting it though. Because it's all illegal, it doesn't really matter whether it's. Is that me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that an alarm? I wonder why I didn't wake up the other day at 8.15. <laughs> so what I was saying was there's this prohibition in the United States for children, but you're not a kid when you're 18. No, you're supposed to be a man. So in Australia, you, dude, yeah, they're you, drinking hard. You could go to war and you're... That's what's messed up. You know up. what I mean? You could get married, you could yeah. have a kid. You can be drafted. Shit. You could be drafted and you're fucking not yeah. allowed to we'll drink. Put a, we'll give you a gun. We'll send you out to this country, but damn, don't have that beer. But by making that shit illegal, I remember coming to visit my friends in Massachusetts and it was mostly about getting weed. It just seemed easier than going yes. and trying to get the booze. Yeah, well, dude, we were shoulder tapping. We, you know, you call it Burlington, Vermont. Yeah, um, we're out. You know, oh, dude, you go down to the, the the Chevron on whatever street, and good place for shoulder tapping. And you know, you like grab, get your money all together, and yep. you see someone that looks like he might be cool, kind of cool. Hey, bro, grab me a couple forties, or a t- or a can st- you get me some Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. <laughs> Or a store, That'll yeah, a couple forties. We drank forties down yeah. here all the time. Forties, dude, and uh, the rap music. I just watched juice. Those forties on here. They're drinking fucking forties. We got the in juice that now. Shit. Yeah, we got and, the juice now. But we were shoulder tapping. We were buying weed. We were getting mushrooms. We were getting. Can you LSD. remember your first time getting high on weed? I can. Yeah. What Think was going I on? I was in seventh grade, so I moved. My parents got divorced. Okay. And uh, it was a good thing that they got divorced. Because, um, man, they were fighting like crazy. They were done. Okay. And they made an agreement. We'll get, we're going to get divorced when your brother goes to college or whatever. Wow, really? Yeah, so he, I guess he got that or whatever, but is that better? No, no. dude. Because they're fighting like crazy. Ah, uh, gotcha. And that is also an issue with Grenier and I. He likes to get in a fight and yell. East mm, Coast, mm, Boston. Mm. My mom used to yell. Okay. I don't like to be around that. Like, my wife will tell you too. Like, I don't fight like that. I, I'm very calm. We're yeah. gonna have a conversation. Yeah. And yelling's not down. Okay. People that like to yell, like I'm out. I would just rather not get into it. It's like if you're gonna yell like that, dude. What's what's the point? We're not getting anything done. But yeah. some people like to yell. It's oh, yeah. like yeah. Ah, nah, nah, they'll yell I, back I, and I, forth. I'm the opposite. I grew up in a family where we yelled about everything. My wife is not a yeller. Yeah. And so if I yell at her, she like crumbles. When I don't crumble, I'm just out. Yeah, so I just she, tune out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she's. So if Chris and I were to get into it, and he brings an East Coast yell, starts happening, I'm tuned out. You're tuned out. I'm just this conversation is not even for me. I got Despite, you. This isn't even worth it. I'm out. I got unless you. it's so important. So the divorce had a big effect on you, obviously. Yes, it's like what, well the yelling, what, dude, what, the parents what, yelling. What, what year? What year does well? Your and you know what's funny is I didn't think it had a big effect. Like you find uh, that out later. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, but my parents yelling sucked. I didn't like that. Gotcha. Like belittling each other that kills Oof. me. It's like, dude, what's the? Yeah. And when I hear couples um, belittle each other in ways that you Bickering. can't take back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it's like you're gonna be divorced at some point, and oh, usually yeah. they are. Yeah. So anyone who's in a relationship, think about that. It's. You can't take it back. And they would do that. And it's like, you know, they're never getting back together. Mm, mm-hmm. And that's tough. Um, so, yeah, I think it's better for a couple to get divorced. Don't stay together for the kids because I don't think you're doing them any favors. Uh-huh. You're you're probably making it worse. What age were you when they so split? It was, uh, I just finished seventh grade, I think. So it was like going into eighth grade. Okay. Don't know the age break, bracket. Sure. So me. you're smoking weed 14. the first time well, when no, they're so fighting. I, I got pulled to Vermont. Um, the fight's over because my mom, she was happy. But she is still a little, like, dealing with depression. And and uh, not what I want to stop bipolar is more depression. I got you. Um, and maybe that's why she was there fighting so much. Cause, and all, one day she found the right medication, and all of a sudden she was just chill. Oh, wow. And maybe they wouldn't. I mean, they probably still would have fought. They were out of love. But it's awesome to see that change, you know, because it kind of ran in the family. My sister had it as well, mm-hmm. and once you get the right medication, 
boom, just chill and not not chill like chill like just balanced like wow. Some people have chemical deficiencies. It's not built right, and this medication is going to help that, and that's that's great. So absolutely. So if you're one of those people out there, go get the doctor appointment, figure it out, and get the right meds because it could change your life, like it did for my mom, my sister. Yep. And uh, so we moved to Vermont. I was hyped, dude, because I had found snowboarding as a flatlander in Connecticut. Amazing. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I get in a Burton board every year. It's all I knew. Burton what was your, boarding, What dude. was your first board? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Cru- Cruiser 165. Cruise, Burton Cruise 165. That's big. Or no, 155. Sorry, the oh, blue one. the little guy. So my buddy got the 65. It's still big. Yeah. But, yeah. It was dope, dude. I was yeah. so hyped. And, yeah, sick. And then we would go. We would be skiing in Vermont. We'd do family trips. Um, and then we go to Manchester, Vermont, and you know Jake Burton would be there working in their oh, their wow. showroom, um, with his crew. I mean, he wouldn't be there all the time, but he'd be there. Um, and it was awesome, dude. Get a new board, and so I find out we're moving to Vermont. Yep. I was just like, damn, dude, like snowboarding. This is on. But I'll tell you what, you know, moving when you're going into eighth grade, dude, that's like a pretty formative time in your life. So you have to start over, no friends. No friends on the powder day, bro. You have yeah. to start over with no friends at a, a time that's like pretty crucial. You should be breaking into that time where you're about to like meet all these ladies finally as as more of a man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Not like, oh fuck, I gotta meet everybody right now and start fresh. I got you. Um, if you know what I mean, you know? Yeah, it's a tough time to move. Yeah, and and I think luckily for me, um, I'm a pretty outgoing person. More so now probably than then. But, you know, I was able to make friends. For my sister, it was a lot harder, you know, move to a new place. Um, she ended up making friends and all that. But it's just, it's a hard age to do that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you go from your parents being married and uh, my dad was making good money. And all of a sudden we're poor, like moving to Vermont. And my mom's, my mom's like income as a... As uh, like working at a nurse's office behind a desk, you know, as like a nurse's office, and and not, you know, the income was way different, you know, and like before, like oh, you need a board, we'll go get a board once a year for Christmas, with my mom running the show, she's doing the best she could for us, and we never wanted for nothing, you know, we always had shoes, but you want a board, dude, you better go get a job and, yeah. and get a board, and yeah. and that was cool, dude, like ended up becoming a dishwasher underage. So wow. I could get that board right. and go to Mount Hood and, and wow. do all the things I want to yeah, do, dude. you know? Sick. And then the parents would always help, too, slip a couple of ski here and there. Nice. But um, I definitely, I don't know if I was rebellious or what was going on, but I definitely didn't fall in with the right crowd. I don't know. But also, my class wasn't that big. It was only 100 yeah. people. Right. So it's not, I mean... Maybe everyone was not the but, right crowd. Might have been real small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, you think about like your your snowboarding. You skateboard as well. Yeah, yeah. So you're skating and snowboarding. I was high. It's very, very uh, close to drug culture, right? Yes. Because it's kind of counterculture. It's like you're like being especially sub- back then. Right? You're being subversive back then. Yeah, you're, you're choosing something that's not the like mainstream. Not thing. not playing hockey with the rest of Vermonters because we live yeah, close to Canada. Yeah, yeah, you're not kicking the soccer ball around. You're you're at a skate. Park. I was kicking the hacky sack. Yeah. You're smoking kicking the, the hacky fucking sack. blunt. You know what sm- I mean? Yeah. So when's the first time you smoked some weed? Yeah. So I remember I kind of got in with the older dudes for some reason. I don't know why. I always had friends that were older, which mm-hmm. was interesting. I don't know what the significance of that is because now I have friends that are younger, so it's and older, I guess. Yeah. Um. And I remember uh, they, like, somehow we got a nickel bag or something. Yep. You know, you're in Vermont, dude. It's like hippie culture. Okay. Um, I feel like if I was in Connecticut, who knows what it went down. Right. I mean, the drugs are everywhere. But I see in Vermont, it's like hippie, free living, and a uh, lot of weed. So I remember in seventh grade, we got that small bag of weed, and we smoked it out of a can or something, like, <laughs> shittiest way. <laughs> And I didn't even really get baked, but I guess you don't the first time, maybe. It can, I got fucked the first time, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. oh my and God. So, you know, but I smoked it and I liked it. It was fun because I didn't really know a lot of people. So all of a sudden now I had these dudes. I can it's go kind smoke of a weed bonding with. thing, too, yeah. at that time, in that time in your life. Like, are you are you down? Are you yeah. down with this? Yeah. And then they took yeah. me, they, they kind of took me in a little bit, these older dudes. They had a fucking garage band. Wow. 
and they played the Misfits, dude, and they needed a singer. Guess who became their singer? Like, back to the mic thing. You know what I mean? Wow. I was like the singer of a fucking garage Misfits band. That's incredible. And it was fucking incredible. I yeah. loved it. And yeah. I mostly listened yeah. to, like, actually, back in my youth, I listened to all sorts of rad shit, different different shit from the cure to the misfits to easy and, and rap music. That's you know? fucking awesome. But yeah, so all of a sudden I'm freaking, these kids are like three years older than me and I'm the singer. I'm fucking Danzig all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the killer wolf over there, Danzig. And uh, that shit was fucking awesome. And you know, they're older, we're drinking, we're smoking. And, uh, and then in Vermont, for sure, it's like the weekends turn, as I, as I get more in, I think because I was friends with these older kids, one hallucinogenic started popping up. Okay, and two, um, the kids at my age were just like, "Fuck, who's this guy hanging out with the older dude?" So I was able to make meet people really easy. Okay, and also I, I guess I'm just social. You are, yep. yeah. I mean, I saw you, you know the drive cool, through and everything today. It's just like the lady <laughs> oh, yeah, at the counter, it, like whoever yeah. you're talking to, <laughs> you're fully present. You're talking to them in a nice way. Yeah, it's awesome. One thing that's cool. I moved to Vermont. Um, the first homie I became friends with, dude, and this has nothing to do with weed or anything. It's just a funny story. Um, I become friends with this dude, Eric Hart, and I just met him in school, and we're, uh, you know, we hit it off and became friends. And uh, it was interesting. He's like an early friend because when I got into high school, I mean, we were acquaintances, but I guess he didn't really skate or snowboard. He skated, if I remember correctly. But he didn't snowboard, and I was, like, drifting towards snowboarding. Fast forward to a month, two months ago, a month oh, ago. What? This fool donated, like, 500 bucks to the fucking podcast, That's dude. amazing. And I say fool in the loving, most loving way yeah, possible. of Eric. course. Because that, Hart. dude, Eric does so huge. It's so cool. That's It's really just sick. like, wow, dude, that's that's cool. And uh, But anyways, yeah, so, like, garage bin, and all of a sudden you're watching Pink Floyd, and you're fucking... Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Taking LSD. Once, once you start getting into those, yeah, dude, with these older dudes, those big, those bigger drug experiences like yeah. LSD, you kind of feel. Uh, sorry, I can't speak for you. Yeah, for me, it felt like I had crossed a barrier that I really couldn't go back. I couldn't go back and tell my parents like I did all these drugs. I really liked them, and I'm no, uh, I'm on a course of maybe I. Uh, like I, I, and I wasn't afraid that that those drugs were going to lead to some. And maybe I was. What's funny is everyone told you like weed was a gateway drug, right? Maybe it is. I don't know. I always said it wasn't. <laughs> well, it is in the it is the, in the social way that aspect the, or the act of doing drugs or that at the time when it's illegal and I forget it's fucking illegal here, right? Weed, yeah, yeah, very. In These Utah. cops will just love to. So like, Oof, that, they'll take you in, dog. So. You're joining a counterculture. You want to catch a case? Woo. Yeah, you're going. You're you're literally putting yourself outside the social safety net of society. Yes. So as a child, that's fucking a weird place to to exist. Yeah. And what's funny is I didn't even think about that, man. Because that some I don't know what it is about when you're younger and. The the smells are so much more vibrant. Hell yeah. The the effects of weed, like and I don't know if it's just because I'm looking back as a memory. Sure. But that shit was dope. It was so <laughs> I mean, good. I hate to say it, but it was yeah. fucking awesome. It was great. Um and you know, I ended up doing good in school and yeah. whatever. So it wasn't like I was a deadbeat. It wasn't like that commercial with the egg in the pan. Like No, you're learning this, this is your brain. Thing. You're your learning brain this drugs. thing is fun and manageable and like it it's building friendships, yeah. it's social. There's a lot of positivity <clears> around <throat> if you're around the right people. Yeah. So you're, you know, you're describing these people both at once as the right crowd and the wrong crowd. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're choosing a path that's not going to be, you know, buttoned up, you know, businessman, lawyer. Definitely Stone, not. Right. Yeah. But is that really a bad thing? Yeah. I, I right? don't think, I don't think it is. And, I'm and a, I, I'm and that a, lead, hanging with those crews too led to like meeting up with the skaters. Where all of a sudden I'm like leaving Colchester, Vermont, where I lived, and going to Burlington and like skating for the night. And yeah, that was sick, dude. Like that was dope. Like being all of a sudden you're old enough to to make that that move. Like yeah. 
you're in a car on your way with older kids, you're too young to drive. Yeah. And you're fucking just skiing around Burlington for and the evening. And you can hang and you can smoke a bit of yeah. weed. That even makes it better. You might even like eat some fun. mushrooms. Eat a bit of mushrooms and now you're on a trip and now yeah. everybody's having a fucking... Yeah, and then it's so much fun. day to remember. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And it's so it's... It, it definitely sucks you in and then all of a sudden you're like... You're in your own grade, and there's these big every weekend. Someone's having a party, big party, yep. and everyone's drinking until they puke. Totally, <laughs> totally. And you remember those first times you drank too much, you just projectile fucking. That lasted drinking. for me for way too long. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like I drank. Fuck, man, I must have drank from the time I started until like, like I don't, I don't drink. Uh, I stopped drinking a bit ago. Yeah, because of uh, I'm allergic to beer. Mm-hmm. You can't. You know, I I used to like is really high end alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the nice stuff. Yeah, that shit is mezcal. Dope. I would Dude, still love when mezcal. you get some fucking like three hundred dollar bottle of whiskey. Yeah, uh, Reed Smith got me one once for getting him a cover. It's like that's the last uh, super high end one I got, and that shit is so good, dude. It's, it's like tasty. such a difference. Yeah. You can't be doing that, buying it, and, it's too and drinking too much whiskey. Right. Right. You're not gonna get drunk off that kind of shit. I mean, you're gonna get like you're gonna sip it. Sure. But it's different than like, I'm getting fucked up tonight. You don't go buy a fucking $300 go, bottle of whiskey. Go, 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 go. Yeah, you know, like that's not how it's going down. Fight somebody yeah. right now. No, not on not the fucking it's... gentleman's whiskey. No, no, no. And so, uh, yeah, I just kind of ended up stopping drinking. But man, I must have gone f- from fucking like 16 to fucking 42 and drank almost every night, maybe. Right, right. I don't right. know. I hear you. I, I, yeah. I, was, I was on and off. Um, I think. What what was it like by the end of high school? Like, had you what did you tried by graduation, or did you graduate? You graduated. Yeah, I actually graduated yeah. a half year early. Yeah, um, and I worked so you're towards a good that student, so yeah. I could move out west. Killer. Um, so I was out. Geez, I must have been in eleventh grade that winter. Yeah. Um, somehow I was able to go on a trip. It's funny because I don't remember how this happened or how it worked. Maybe it didn't really happen. Maybe I made it up. Um. <laughs> Somehow, before I graduated, I was able to go to Breckenridge. Okay. And I find myself at a party. Yeah. Tarquin Robbins is DJing. Oh, my God. And I'm at a house party. And uh, I meet him, and we we become buds. And then next thing I know, he doesn't drink or do any alcohol or smoke weed or anything. Dope, dope dude. Um, But you're in, I don't know if you've ever drank in Breckenridge if you're coming from the Flatlands. That elevation will fuck you up. I just remember meeting Tarquin, having this great fucking time. Uh, and then next thing I know, I'm like outside dying from fucking alcohol poisoning almost because it's yeah. the, the yeah. elevation. And yeah. when I say dying, I just mean puking my guts out. Totally. Um, but yeah, I met Tarquin and that trip was just like, fuck, dude, this place is insane. Like, what is this world here? Like, what's Breckenridge? Like, this is sick. Right. All of a sudden, you're in a land of new school snowboarding. And that would have been the right at the time where they're filming Hard, Hungry, and Homeless. Oh, <laughs> it was that year. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect timing. Yeah. Breckenridge has blown up because they've had the... Uh, Dude, the peak nine kickers just going fucking yes, AWOL. And the worlds were there and yep. all that shit. It was that time. And I was meeting Tarquin, dude. Just a fucking legend, man. Are we full? On this one. These ones are still... What kind of memory card is it? I can pop in these 264s from yours and keep it going. With the Which ones are they? Oh, the from the other cameras. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. got 128 from yours. Dope. Uh, there we go. And just keep going. Good eye. How did you know? I check from time to time if the red, if the red light's on. We I wanted to it. say, it's great. I guess we were doing 1080p, so... Well, on these ones, uh, yeah, but on that one, it was 4K. No, I just mean yeah. like how long it was taken mm-hmm. at the bomb hole before. Oh, yeah, you guys and were doing quick, so, you know, you guys were doing 1080. Yeah, that's, that's that fast. much different. Oh, it's like, yeah, it's different. That's crazy. It's crazy. Like you could zoom in on a, on a 4K to make it 1080. Yeah. It's just like a little spot. Up. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. that different. Yeah, I mean, different. I guess it makes well, it's a lot like four times better or something. No, no, it's a more. It's like I, I, exponential. I don't even know. If Nobody knows. Rob Dow knows. This guy's just a fountain of information, huh? He knows, man. He knows. Okay. So what does he I'm, do these days? Wired. Wired snowboards. 
but he just has, he's like the uh, Wizard of Oz or something. He just, <laughs> he sits behind a curtain and just. That dude is at work more than anyone I know. He's, he's is Wired making ball. traction? Because I uh, I hadn't heard about him until someone sent a print in, yeah. and it was uh, and Devin Walsh was on it riding a wired board. And I was just like, damn. Fuck yeah, dude. Well, Robin, Robin, Devin are old friends, and uh, ah, that explains it. And I, I, you know, Rob's just like he's a very passionate snowboard builder, and always was. Oh, he was the guy who did like, all this. Like the guys at Moonchild, he's like, yeah, yeah, just that passion for con- like making a rad board. He did virgin snowboards with uh, Jim oh, Barnum did? in Sick. 1990. Twin tip snowboards in like, like, like in the era of like. Who the had the first twin tip? Kelly. Yeah. Could oh be, damn! Could I have been virgin. The, I forgot to put the spoon nose on the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the very first twin tip that I've come across. Sam Burton. No. No. I was going to say, I don't, I, it wasn't I, I Virgin. I was going to say Virgin. Oh, but, but I was going to say maybe um, Nitro with that 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 one. The that Pyro. Yeah, yeah, the Pyro, dude. Yeah. That board. It, that's pretty In early. In the East Coast, we had uh, Seth and Seth, Seth Neary and Miller. I love those dude. two. Yeah, 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 yeah. They Seth were, and Seth on the Pyro. They were repping that shit. They were repping it and they were and ripping And they made that shit look good. They made it look so yeah, good. Dude. I had a Pyro. I, I talk get, about it on the show. I almost want to get both those twos on the show at the same time. That'd be great. Just have <laughs> both of them oh, sitting fuck here. Yeah, yeah, they were. Because awesome. then you get like two birds, one stone. They're yeah. out here hanging. You know, it'd be cool. Yeah, and they were friends. Like it's yeah. a great idea. And uh, I almost, I think they're still buds like that. I think the first twin tip was actually at Barfoot. I think that's pretty Ooh. safe to say. And not the Barfoot twin tip called the twin tip, but the one that Neil Deffern made. Weren't they not quite twin tips? I thought they had like Those a Those ones weren't twin tips. Tail, although twin tip wasn't but, twin tip. But Neil Deffern was making them in the in his garage or something. And, nah. they're, and they're full on twins. Dude, we'll have to really look that up after. I'll show I'll get the guys from the, there's a shop in, in Revelstoke that has Oh, uh, and they'd probably They no, have like them. but to do the real research, okay, what year did that come out? I'm telling you, it's what probably like talking? 86 or oh. something. Yeah. If it's 86, they definitely... Oh, they're like by a landslide. It's crazy that bar f- the situation in Barfoot, you know? Yeah. Like, Are you are you uh, stalling on talking about this very... No, <laughs> I'm down. Dude, let's go. <laughs> I, I want to just say before we start this very important part of the show... That my philosophy on drugs is that is is actually something that I took from a book called From Chocolate to Morphine. <laughs> yeah. And it was written by a very smart dude. Who, uh, yeah, because is chocolate a drug? Do- yes. Dr. Andrew Weil. Dr. Andrew Weil. I and, heard up. And his philosophy is that there's no bad drugs. There are drugs that are more difficult to have relationships with than <laughs> others. I don't know. But that there's no bad drugs. That drugs are inherently neutral, right? It's so, how your relationship goes. And there are some that are really hard to have. Did he write that with. before math came out? Who's the marketing director of Drug Inc.? Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? like, who's, right. Crystal Meth. I, it probably was like that. Doesn't sound as bad as like what it is. You know what the funny thing about Crystal Meth is? Is that it's the bo- it's the second half of MDMA. Yeah, which is, is so methamphetamine. Weird. Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, an NDMA. Mm. People are like, you can use it for therapy, and it's great for post-traumatic stress but in then, veterans. But the problem with meth is it's made from, like, gasoline and freaking mm, cold medicine. I don't know. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, the ingredients will no melt, melt out your insides. Wow, well, like, see, that seems to me like old dude, listen to drug this. stuff. Listen to this. Um, I found this out recently. Um, and it happened to T-Bird, actually. So in, in Utah, one out of four houses test positive for meth. What? Fact. Um, most of them are within that range where it's okay. doesn't matter. But when you're buying a house... There's an okay amount of methamphetamine? There's an okay, and I forget what it is. It's like a very trace amount. Sure. That would mean it was a light smoker, basically. That So it's okay to be a light smoker? No, no. No, I mean it's like an okay amount to have your kids in the same house. Oh shit! When someone smokes meth in the house, yeah, it it never goes away. Oh, Ever. I see, I see. So like, so if you're past so, the threshold, yeah, 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 you have to rip everything down, everything. 
the Seems flooring, insane. the walls, wow. the brick would have to go. Every single open surface, ceiling, everything, done, out, ripped out. It's extremely expensive, and uh, that would be a cooker. Oh, of course. They were of making course. the meth, or a yeah. wicked hardcore smokers, sure. like a group of them. Yeah. It's like a nest. <laughs> yeah. A nest a of meth. meth. Nest. <laughs> but the problem with the meth thing is that no one ever talks about the functioning meth addicts. Because there are some people that... Yeah, but you know what I think they can, are? My theory, because J2 was like that. Mm -hmm. He was that dude. You could do cocaine with J2, mm -hmm. and he is asleep on a rock. Wow. And what that is is, so who do they give Adderall to, you know? Yeah. They give Adderall to a certain person, and Adderall takes them and makes them chill normal. I, pro I probably right? would have been a candidate for that because yeah. I was such a hyper well, yeah. person. So you're hyper... Give this guy some some Adderall, he can chill out. Yeah. You give me Adderall, it's the same as cocaine. It's legal. It's not not legal, or it's legal because it can be because it's whatever. Yeah, but people, yeah. you chop up and snort Adderall, it's cocaine. It's the yeah, same freaking yeah. thing. Yeah, I, and I, has the same effect. But if J two does, he goes yeah, to sleep. Yeah. For me, cocaine was like it feels the same as having a coffee. Yeah. But like yeah, a lot so, of so coffees. there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you might maybe your J two is a little further than you on it. Oh, absolutely. You know no, what I mean? No, 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 I don't mean it like that. I mean, it's like, I mean it like it does what it's supposed to oh, do. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like, I start telling you that yeah, I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know... And so with J2, an it makes him feel normal. Right, and, right. And there's people that are like that. And so are those that, That's the, my point. That's are what they I'm saying. The, are they is the there, functioning... The drug, isn't, the drug isn't bad. It just is a hard thing to be in a relationship with. Yeah. If a drug makes you crave it for nightly crave it nightly it's probably not the best drug for you to be a part of you know what i mean like but isn't you, you that, are gonna have a hard relationship like that not and our opiates have to be like I don't, that i don't think for everyone now i i'm i don't want to come across as thinking that i'm some sort of expert in yeah. drugs because I, think, I read one fucking book. yeah i you think I mean? opiates though you don't the you have to or else you get sick you know i don't think meth and cocaine they don't you don't get sick it's mental is yeah, what I've heard. There's a physical addiction to coffee, and the time to get addicted to things is very quickly with cigarettes and and cocaine. But cigarettes heroin. too, it's mental. It's like but and, her heroin and cigarettes has that, still fucking like I almost get a picture of one in my head and uh, I can smell it and yeah, I'm just like ah. Yeah. Well, it's attached to to you know dopamine is the thing. Read Dopamine Nation, and it gives you yeah, an idea about what we're actually going for. But there's Fuck. Okay, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna talk drugs because I'm <laughs> really not that smart at it. But yeah, I, I, I mean, do, there's my a lot philosophy of... is that because someone's on drugs doesn't default to their a piece of shit. No, or that they're a write off no. or that they're well. That's a, I think that's a horrible way to think because you got to remember that it's a disease. They're saying now, like we talked about how it could be alcoholism. They're saying it could be hereditarily passed. You know. Yeah. And it's a it's it's officially a disease. Like in in uh, in USA and in Canada, it's treated as a disability. So if you are a uh, a drug addict and you choose to go to rehab, you come back. Um, a, any business over a certain size, I think it's ten employees, um, or especially a government one, they uh, can't fire you. Right, because you you have a disability, so it's yeah. the it's a, America's Disability Act, and so the fact that the research shows that it's like a disability, that means it'd be crazy to say that oh that person's a piece of shit, yeah. you know, they got right. caught up in something but that I, maybe stems from trauma or or hereditary stuff, and I don't know all the answers. I think everyone's different, and but I, I yeah I don't think that in practice there's uh, I I don't think that in practice people. Um, treat addicts like as though that it's someone with a disease. Yeah. I think they treat them like it's hard. It's all when, different. When it's all across the spectrum. Is, when your disease is something that you got like a pleasure from or yeah. that you did, you know what I mean? Dude, it's, a, it's a trippy thing to wrap it's your kinda, head around. Yeah. It's kind of like breaking your leg skateboarding and then going in and trying to get some, so well, you were fucking skateboarding. Yeah, but maybe you were like predisposed to, to head that way. You know what I mean, and like, you know what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't Hell know. It's yeah, like a man. trippy, a trippy thing to wrap your head around the disease part of it. By the end of high school, you've tried, you know, 
mushrooms and acid and 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 weed yep. basically some hash yeah. maybe or something oh definitely hash is weed hash is just weed yeah so but and had by you, the end of high you, school you, you know like, what's crazy dude it yeah, felt like an yeah. after school special i remember the yeah. first time that uh well first of all let's talk about this in health class when they go through the drugs i remember when they brought up cocaine yes it was fucking sounded like this nightmare that they fucking created about like you're you're gonna do it and you're gonna get a hole in your nose hole and in fucking the nose. you're basically ruined your you're life's gonna over go crazy you're done you're done and I remember one and, and like, done one and once done and, once one and done and you're addicted yeah for it was life. fucking insane yeah yeah and I remember being so scared <laughs> yeah like weed's a natural thing and I remember being at a Colchester High School party. And there got word out that someone showed up with cocaine. Yep. And it was the biggest fucking, like, we were so upset oh, wow. that someone would bring yeah. cocaine to right. Colchester. Right, right, right. Because right. <laughs> right. right. it was so horrible. Yeah. And uh, we kicked the dude out and fucking, like, we were going to beat the shit out of this dude. <laughs> Meanwhile, you guys are doing we smoking Oh, we're smoking weed. weed. And... We're probably on LSD and mushrooms. <laughs> Who knows what else? Get out of here, you drug addict you freak. crazy yeah, coke yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what are you doing coming to Colchester with coke? Unbelievable. So, yeah, we kicked this dude's ass. No, I'm just kidding. We didn't kick his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah, nobody on weed's was, ever kicked like, anyone's as ass. As I look back, it's like an after-school special. I remember being with some chicks. I mean, oh, my God, he's got cocaine. <laughs> like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> he's a cocaine. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I left thinking, like, yeah, that's horrible. That's a fucking crazy drug. Fast forward, I'm living in Vail, Colorado. You get to a mountain town, dude. Is fucking like built for, out of cocaine, pretty much. <laughs> we love. White is it powder. snow or is that cocaine? Right, 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 right. You know, night skiing isn't isn't going night skiing when there's no lights on the fucking mountain. It's like mountains of cocaine. Oh wow, Tony Montana. Yeah. Um, but anyways, my neighbor, you live in, you know, you pack eight people into a two bedroom. Bail's expensive back then. It's worse now. Um, but you know, there's snowboarders, there's skiers. Um, there's guys who moved in from maybe Peru or Mexico and, and they're, we're 10 deep, they're 10 deep. Turns out they're just chopping cocaine and living there with their kids. And this dude, Miguel or something comes down to our apartment and he's like, dude, there's kids up there. Can I like weigh my cocaine here in your apartment? Oh, wow. And we're just like, what the fuck? Weigh cocaine? And, uh, sure. Dude, whatever, <laughs> like drunk. Yeah. And the dude comes in, he's weighing all his cocaine, and we're just watching him because we were, like, chill with him. He was our neighbor. Um, didn't, like, expect anything, and then he just, when he left, he just gave us a bunch, and we're just oh, like, wow. fuck. And then he tried, and you're like, this isn't what they told me it was. Right, right. And, uh, you know, that was the first time I tried cocaine, and then you realize that shit's pretty mellow, and, you know, I'm not trying to glamorize anything for anyone because it's, what's what's crazy in what you say about drugs and and it's really different people have different effects. For me, like, cocaine doesn't do much. And and it's, like, not something that's going to, like, like uh, I don't know, upturn my life. Yeah, it doesn't But there's another dude to... next to you. Yeah, yeah. He's going to do a low line of cocaine. He's addicted right. like crazy. And he right. never stops. And he goes ham bone. Well, and... the thing, of, yeah, the thing about it is, um, again, to say that no drugs are inherently bad. Yeah. It's um, like your chemistry and, no and how's it going to... Yeah, no people yeah. Are, are inherently bad, right? Like, it's just... When some people can't have alcohol. Some like, people can't have sugar, dude. Yeah, dude. Like, that's... This For is real? what we're talking yeah. about. Like, in in Overeaters Anonymous, sugar, uh, sugar is like the devil. Well, sugar is, yeah. It's really right? what so, screws you. So, it's like, what is a drug, Right. A drug is something that changes the way you feel when you take it. That's kind of the whole idea, yeah. right? But you feel a lot different when you had a chocolate bar than when you didn't have one. Yeah. Like, so it's the same. You definitely feel way different when you have a coffee than when you haven't had one. Yes. And you're most people that are. And then when you coffee stop having coffee, yeah. you have headaches and you you're have like, withdrawal. What's going yeah, on? You actually hey, have withdrawal. withdrawal. Right. So. And it's, it's wild shit. Um, but yeah, different strokes for different folks. People hit. Drugs different, you know, so I would just do cocaine here or there uh, with your with your party night. You know, mm -hmm. it's nothing like I don't even my whole time in Colorado. I don't think I even sat like sought out and bought it. You know, right, right. If it was around, it would show it. up or this homie would give it to us because he'd be whatever in Colorado, you know, <laughs> not a big deal. You know, it's like whatevs. And uh, but in some way, 
let's, let's to me, let's say, it's, not a big deal. It's Other a big people, deal, right? it could change like, their life, right? And, but, and, and I'm it, skewed, maybe, and maybe it because did of what happened when I was child, right. a child, uh, you know? right, right. So when I say it's not a big deal, it's like Grandpa just being like, "Here, have a sip of this seven yeah, and seven. Am I skewed? And also, is it the movies I watch? And yes. I hate to say that because it's like. When you're a kid, if someone told you, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Right. But, you know, it's it's glamorized, Tony Montagna. 100%. That's some cool shit, dude. That was a right. really cool movie. Right. And if you But can, in real life, it's not cool. And if you can handle it, you know, you might get some clout in the group. Or if you're doing coke, you think you're the man anyway. So, yeah. you know, not everybody, but like for a lot of people, um, I've seen it with friends where... It's like, I'm never doing that again. And then the next night they're drinking, they're like, call the guy. Yeah, call the call guy. The guy. Call the, the guy. Watching your friends that are call the guy people, like when they yeah. go. They're and it's like, one beer ATM. Yeah, and it's like, a, it's like a child's birthday party. Oh, yeah, don't mind if I do. I'll have a beer. And then yeah, a child's birthday party. Why are you calling the guy to <laughs> a fucking child's yeah, birthday party? You don't party. need to call the guy. Yeah, it's yeah. a child's birthday. This is yeah. not in the zone this to call the guy. Zone. Are we partying tonight? We're, We're not gonna in party Vegas. Tonight? Yeah. We're going to party tonight? We're partying? We party, and that, get to party. That's that dude who just has that personality. And we're making, f- I'm, I'm making fun of him or making light of it now, but it's serious. No, it's way serious. Like I, if you're, you're scared a guy, for that it's guy, serious. Yeah. you're scared for that guy. Because where does it end? Or girl, and or how much money is going to be spent? It seems very. It how much alcohol is going to be expensive. consumed? Right. What's the world? All of a sudden, this guy is interjected into. To where he's always got to call the guy, mm-hmm. and who is the guy? What else? What if is the, the guy, guy gets selling? pinched? Right. And and what if the guy's got a gun? I think that's the gateway thing. Is what else is the guy selling? Yeah. Like, and uh, the guy who is the guy hanging with, and is the guy's friends going to come mug you? Like, and if is that guy really, going to rob your house? Is if you're gonna... really excited, right, to go out with your buddies and do some drugs, and all of a sudden there's no coke in town, well, maybe you'll try the other thing. Yeah. Right? Oh, we got these pills. You can crush them up and snort them. Try yeah. that. Yeah. And if you're looking for the Coke buzz, it's mm-hmm. going to be meth. Mm. Or Adderall, I guess. Mm-hmm. But you want to move on that upper train, you know, and, yes. and keep going that way. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's rough. It's a hard so thing. So for, for listeners that don't have any drug education, um, there are two main types of drugs. Three, really. Uppers, downers, and changers. Yeah. The What's change- a changer? Changers are like the psychedelics where... You're not gotcha. really going to get addicted to being on acid all the time because you feel so different Good. and you're yeah. so There's... not able to do real life, yeah. normal life. Yeah. That, Dude, I remember once yeah. I took LSD and went to high school. school. Yeah, me too. Cross the line. I don't. That's a line I was like, I cannot. This is not the line. You know what I mean? That's this is beyond. Yeah. You need to I, like. This, walk I went away. a step too far here. Yeah. You need to. I'm walk in a away. place where this is this is not cool. To These two be things here. don't work. No, dude. Yeah. And it starts to fuck with your mind. It does. And it's bad. And yeah. So the changers, you're definitely not getting addicted to the changers. But what sucks is, like, we can't go ahead and say those drugs are okay, even though they're supervised. Because I have seen some people where it's messed their head up. One doing it one time to where that person was never quite the same. Well, there's also Lisa and Hudson. It, it maybe triggered something. And her her son tragically just lost his ability to figure out, you know, what the world around the, him and he yeah, fell off. A, fell off a deck. Uh, it was so awful. Yeah, and it's so heartbreaking. And so it's in, important to anyone listening, like, just because that's a changer, it's not addicting, it doesn't mean that that's something that that can't have that effect that's going to change your life. There's so many factors to taking drugs, right? Like sometimes, you've already said in this, if if you're in a situation where pharmaceutical drugs can actually help you, get a a doctor to help help. you do it, right? And, And now we're at this stage where these drugs that we were told had no, you know, no um, good use in humans are being used to fix people from, like, well, stubborn that's what's crazy PTSD too. and shit. Yeah, dude, and that's some real shit. And, yeah. and so, okay, so maybe you might take the LSD and you can't fathom some shit and something happens, it's a horrible accident. But if you're with someone that's, you know, professional and you're in the right setting, Set and, setting. and they're going through this thing with the PTSD and helping, like, that's, yeah. doc- you know, it's different. Mushrooms. Yeah. 
the, you know, ketamine. There's, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's ketamine therapy. Yeah. There's Now they're starting yeah. with the mushrooms for, for PTSD. And, right. And it's like, you know, you got to, I guess, look at that. And if that's something you believe in, pursue that and, so and look are, into it. Those are the changers. Now, the uppers, uh, pretty much the, the biggest addiction in the world is to caffeine. Yeah, that's and, true. And, huh? and there's not much of a difference between caffeine and crystal meth as far as the mechanism of action. Yeah. Right? Uh Caffeine's not going to make you freaking stay up for four days and then take unless, a toothbrush every square into your house. Unless <laughs> you take a big giant pot of espresso yeah. and you chug it. You're, I still you're don't be think pretty, you're going to stay up for yeah, four days. No, you won't. And go into psychosis. You won't go. You might go into coffee. I don't know. I bet It'd be interesting. I'd like to psychosis. do some research about if there's a coffee right. psychosis. The thing about. But, but meth also is doing things to your body because of the ingredients. Yeah. That is like rotting it from the inside out. And, right, right. And your teeth are going to fall out. And it, there's some shit that's hardcore that isn't going to happen with coffee. Right. And. And a lot of the. A lot of, a lot of people that get hooked on. Meth, for example, are self-medicating for issues that, you know, they need connection. They need help from a, a support group. Yes. Whether it's friends, family, community, you know what I mean? Like, it's tough when you see somebody in your group kind of drop off. Yes, and that was me. And I took opiates too far. Um and to the point where I started, it was good. What was the first Let, opiate? Let's say that I had like had. a 10 year relationship where mm -hmm. I was a functioning addict. Yeah. And it starts, you know, the classic thing with a snowboarder someone gets hurt and, and pills are prescribed. And, and back 10 years ago, man, they were prescribing these pills like they were candy pretty much. Yeah. There was There's a epidemic, movie, yeah. uh, Happy Valley, yeah. about Utah. And the Mormons would, uh, you know, you can't do drugs, drugs are bad. Yep. Doctor prescribes me pain pills. Well, that's okay. They prescribe me Xanax. That's okay. I'm mm -hmm. okay now. But those are all very addicting things. And the whole OxyContin thing is gnarly, man. It's it's very gnarly. Yeah, and now it's fentanyl, and, and that's a whole other thing. Which has but, been around for a very long time. It's yeah, not, it's, and all of a sudden, I think, though, it's because it's being processed way stronger or something because no, of China it, it's the it's the uh availability of it it uh, was always it just there. wasn't available before. it wasn't available but you're right i remember because it's, seeing it because it's fast acting right and so it it's fast to go up and it's fast to come down uh, yeah so you you get the you get the hit that you're after but it it only lasts for like 15 minutes or something it's not long enough and then so, they keep doing it and now yeah. it's very addicting and now we're hearing that it's being put in your cocaine, it's being put in your meth. Right. And the reason being is those weren't addicting enough. Right. They're more mentally, yeah. let's give them a physical addiction. They're going right. to be coming back for more. Right. And the problem is it's like 10 times stronger than, what, than uh, heroin and, yes, and, 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 and opiates. And, and one of the things about opiates is, is that um, they, uh, the effect wears off, so you, want, you need to get more. So yeah. as, you get, as, you, as your dose reaches uh, a fatal dose it's a fucking you're riding a fine line right yeah so you're riding a very so I was fine line. pain pills and yes. you know you're getting your pain pills and it's funny because there's a stigma on 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 opiates let's it's funny there's there's pain pills you know there's um that the doctors prescribe there's uh what the the rappers drink, you know, the the purple drink, that's just an opiate. Yeah. And then there's heroin. There's actually four different because there's uh, morphine. Yep. They're all made from the poppy plant. Correct. They're all the yeah, same correct. fucking thing made three different ways. But pain pills are like, oh, he's just on pain pills. It's cool. Right. And then right. you get in the rappers are like, they're just openly talking about about the scissor, and it's all right. And then. Heroin is like holy shit! What the what's going on? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. all gonna do the it same is. thing, right, right? And uh what happened to myself? And it was my I did it to myself. I I was getting pain pills, and one day the dude doesn't have pain pills, mm -hmm. and if you don't get them, you're uh, gonna get sick. How long was the pain pill process? Oh geez, I think I don't know, a couple of years maybe. A couple of years. And, yeah. and and and, and also your your tolerance 
Yeah, the tolerance. You, you, you thing. start with like you get one pain pill, you great time. You're good. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it takes two, it takes three, it takes four. You know, it, yeah, it keeps going up. Yeah, and a, the pain pills are expensive, dude. They're like from twenty to sixty dollars a pop. I think Oxy's people pay like eighty dollars a pop. And so imagine as your shit, your tolerance changes. All of a sudden you're like, dude, I can't spend like Look, X I, amount a yeah, day, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm a I'm a money guy. Like I'm I'm a fairly cheap person. And if I could get a point of heroin for twenty bucks. What are you gonna do? And that's equal to like Yeah, that would last you all day, probably. Yeah, like eight of these pills, ten of these pills. The pills are like eighty bucks each. Yeah. Fuck that shit. And so it's just your your choice you only have one choice you're eventually getting pushed into it you're yeah you're basically pushed getting pushed into and it pushed and i remember thinking um the dude i got it from was like well dude you can just smoke it it's different it doesn't matter you're not injecting it right not as addicting okay. um it's just as addicting <laughs> right and right. i thought i could do it like a gentleman just do it that one time and, right. and then i get pain pills the next Back day the pain pills and right. then uh you know, all of a sudden it's better. It's cheaper. It's so much better, right? Like you just change. Yeah, it's over. so much better. Um, I still though, there's certain lines I'm not gonna cross, and you know, I've never injected anything. And a, a lot of people, you know, you say heroin. The picture is you under the bridge downtown. And yeah, with a you got a with, needle in your arm. With a needle in your arm. Yeah. Um, when you're smoking it, you can't smoke enough at one application to die. Okay. From from my research, I mean, I'm sure it's happened because yeah, of fentanyl. I, we fentanyl should, changed the game. For for yeah, don't, for your I'm show, I'm not a doctor. Let's for not for your show. You should probably like yeah. every single one of those. You need to go back and check and put up the facts. Yeah, like, hey, you know, you I'm could probably die from wrong. Smoking. You could yeah. overdose from smoking. I, I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. Let's say, but yeah. and I have researched yeah. it, and I'll I'll put some research up. Yeah. Um. Let's say it's much harder. Sure. Fentanyl though changes that game. Changes. And it. you don't know if fentanyl is put in your stuff. And you don't know how pure it is. You yeah, don't know dude. I've heard stories. I mean, I've seen it on like, and I don't know. I guess I've seen when you see it on TV, you don't know what's what. Yeah. But I've heard of fentanyl with fentanyl. It's so strong, you take like one hit smoking yeah. and you can die. Of course. Because it's right. that fucking strong. Sure, sure, sure. And these guys are putting it into all the drugs, and Everything. so you don't know what you're you're getting. Um, and you know, we ended up having a a dealer we worked with, and we had our shit tested for fentanyl mm -hmm. because you know not you can China. get the fent you can get fentanyl strips. Canada's yeah. pretty forward thinking. You can get your drugs tested for free, dude. Canada, you can go. Well, they administer. They'll they'll check it for fentanyl. They'll administer. A nurse will administer it for you. Sure, and you can just sit there yeah. and inject heroin and truth and and. They'll check your vitals and make sure uh -huh. you're okay and make yeah. sure. Not I mean, that's fun. crazy. Yeah, Canada yeah. does that shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's turned into this thing that went on like ten years, and it was myself and my wife, and uh, it was great at first. It was this awesome fucking thing, and it works and it works and it works until it doesn't, and then it turns a corner, and then you need X amount of it. And then you're not getting high anymore. What was the? You're you're, you're doing maintenance, you what, know. What was you're trying the, to not get sick? Let's say. What was the thing about it that was excellent? Because you. Did, I mean, I don't want to go and glamorize. Were, were you hurt when you first started, and then and then you're like, I I fucking kind of like this. Um, or were you not it, even? I mean, hurt I don't want to. First got no, I've had like dudes. I have snowboard injuries that are like, like you just saw me my ankle when the snow yes, when the weather yeah, storm yeah, hits. It's yeah, like yeah, it's like uh, I think I broke one of them twice and. Snowboarding jacks you up, and that's it why, does. unfortunately, with the athletes, and not just snowboarders, all athletes, there's, like, the dopamine hit. Yeah. There's the injuries, mm -hmm. and they're put on pain pills, and, and unfortunately, we're like, it sucks. There's a, it, it's like you're exposed to this stuff, and yeah. it makes that shit feel better. But not only does it make that feel better, it makes anything feel Everything. good. Everything, right, right. Just right. issues go away. Okay, so no, without glamorizing. Yeah, it, and it's not. It's, let's not glamorize it because it's fake. It's a trap. It's well, like it's a. It's also, a, let's say it's like this fake fucking trap. I mean, that's why they call person. it a trap house. Yeah, yeah, a trap. House, <laughs> it's a trap. Right, right. right. They want to trap you. Yes. It's like getting a bear claw around your foot. Yeah, You're yeah. stuck. Or a bear trap. Yeah. Those, I mean, yeah. yeah those, for anyone who didn't know, it's a trap house. Is your trap? They're yeah, trapping you. Yeah, and and the and. Like an opium den 
it's back in the day. Opium, yeah, there was those opium shit. dens. It's they the were sitting there, shit, and it's right. like, yeah, right. And it's all the trap is this is like okay, it's like you only need this little bit at first. It's this, it's fun, and all of a sudden you and need it feels double good. that, right? And yeah. then and you then it more. starts to feel scary, you need more. right? Well, and then it doesn't feel good. All it does is make you feel normal, right? If you don't take right. it, you're right. sick. Right. And you're going to puke and you're going to have the worst flu you ever had. Right. So all of a sudden, like the high time's gone. You're just trying to fucking not get sick so you can go about your life. I was what's called a functioning addict. Right. Um, You know, I had a career as one of the top professional snowboard photographers. And you're going to find out if you do some research, dude, there's lawyers, there's doctors, there's school teachers. It's it's everywhere. Right. right, It's all around you. And you might not know because they're functioning act. There's pilots. There's yes. It's everyone. L- let's talk all about walks of life. some of the lengths that you would have to go to as an international, a regular international traveler who's got this, you know, addiction, which yes. is which really is like a, something you have to plan for if you're gonna. Well, I, if I'm you're living gonna go in a. a trip. I, I'm working in a scenario where I might have to go on a snowboard trip with like two days' notice, mm-hmm. and if that's the case. I still wasn't prepared to like not do my career, right? Which is interesting. I mean, the problem is my wife and I were drug aficionados. Okay, you know, like I've always been just attracted to this drug culture and the movies and the music. And hey, I'll try anything once. Sure, we always said that, um, and that worked until it didn't. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like that's an, why we tried it. Like I don't think I tried these things because I was like escaping because. Through my process of recovery, I've heard stories that, man, anything that happened to me is, like, not even close to, like, being forced to become a sex worker and, and you're trying to process that or mm-hmm. or just going to prison and being put in these situations. You know what I mean? There's some bad shit that goes on and mm-hmm. these, or, or, or having a, an uncle do crazy shit. You know what I mean? Like, stuff that is just changing your life so bad that you can't live with it. You can't live with yourself right. until you numb yourself. That wasn't me. No, this is uh, this is akin to the guy who drinks a couple of beers on the weekend and then is like, you know what, it's fucking Wednesday, but I feel like having a beer. You know, I've had a, a tough week. Yeah. I'm going to have some, you know, and then before you know it, you're drinking every, every night day. of the week. Yeah. And then you're thinking, oh, I got a big fucking thing tomorrow and I can't sleep if I don't. I don't sleep right if I don't have like six beers. Yeah, and then you you start to get worried about like, uh, oh, when does a when when does a beer store yeah. close? That's a Canadian reference. When well, what sucks yeah. for alcoholics is that's in their face all day too. It's that in their sucks. face everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's crazy is alcohol. You actually, if you're a hardcore alcoholic, you would draw more than the heroin addict, and you could die. And yep. it's, it is messed up. And yeah. that's the one that's like legal. And it's a real it's thing. It's crazy, dude. And if you talk to police about who who perpetrates violent crime, now you don't even have to talk to the police. It's definitely not the weed smoker. You can <laughs> look at the... Yeah, so if you do talk to the police, they're like not the weed smoker yeah. ever. It's always the alcohol, uh, like people who are on big amounts of alcohol. Alcohol was a factor in 70%, 70%. A violent crime. Damn. In the thing that, uh, in in the study that I heard about it in. Now, 70. 70. 70% 70 of of violent crime, alcohol played a a factor. So uh, we we definitely need to look at our behaviors as a culture and figure some baseline shit out, right? Because prohibition doesn't work, right? No. It just doesn't work to to make something legal in one context that's highly addictive. Yeah, that is when people are going to find a way to uh, yeah, if they uh, want something, yeah, they're finding yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that goes back to okay, I got to travel to places. Mm-hmm. I got to find a way. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, dude, that's like crazy to admit. I've traveled to places I should not travel to and brought it with me mm-hmm. because I didn't have a choice. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to not go and do my job. You were putting yourself and the team at risk or whatever you want to say. Uh, at least yourself. Well, myself, yeah. Like you I gonna, mean, I would have had to take... You're going to go to fucking jail. I always flew, like, tried yeah. to travel and fly in myself and yeah, and that kind of stuff. Okay. But um, a lot of times what I would do was, because I only had a couple of days, you can... I would f- just do it, like, flying in 
And before I got to a place and got through customs, it was done. Mm -hmm. And then on the plane is usually like a 18 hour travel day to a lot of foreign places. Fuck. That's the amount of time that you need to go from your last hit to when you take suboxone. Okay. So the second What's I get off the plane, yeah. suboxone, um, suboxone's a medication that's going to uh, block your op op opiate receptors. So it's a, so the it's a prescription or a legal um, opioid. Like, what do they call that? It's like, like a, I'll have to put up some information about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, but what it's going to do, it has no naloxone in it. And it like, it, it's interesting because it does two things at once. One, it blocks your receptors. And then two, it like does something for the craving as well. Oh, okay. And so what it's going to do is when you quit without it or even come off it too early, dude, you start having dreams that you're out trying to buy. Mm. It's like, and that goes actually, I've heard that for... For uh, all drug addicts, it's crazy. It's like a whole thing. Oh, did you do the dream thing yet? Dude, you... I, I I dreamt. Or you're about you're trying to do the drugs I, in your dream. I, I dreamt that I that I was drinking drinking straight from the bottle, like yeah. just gulp gulp. But nothing's gulp, coming gulp, in gulp, when you're gulp, when you're gulp, doing these gulp. other drugs. Like nothing. Right, right, right. You're like smoking the drug and it's not. It's not working. It's not it's coming. Not yeah, yeah. And it's because yeah. you're in withdrawal and you want it and uh, you just fell asleep yeah. sick and yeah. And it's horrible. Yeah. But so I had a, I was able to come up with a system. And I think part of it was because I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, your body is a little more resilient. Mm -hmm. And it didn't always work. Sometimes I'd end up getting sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to deal with that. And it sucked. It's like the worst thing you've ever dealt with. What kind of covering up was going on during these early, like at the early time? Like, did you develop a, a habit of just, Staying out of everyone's periphery so that you didn't have to lie about it ever, or or well, were, no, yeah, or I were tried there times to, where somebody's I, like, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing right now?" You're like, "Oh no, yeah, not at all, never, 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 yet. always just well, like the only." You, what are you smoking out there? Yeah, like fucking tin no, it's, would never, no, dude, never, it never it's, happened. It's just fully down low. Yeah, just my wife and I, and yeah, and that would be it. Yeah, so you, know? you didn't have to lie to your wife here when it's here. You're yeah, because that would have ended shit probably way quicker. You, yeah, someone yeah. you're sleeping with in the same bed, they're gonna yeah. figure that out. They're gonna figure you know? it out pretty quick. But no, there's people that do figure out how to hide it. I guess so. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and were you were you like, like, uh, you know, okay. I, uh, I'm going to get high at the end of the day. I'm going to get all yeah, this work be, done, and then I'll get high and sleep the yeah, night. Yeah, I'd have and, it figured yeah, out where, yeah, like, yeah. boom, morning time, so you're not sick. I basically would be on a schedule. Yeah. The second I started getting sick, I, I got to figure it out. Uh -huh. And so do it in the morning, and then do it at night, or, like, right when you get in, when it gets dark. And then once right before bed, like, three times a day. And then I just wouldn't get sick. And that was just the goal. I was like, boom, I can't get sick. I have a job to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, that works eventually and eventually, and then it doesn't. Cause it's kind of, you, cause you, it's kind of like, well, cause the, it you're starts just changing cause you need that more. You're staying normal with this thing. That's all I'm trying point. to do is stay right. normal. Like you wouldn't yeah. have been like, like you think of a heroin addict and like I said, it's just some dude with a needle N nodding off and he's right. nodding off. Right. Like, I mean, I remember seeing, uh, I just watched recently the, the, uh, what's his name? Edward Scissorhands there. Oh, yeah, Johnny Depp. So in his court case, they show footage of him nodding off. Yeah. And he's talking about how he's taking uh, pain pills. I'm like, that guy's not taking pain pills. He's doing heroin. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, he was, yeah. but they just dumbed it down because sure. heroin is a fucking hard word. It's a hard word. It's a word that is, unfortunately, for the heroin addicts, it's a word that puts them in a different category. And I guess I'm here talking about it because, one, I know there's other people out there. And... You know, there's help, and we'll get into that. But it's the same as the pain pills, and so let's let's not get that twisted. It's all the same. Let's not glamorize scissor, because you can listen to some lyrics when they say like talk of they talk about going into withdrawal right. in the lyrics, right. and it's just like right. there's some new song I heard where it's like I'm gonna be out for three days. That's how long you're sick on 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 the shit if you quit, and it's like it's all the same. The scissor, the pills. The morphine, it's all the same fucking thing. It comes from the same place. It comes from the same plant. Yeah. It's just made yeah. a different way. It's totally. the same ingredient. Totally. And it's going to uh, have the same results. And it's the trap that's going to get you sick. And so you would have never known because I was normal. Right. And 
and it just puts you in a place where you're not going to be sick anymore. And it seems like some of the least tolerant people to understanding the situation that an opioid addict is in are probably doing some something to excess themselves, like having a coffee every morning. Yeah, smoking well, cigarettes. And everybody or, is. Yeah, yeah there's all yeah. these different forms scrolling, of scrolling. Well, there's also scrolling, different forms. Maybe you're addicted to yeah. sex. Maybe you're addicted sex to or, porn. Yeah, or uh, scrolling or whatever it is. And, and yeah. porn does bad yeah. shit to people too. And it's like there's crazy shit going on out there. And yes, and let's try to think, I guess, more about helping people. Let's be more inclusive. Let's be more passionate. Let's mm-hmm. let's listen. Let's not go on old stigmas. Yeah, that's important. And so for me, as I get older, it got to be a little bit harder. But uh, I ended up moving and like kind of, I have high blood pressure. And I ended up didn't get a doctor because you're smoking heroin. One thing you do is be like, oh, "I'll go get a new script for my blood pressure tomorrow." Whatever. Right. right I got right. all this other shit to deal with that I have to deal with. Yeah. Get that tomorrow. Tomorrow turned into too long, yeah. and all of a sudden there started to be effects that were affecting my health. I remember my wife had low blood pressure. I had high blood pressure. Right. Both of us, as we we're getting older. Dude, we were headed towards death, maybe, like, in a, okay. in a bad way. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was gnarly, dude. It's like the high blood pressure, they say, is a silent killer. But if you wait long enough, you start to, you can start to, if you Google it, you'll know the symptoms that are coming in, you know? What timeline are we talking with with Bombhole that Chris is starting to snoop around a bit about the, or at least. Well, like- I guess you got to remember, Chris, he has his own battles, that he had, you know, he's he's in recovery. He was very vocal about him. Yeah. Yes, and yes. so I can talk about him. He's he was had had his own issues, and he was that guy ATM or ate beer to the ATM, you know. So he yeah. ended up quitting. I don't think he went to any. Uh, I don't think he did any uh, rehab or anything like that. I think he was able to quit, and then was going to like AA and stuff like that. That's one hundred percent of the, you. Got to put that up on the. You know, I check with Chris and actually, yeah, I'll ask yeah, him. That, yeah, um, yeah, and in in my opinion, let's say that's what I think he did. I don't know. He might have. Right. I know he went to AA. He's told me that a bunch of times. Okay, and uh, he was worried about me. And dude, bless his heart, he was able to have an intervention. Okay, but way before the intervention, when's the first time that that he? expresses that he oh, suspects just a, something. It would be like, sometimes I would like just disappear on the week, weekends. Uh-huh. He had a friend um, that passed away that I think he found like with a needle in the arm. Oh, affected God. him. Horrible, horrible scenario. That's awful. I mean, he's been close to it, you know, like mm-hmm. with, and maybe it wasn't the same drug for some other scenarios. And so, you know, you can pick out and friends, girlfriends, like I said, and, um, and so, so he had kind of, and he was on his own journey, like trying to, and he still is always on like sound baths and, and wants to like really dig into the recovery, N- maybe not recovery, but just enlightening of the human self. Yeah. How yeah. do I be the best me I'm going to be? So he's on And a, he also it, wanted yeah. it for me. Okay. okay. So he, so he was, yeah. I remember now the answer to your question. Yeah. 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 He was at a, uh, the, the ketamine therapy. Okay. And doing it through with a, uh, like someone there to do it with them or a, yeah. a professional, a is doctor. Is that illegal here? No, it's legal. It's legal. If the doctor okay. Okay. can do yeah. it. Just want to make sure you're not like. No, it's, it's fully <laughs> yeah. legal yeah, yeah, with yeah. a doctor's office. That's very cool. Yeah. It is. I could see it being very, very helpful. Yeah. It, it's he, fucking dope. Middle of the thing, he popped up and was like, Ethan needs help. And. It uh-huh. came to him in that thing, uh-huh. and it was crazy, dude. And so he said that. Where is that? Like year know, one, like, year yeah, two, like in year, year one, three? dude. It was, year it was one. crazy. Okay. Um, and then like a couple times here and there, he would just be like, "Dude, I think something's going on. I don't know what it is. I'll have your back through the journey," you know. Yeah. Um, and then it just led into as I the blood pressure compounding with me getting older, health decreasing. You know, he got worried and had the intervention. And the night before the intervention, dude, my wife and I, we've been doing it for ten years. Dude. We were over it. Dude. Right. We we're like, dude, right. had you had you this is... had you guys transitioned during the bomb the making of the bomb hole from 
say pills to oh, powder no, or was we're you, talking you the s- pill thing is is like two years in the beginning and, and then, then it switched eight so years, let's go eight years eight years of, yeah eight years of smoking yeah. and i don't know the exact dates i, I, you know I mean I, or no, the no, exact no. amount I, i'm just trying to figure it out like yeah. had there it could been, be less had there been a had there been a transition from one substance to another yeah. that would make it a little bit more obvious and like oh for that time yeah, no because yeah, it was very deep and i was you, and you i was guys deep were, into the maintenance yeah, and yeah, just trying yeah. to not be sick yeah yeah that kind Kind of that kind of feeling. I'm just trying to relate it to something that people just have an acceptable relationship with, like alcohol. Yeah. Like you might have your brand of beer that you just don't feel the same if you're not drinking your brand. You yeah. Know what I mean, like this is a lot about comfort. It's about routine. It's yeah. about maintaining your life and control over yourself and your situation and the way you feel. Right. Like, I didn't feel great if I didn't have extra beer in the fridge just in case. Yeah. I, I, it would be hard for me to sleep at night if I didn't know that I was kind of taken care of if I woke up in the night and wanted to chug a beer or something that it was there for me. You know what I mean? And I think that most people would have something in their life where they're like, I don't like to take sleeping pills and I don't think I take them every night. But if I'm honest with myself, I take them every night. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that a lot of people have that kind of experience in their life without knowing it. Um, So that's the first thing. The second thing is it's obvious that if Chris is worried about this and he's saying he's got your back and you're, you know, and let's just, I'm, I'm guessing here. Yeah. But, if you're to say to him, you're on the wrong path. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. Like, don't worry about anything. me. Okay. I just went blank. Like, just yeah. let it go. Just like, th- yeah. Just let him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which probably was a sign, to be honest, you know? 100%. Yeah. 100% yeah. is a sign if you know people. Yeah. If you're, if you're I was like, like, fuck you, dude. What are you talking about, bro? Right, I'm not right, doing that. Right, you know what I mean? right. That's one way. Because I wasn't going to go there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like. Yeah. So I th- I think that, you know, if he's building this thing and he's really, you know, when you guys are having a lot of success <laughs> and your partners. Yeah. That's the thing. Your partners. Um, by the time he does the intervention, he's probably been through hell and back trying to figure out, do I do an intervention? What if I'm wrong? Well, what yeah, he like, apparently like the. Right up to it, he almost canceled it because he just wasn't sure. I saw him; he's fine, you know. Saw him; he's fine. Yeah, and that, he said that, that to me yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. And so the night before, my wife and I like prayed, dude. How do we get out of this? It sucks, like legitimately. And I'm not like a, uh, I manifest. That's my version of praying. Okay. How do we get out, dude? And it's like, I didn't know you could use insurance. I didn't know how do I get two people through? Because even with insurance, it's like. My deductible's 10 G's. That's 20 grand, dude. I can't. How do we do this? Wow. Scheme of things, it'd be cheaper, long run. Yeah. But how do I come up with 20K to get her and I there? Right. How do we disappear for fucking her? She's her Mormon parents. Like, it just didn't seem fucking possible. Every aspect of your life is tied into, like, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, you're going to lose your job. You're going to yeah. lose your family. You're going to lose. And, but how do I not do of, this? Of what, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. How do we get, do, how do we get done? And how do I do it for shit? two? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so it was gnarly, dude. It was like, there's, I see, it felt like there's no way out. And that's why it's important people listening. There's ways out and there is a way out. And you want to talk about it, hit me up. Cause I will be there and tell you and help you. Um, so there's this, I walk in to do a podcast and, and, uh, Pat Bridges is there. Um, Justin Meyer, uh, Travis Wood, an intervention specialist. And, uh, Chris, obviously Mike was Mike, Mikey right LeBlanc, um, people that are very, very important to me. That's a solid crew of yeah. motherfuckers right there. So they're like, you gotta go. And do this. And I'm like, all right, I'm in. But you got to get my wife to go. Because otherwise I can't go. I'm not going unless she goes. And so 
they were very stoked when I finally. I mean, it took, of course, it took. It wasn't that quick. It was like, well, really? Yeah. At first, there yeah, was it wasn't some, just like, oh no. You know was, I mean? was there well, some? First, you was know, there you gotta, some? Fuck you! You guys got well, the no, wrong there was idea. No, fuck you. No, I didn't go, even go there. No, but I've seen the, the show intervention enough that there's a process. <laughs> They hired interventionists. You know, Chris did. Chris put it all together. Like, yep. bless his heart. Yeah. Saved our lives. Yeah. Like, hands down. Yeah. Um, there's an interventionist. So, like, you got to go through this process. It's like, everyone's got to talk. That's how it works. And so, everyone spoke. And I'm just like, boom, I'm down. Let's go. And it was a special moment. Uh, it was awesome. And then, right into, okay, how do we do this for Angie? Mm-hmm. And, uh they boom came right over here. The intervention dude got a two for one spash. It was, yeah. it was on, dude. How Homie did, just made some loot. How, how did it feel to hear those guys in that room? It, for me, it was so dope because we had prayed that night before. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, this is fucking crazy. Here we are. And uh, of course, I'm not going to say no to Pat Bridges, Mikey LeBlanc, Travis Wood, Chris, Justin. Like it was. It was insane. It was like a. It was. It was awesome, and it was a cool moment. And then I'm like, "Fuck!" The, the intervention guy is like, "All right, it's gonna be like 45 days." I was like, "Why 45 days? Like, what did I just commit to? I got dogs. What do we do about my dogs?" Right. And they're like, "Dude, don't fucking worry about anything. Everything's taken like care. we're gonna team up." Yeah. Meyer took my cat. And like, oh, nice. I came back. Bean had this fucking dope haircut that that, that she is now because I kept it going cut. The I got, cut. we got yeah. it again but yeah. Uh, yeah. we kept it going yeah. but Sick. Bean was stoked had been living with uh, Meyer they hired a dog walker to come and uh, walk the dogs Brad. and the dogs had free reign a little bit which sucked but but whatever <laughs> dude it, sure, sure. it was cool because everything was taken care of um, but then they came over here and did it for the wife and that's a hard go because her parents are so Mormon, dude. She was, like, never down. Like, thought they would, like... Uh, in the Mormon religion, dude, it's, sometimes they, like, I don't know, give you the boot. Excommunicate <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, dude. And you, now you don't well, have a family. Well, not that she's not really a part of the church, but they are. Yeah. So it's not like they're kicking you out of church, but you might get kicked out of the fam. No, that's what I mean. Excommunicate yeah. you from the from family. From the fam, Yeah, dude. like, that's that. And that was a worry, you know? Like, her mom's never picked up a beard. Like wow. that's crazy to wow. me. That's crazy to you, but that's yeah. that's a Mormon religion, and and you know that's that's crazy. Um, so how is she gonna take this? And they ended up taking it really good. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and like helped Angie, and and like her dad basically was just like, oh, you know what happened is they you can't go to the same place. So her and I can't go to the same place because they don't want you being a crutch on each other. They want you to work on you. Okay. They don't want me working on her. And her working on me. Sure. And some people might come out of that 45 days and be like, you're the problem. You're you know, the problem. And they want sorry, you to figure sweetie. that out. Yeah, they sorry, want, And it happens. Right, right, I, right. I think it happens yeah. a lot. Yeah, I could imagine. I think it's actually rare that there's two of you together. I think a lot about your situation is is rare. Yes. Do you and know what I mean? I they don't told think that me you're that typical. at the spot, dude. Yeah, I don't think you're typical in, the, in this situation. Yeah. I don't, I don't think a lot of people function at the level that you functioned at. I, definitely not. Uh, international travel. No. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude. And like, um, you know, like just holding, uh, holding property. <laughs> yeah. Right. You did a big property swap in the middle of all of this. Yeah, and I ended up doing it so I wouldn't spend the money. I bought the house straight cash just so I wouldn't even have access to right, it. Right. Because you had. Where most people would be like, all right, right we're going to set up an investment. And- ex- 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 yeah. Ex- <coughs> yeah. Because you, you can, you, sp- you put like, all the money, my money into the house. <laughs> yeah. When you could have put a down payment and had money in the bank to, to just to run like, it in to a time run it. like yeah, I remember Travis would be like, no, 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 what are you doing? You don't just buy a house like let's, right. let's have money. I'll help you make more money. Take the bank. Like, yeah, no, take it's not the money me, to the dude. bank. That's, right, right, that's right, not my right, plan. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so that also explains a little bit of the frustration at the bomb hole, be, because this business was seat of the pants to start with, and very quickly became a money management project Yeah, where there's going to be money in a bank account that needs to be managed. And it's taken on by the guy who takes it on. And you're like, you know what? I don't really need to know that much about that <laughs> Dude, fucking <didn't>... shit, man. <laughs> don't tell me about the money really. And, and farther he... away from it, the better to be honest. Right, right, right. And the plan was to, um, which is a normal startup plan. We're going to put sweat equity in this thing. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know what sweat equity is, 
It's the work that you put into a new business to make it viable. And um, sweat equity means you're not getting paid for it, right? Like that's just the way that is. Like, yeah. And so when Chris comes to you and or you you guys are having one of these meetings about how are we going to do this, the sweat equity thing probably sounds pretty good because you know, by the time the money's coming in, you're like, I'll have this fucking addiction thing figured out. I'll be cool. Yeah. And, 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 but dude, that, don't give funny. me too much. Dude, one right thing now. about, uh, heroin, you're always quitting tomorrow. This is my last one. Oh, yeah. My last day. The same with yeah. Sig's, even. Siggy's. Last pack. Last I pack. I would tell them at 7 Eleven every time. That's the last that's pack, how, man. That's how you do it. Yeah. Remember, you. It, it's a ritual. You flip the you flip the cigarette so that when you you know yeah, what I mean. This is really this is going to really really be the last yeah. one. And it's yeah. like the same thing. Like oh, it's the last time I'm I'm getting last. this stuff. Every day is the last. Both day. of us, yeah. Angie yes. and I, would both yes. say that. Like, this is it. Last one. One one more. And then I'll figure everything out. It'll Should be we great. do one more? Yeah, it'd be great. People know that. Listen, if you're just a regular person out there in the world. This is that Netflix moment where you know you're too tired. You don't really care that much about the show. And you're looking, you go, go again? Yeah, yeah. just one Let's, more. Oh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> one more. Just Let's one do more. one more. Just one more. One more episode. It's kind of the same feeling, right? Like the next thing you know, you're like three hours past bedtime. More and consequence. Keep going. Right. Yeah. It's more consequence. And you realize, oh, I fucked my shit up. I, I have to get up early tomorrow. Yeah. I told you not one more. Like and that, here we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah here we are. Right. It, every day is the one more, one more. And it's yeah. like, it yeah. sucks, man. It's yeah. like another reason why it's such a trap. What I say, it's a monkey on your back. Yes. I had a gorilla dog. It was <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. You're going to be a monkey, be a gorilla. So the intervention is people who love you. Yes. And you, I'm sure one of the things you're thinking is like, what about the show? What, what happens while Chris I'm away? Just like, don't 45 worry about days. It. Yeah. Do we have 45 days worth of episodes going? No. Yeah. Like, no, he didn't. So were you thinking maybe maybe the show pauses or maybe he runs it by himself or you hadn't really thought of that? Was no, that not it even was really more like, thought? dude, I had my biggest worry was getting into um, detox and how that was going to be because that shit is rough. Dude. That's it's, a real deal. It's harsh. And from what I hear, you you guys took longer than yeah, like an average Yeah, me, person. because I had high blood pressure. Meaning that, yeah, like, yeah. you guys were fairly, like, fairly far down that Yeah, road. dude, with myself, I ended up having to get um, all these, like, heart tests and make sure that because of the blood pressure, I didn't fuck anything up, and I could have. Mm-hmm. Luckily, everything was fine. Mm-hmm. Everything's working fine. The old ticker's still ticking. Yeah, good. But. Glad you're here. Could have messed it up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with her, it was too low, so they had to get it high. And me, you know what I mean? It was yeah, like yeah. they couldn't even start the the phase of detox until that was figured out. So safe to say that most of your concern during that time is about yourself. And that's what you've been instructed to yeah. do. About your wife, which is the well, you can't life. even. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. take your. They didn't take my phone away, but at de- her detox, they took her. Phone Hold away. On. You had your phone the whole time? Like the most addictive thing? You could just call your guy. <laughs> what are you talking about? What I had to call her this? on the freaking yeah. yeah. When mine was in like a hospital and hers was in like a hospital slash like it was like one flew to cuckoo's nest oh, from what shit. I heard, dude. It was like crazy. Like a care facility, yeah, like long term care. What's wow. funny, dude, is I ended up getting into because from there you go into a full rehab house. Okay. So I'm living in it's like Big Brother or something. It was crazy. Of course. It's like something you've never anyone all no one's characters. ever experienced. Yeah, dude. all the characters. You're right. like put in this kind of a mansion for me. Yeah. Um, you're put in this like mansion and dope crib in Cottonwood Heights, actually in my old neighborhood, and you're like nude dude in the spot and you walk in and there's just random ass all walks of life people. My spot had twenty and there, there's a dude with freaking tattoos head to toe. Yeah. Like, holy shit, who's this guy? Like, he looks interesting. Full, He's in full withdrawal because they took him from prison, <laughs> and he's in there detoxing at the spot. So he's oh, so wow. grumpy, dude. Yeah. Head to toe, fucking no hair, like skulls, and there's like, holy shit, dude. I was like, I got to meet that dude. He yeah. looks cool. Yeah. Um, but this just all walks of life, and, and you're just thrown into this, okay, I'm going to be living here. And you're almost like, uh, you got like these 18, 9 year old, 18, 19 year old, 20 year old people that are like watching you and like, dude, you can't watch R rated. Like, there's this whole program built. Yeah. And you got to follow all these rules you're not supposed to share. And they're just, what they're doing is, tr- what, it's actually kind of interesting because you figure it out a little ways through. But like, someone tries to bum a cig off me, 
Yeah. You want to give him a SIG. I'm the type of dude who will give you a SIG. Right. Um, but there's a rule, no sharing. And if they call you, you don't get in trouble if you break rules, but you have to like write something about it. It's like you get reprimanded and it's, it's, it's awkward and you're going to do it in front of everybody. Oh, wow. But what they're doing, and you realize it like a week or two weeks in, they're reprogramming your brain. Okay. They're getting you used to these different rules. And one, you haven't got up at fucking seven in the morning consistently <laughs> since who knows when school. Dude, yeah. you haven't like been on this schedule where like it's the gym here and you're doing this and you're eating this and three meals a day. Yeah. Eight hours of sleep a Dude, night. The meth addicts hadn't up eaten early. in fucking Yeah. And you're with meth, every type of drug, but the meth addicts hadn't eaten in freaking four days, you know what I mean? And yeah. And the the heroin addicts have been eating too many sweets and just eating one meal a day and and it's like all of a sudden it's three meals cooked by this awesome uh different people there's like two or three people that made you these rad meals but then you had to like chore board and you know you have to do your chores and maybe it was dishes and and you're living in this this community all of a sudden and at first you're just like who the fuck are these people yeah but you come out of there being like whoa dude those there's some special people in there yes made some really special relationships yeah and that it's almost like being in the trenches again. Sure. Where you're making the the war. Like in, we talked about how when you're at war, you're in the trenches and you make this special relationship. Yeah. Our war was three hours of process. Okay. So <laughs> Every process. day, Monday through Friday. Process is the one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Everybody's talking. They're doing talking. it in there, huh? Yeah, they are. Everybody's talking. You know, they go around the circle. You want to talk? And you're like, not today. This guy... You know, and you got to tell your yeah. story, and then you got to tell your st- yeah. And okay. if you want to get out of there, yeah, you got to let's get into that. You got to like show that you're. If you want to graduate, like I at the end, I get a certificate yeah. that I graduated. You yeah. know, if you want that certificate, and some people are there for jail, they have to get that certificate. Yeah, that's the way. But you gotta, you can't just be like, no, I'm not talking today. And so it's like I was like first day, right? Let's go. You know what I mean? And so yeah. you end up telling your story and. And you end up doing it several times, and it's not just a therapist weighing in. It's like my tattoo homie, who's my celly, we call him, the dude with the tattoos, he uh, is giving you feedback from his perspective. Sure. Which is so different from this woman over here that grew up, you know, in in uh, the South and had her situation, and her drug might be alcohol. And and then this person over here that, like, they're, they're just every walk of life and if they so choose, they're going to weigh in and they, they have to, not have to, but like the therapists expect them to weigh in. And because uh, they, and what's funny is when you hear them do their story, you learn from that just like you're going to learn from yours. And so you all of a sudden are learning from 20 different experiences that people had mm-hmm. and realizing like one, man, we're all the same and we all have the same problems. Somebody's might be a lot worse and than yours and, and, but maybe yours are different and, we all have one thing in common, man, is the drugs and uh, trying to get through it. And the, the therapists are good at what they do, man. I went to this place, Wasatch, and, dude, they are, they got this dialed, dude. Like, they are such a good spot. And uh, what's crazy, I noticed, too, you start to learn is, well, one, the owner's making a lot of money. Business is good, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> the business of recovery is very, very good, and that sucks. Yeah. But the... Uh, the thing about the owner, dude, there's people that were there on scholarship because uh, they went through. Unfortunately, some people have been through the recovery like seven times or okay. 12 times. Sure. 90% chance that you're going to relapse and go back. Yeah, on, Scary. On time one. Yeah. Scary yeah. number right there. Yeah. But you know what? If it happens, you go back in. Yeah. And actually, dude, you're stoked. I see people come back in and they're just like, eh. Dude, they're so stoked to see the therapist. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe the, the person that they... Someone in my house was in detox with Angie. Oh, wow. And Angie had given the dude a note to give me because I had to talk to her like a school kid. Yeah. I can yeah. only talk to her. But he lost it. But it, it took like three weeks because like, I don't know if he thought I was older than her or whatever, but this dude was like, whoa, dude, your girl's name's Angie? I was in detox with her. Oh, my God. But he didn't know I was the same one. That is so funny. She said Ethan is at this place, Wasatch, and he thought he was going to 
It's called like Wasatch Mountains or something. There's two sure, of them. Sure. And so he thought it was the wrong place, but it turns out they were in. And he lost the note. By he lost the point. note. He came and he mailed it to me because we got out, and oh he sent God. it to me. In yeah. The mail. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, and it just said like, "Good luck, you got this," you know. Yeah, of course. But this experience, dude, is I think I'm sure they have it for people that and and they do actually. J.P. Walker's place sounded kind of similar, but not the drugs. You know what I mean? Uh, like to help you yeah, out a bit. I, I think if you're talking you know, about processing the Haven, at Haven, I'm, I'm going to be possibly the show will be sponsored by the Haven yeah. this year. And it's and I, that I, place I, sounds amazing. It's not. I don't think that. But well, he it's did a place say there was some stuff where they like that they, they can touch it, you in a certain way for and, addiction. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm saying it's yeah. not. Yeah. Not for addiction, but they do some of the same practices. Okay. Where they put yeah. you in a yeah. group and they you know processing and. I think from what. Kearns has told me, and I'm going to be going to the Haven in October. It oh, you are? Like. Yeah, for See? a, uh, f- it's it's for a, like kind of a handshake welcome to the welcome to the process. Yeah. thing. That I've heard that place is just insane. Yeah, it, I, he, I, I don't, I'm not I'm going to butcher it, but basically, it's like this is a way of living authentically in the world. Right? Yeah, like when you look around at the way that we live. There's a lot of fakeness. Yes. There's a lot of, you dude, know, there's so much and it processed sucks. foods and oh, bullshit and, yeah. and you know. I thought you were more talking about healthy. the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's yeah, one yeah, thing yeah, I yeah. saw in processed my my people. rehab is like the prison folk, dude. There's there's no fakeness there, dude. The real because fakeness comes out, turns into right? a shank. <laughs> you know yes, what I mean? Yeah. That, that's one unfortunate thing about rehab is the amount of stuff I learned about prison. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what, I never want to go to prison. It's a scary right. sounding place. But the terminology and like the words they're using yeah. and the gangs and how the police, uh, not the police, but the guards, dude, are, the drugs are coming in from guards and shit and it's corrupt. And what? Um, it's scary, dude. What? But uh, they don't fuck around, dude. They uh, they have something on their mind. They tell you what's on their mind. Yep. You're, you're rubbing someone the wrong way. I fucking hate you, dude. Like, oh, you'll wow. tell somebody. Yeah. Yeah, like you're a fucking dork when I met you. I hated you, <laughs> oh, but now wow. I kind of like you, dude. <laughs> like, the, my one roommate said that to the other dude. Yeah, and yeah. you helped them out. You got their back, dude. You got their back. Like, That's cool. They have your back, and it's it's really interesting the community they build, but it's also sad the rotating door. What amount of interaction with law enforcement had you had before intervention? Like, had you ever had, like, you'd never done jail time? No. Well, I I mean, I've been, J2 and I spent a night in the drunk, not the drunk tank, but they locked us up. I guess it was a drunk tank. Yep. Um, Other than that, I'd been arrested for some weed and let go that same night. Mm -hmm. Um, Not even, like, with a bail, just court case. So very minimal. Probation or anything like that? Um, no, from that weed thing, probation. Like, that's how it works in Utah. Bummer. But it was fucking easy. It was crazy, dude. They, like, it was really easy. That's a bummer. Well, because I was Coming doing from drugs. somewhere where the whole country But I was is. doing drugs and never got... Yeah. Never had a problem. You get pinched with, drug with testing. weed. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was, that's I skated incredible. through it all, dude. It was, that's it incredible. was crazy. Yeah. Because, one, they messed up at one place... COVID hit and they stopped doing people that were like low priority. Wow. And I just somehow skated through the whole process. And just stayed and on I, drugs. The if whole I time. didn't pass yeah. a drug yeah. test, yeah. I would have been like fucked and had to go to jail. Fucking jail time. And somehow right. like right. Right. it was just like what what is going on here? You That's know, like incredible. It sucked. Kinda yeah. you know what I mean? Right, right. Well, it sucks it's, that the drugs it, laws are so bad that dude, you can go laws. to jail for weed. Sitting, but not because of the weed, but because you're actually on other drugs dude, and they got you. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fucked up. Dude, sitting in the, when you sit in the courthouse and see how fucked up it really is, mm-hmm. it's so bad, man. I saw like instances where, you know, you get that free lawyer, like that public uh, yeah, defender. Public defender. I would see a public defender like be on their phone. Yeah. And be texting. Yeah. And then their client comes up. They never look that client in the eye. Oof. And they're looking at their phone or texting and maybe side eye, mouth, say something to their client. Mm-hmm. And then the judge would ask some questions <laughs> off to jail for six months. And that never eye contact from that public defender. That's And so I watched that up. shit and was just like, did this just happen? Like, what just fucking happened? Like, that dude's going back to jail and. Ouch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not even eye contact because. And then when that guy leaves and they're all laughing, the, these different lawyers are just laughing with each other. And God, fuck. It's just like, dude. The system's really? broken. 
It's so broken, dude. Yeah. That it's, System's broken. I don't know how it can even be fixed. It's so broken. It's just yeah. like in such a bad place that it's... And you don't really see it unless you're going to sit in that courtroom and watch the cases go down. And it, how it works. That's just how it works. It's that's like, how it works. You so, have to... Because you don't know when your name's going to get called. So you're right. going to go sit there for like an hour or and two. And you're in this process with people that's like... Like, fuck is is weed a felony? Are you fucked on, on now? That? They've mailed it out. No, it's not. Okay. Now they've kind of mailed it out, but it, dude, it used to be like you get caught with weed three times as a felony or some shit. Oh my god! <laughs> but I think they finally have 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 taken it down a notch. But you still got to go to like Lucas Magoon. Um, he talked about it on his thing how he had he basically couldn't come back to Utah for like ten years. Cause he like if he came back he was gonna have to go to jail. What the fuck? And it was like Dingo helped him get it, get it taken care of. Yeah, but yeah. it was because wow. of the weed fucking charge wow. him, wow. him and his wife. That's fucked up. Yeah, and it's like, dude, that's fucked up. Yeah. So and how excited these yeah. cops will get over weed? Uh, dude, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We got one. We yeah, got oh, one. Oh no, we fucking yeah, got yeah, one. Yeah, we got dude, him. Dude, I remember I got yeah. arrested like right up by my house in front of my fucking house. Yeah. Um. And I get taken all the way to Salt Lake Jail. And I'm in the jail getting processed. And the chick looks down at my what I got arrested for. Yeah. And looks up at me. And she's like, have they brought you in here for this? Oh, wow. <laughs> they're like, dude, they're not supposed to bring you in here for weed. What, what is going on? Hey, Jim, you see this? <laughs> I'm just like, bro. That's nuts. When they're laughing like that. And it's yeah. like, dude, come on, man. So. Uh, I had another court case. Bodie and I and a crew got got caught uh Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, wow. And I got like, uh, fuck, commit conspiracy to commit destruction on property or some shit. Cause oh, I was, my God. Because I was shooting. Right. It was jacked. Right. And then I, dude, and this, let this be a lesson. I peed uh, in the view of a school camera. Oh, shit. Uh, luckily, I just got a charge for peeing or something. But you Public can get, so you can get a sex offender charge. Oof. And the guy, Oof. I guess a month ago, the cop told me they they did it to him. Oh, he got wow. caught. And that, his wasn't on a camera. Um, he got caught by an actual officer and uh, got a sex offender charge for peeing at a school. No one saw him except that officer. And it's like, dude, they're going to do that to somebody? You know that, what that does to your life? Yeah, that's that's fucked. Yeah. That's awful. That's awful. And the yeah. system's just fucked. But you know what's cool, though? You When you're in rehab, uh, if your parole officers show up, I learned, first of all, everyone that's on parole is, like, jumping out the window and going out the back door. But you're fully under protection. Really? Yeah, the police aren't allowed to come. And, oh. and when you're in rehab... Um, they can't confirm or deny if you're there or not. Oh, it's against the law. It's like the oh, Hipp- Hippocratic oh. Oath. Sure, sure. And it's a part so, of the but system. But they don't know that, dude. So yeah. a cop pulls up and like four dudes are out the window <laughs> out the back door. Like, what just happened? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> but it's crazy, dude. You get in there and you're just like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm basically here for Chris and my friends, not myself. Right. A week goes by. It starts to change a little bit. And I'm just like, who are these people? By the end of it, dude, I'm there for myself. Yeah. Um, the people are like best fucking friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like what you go through and the shit. Like they, one of my friends from there and I were talking. Just the effect they have on you that you don't even know what they're doing to you. Weeks later, months later, you're at your. Uh, I was telling you I had that that thing with my grandfather, but it's all from sitting and thinking about the process room and what was said in there. And it just jars thoughts. It's cracking open like yeah. a, a, a way to heal childhood trauma. Yeah. Like the, some of these yeah. these therapists are like Yoda up in there, dude, just getting you, dude. Because that's what they're there for. Yeah. That's their and they're job. Good, they're like, dude. let's do this. Yeah. Let's get through to these guys. But not only girls. do you have that too, you also have your a one on one. So you have a one on one and then you have that three hours a day, which is pretty intense. That's like coming out of there just like fucking rubbing your head, just like, dude, what just happened to us? People are crying. You're crying because of what they went through. Um, you're crying because your own shit, and and you're just you're processing, dude. It's fucking crazy. And I think people need to kind of almost think about that. You can almost self process too. You got to kind of think about the shit that's gone on and try to, I don't know, like a, like really think about shit that's happened. And it's so good to talk to people. In psychedelic therapy, it's called integration. Yeah. And integration can take a very long time, right? Like, it can take a really long time. 
to like really let it sink in like what you've just been through. Yeah. Like this proof that you can do this thing, that there's another way of living your life. You can, you can motivate yourself to get off this very strong train that you're on. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that. And, and you can, you can live another way. This tough piece in the middle, which is why everybody is here is like, what happened when you got yeah, out? Yeah, that's what sucks. When I got in, um, man, Chris sent me this letter. I think he talked about a PSA. Most loving letter I think I've ever got from anybody, dude. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, dude, when I get out, this is going to be fucking dope. Uh, he came to, like, family nights. Because uh, we go to AA at the thing. Like, you do all the thing around recovery. At the place. We're going to AA. And then there's a family night. Chris would come. Mm -hmm. um, he came to my graduation. Mm -hmm. And like cried because I said a cool thing about him, mm -hmm. about how he saved my life. And like, I hope someone, you guys have him in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, the plan was to come out. At first, it was like to get right back into it. Um, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he was just like, my, oh, you know, Mikey's got to do a couple more because he has like attachments or has agreements with some sponsors. And I was like, cool, whatever, dude. Was, to be honest, I wasn't that worried about it. I've done 160 episodes it's yeah, like do whatever yeah, that man. makes sense sure um because they had to make a, a, other arrangements and you're yeah, like yeah, yeah whatever, that makes sense whatever. that all makes sense well it just didn't matter you know it's like what's some episodes it doesn't really matter you know right right there's different things going in my head because you know i'm at a place where like you know i mentioned how long i'd been drinking and then drinking went to this i'd been sober in fucking 30 years dude you know what i mean wow yeah. my head's in a different place all of a sudden i'm thinking clearer I never thought of my fucking life. Yeah. And it's like, and podcasting's dope, and it's something I want to do. And if there's a space for it, like, I wouldn't mind, like, setting up another night, right? And I could do this on the Discord if people are interested, talking to people about it. And if yeah. they have problems, they want to talk. Let's all talk, talk about it. And uh, people need help. Let's talk about it. And, like, the people that I have, that I, I met in there, and, and speakers that came in once a week, and my homie with the tattoos, they're willing to sit down and tell their stories of what they went through. And if that turns into another podcast, I'd be stoked on that. Because yes. I think, I think that'd be pretty cool. I think people would follow you there, too, from this yeah. from this snowboard scene, snowboard life. But it's, it's different because they're not all snowboarders. But, like, my homie Jeff with the tattoos, like, the story you're, you would hear from him are mind-blowing. And then even some people... You would never suspect the story they're about to tell you. Just mind blowing, and 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 you can learn from these stories. But then they're telling me, dude, I can get you like the biggest shot caller that's now like sober, but ran the gang scene, and now he's sober, religious, and as a family, he'll come in and talk. And it's like, dude, I'd love to hear that guy's story. Big. Yeah, yeah, that's big. And so if there's a space for that, and people will will listen, I'll start another night. Yeah, and that's why it's. The, the boarding house Podcast and not, studio. you know what I mean? Like it's uh, maybe it can get bigger. So to be clear bigger than to the Stony listeners Sparks. that came from snowboarding, you're going to have guests on that are snowboard. No, no people. Stony buds only going to be snowboarding. Okay. But you, yeah. So you could do another, if you there's, could do another, if yeah, there's yeah, space yeah. and people are interested. Yeah. And maybe I'll just start by doing some live streams and see if people get on Killer. on another night. Yeah, let's yeah, say. yeah. That's cool. You know what I mean? That's cool. And if people are interested, okay, let's do another night. I think that throughout the process of becoming very successful at podcasting with Chris, there was something that you knew in your heart that it wasn't a lifetime thing. The bomb hole? The bomb hole. It's tough, man. It could have been, but maybe it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, Chris yeah. and I. So I get out. You know, yeah. he picks up my wife and I graduated in the same day. It was yeah. awesome. Glorious yeah. day. I hadn't seen her in 45 days. The longest I had gone yeah. without seeing my wife. It was insane. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you guys Calling have been, her like a fucking You guys have been year old. married for 11. No, sorry. Uh, we are about to have our 16th 16. anniversary in and, like 10 days. And <laughs> seven years before that was when you met. Yeah. So dude. like you guys have been longest going we for had a not been very apart. fucking long time. Um, yeah. And it's like. That was crazy, and to be away from the dogs, and so it's emotional time, and we're getting out, and uh, Chris was just like, he was actually going to help me, or he did help me for like a week, um, kind of like, I'm going to check in, like, let me know what you're doing, you wake up, like, 
let's go. You got to start doing stuff. Like go to the park, do this and that. Let's reintegrate. Yeah. And so that was kind of the focus instead of jumping back into work. Mm -hmm. And then he was doing it, but it was getting intense, dude. He was like, wanted me to go to the dog park. And then he'd freak out if I was late to go to the dog park. I'm just like, dog, this is getting a little ridiculous. But, and I talked to, we talked about it. It was cool. I think, I think it was kind of an exacerbated version yes. of what you guys had already been yes. experiencing at and, the bomb And you know hole. what? There's a lot of hurtful feelings that Chris had, and I don't blame him. Yeah, man. You like, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let's yeah. be honest. Like, yeah. it's hurtful, and he's dealt with it with his family. It's like, boom, yeah. moved yeah. into this. It's a trust and issue. And friends. It's a trust issue. That, yeah. How that does he ever gonna, get back? Right, right, right. How does he get back? I lied about this big-ass thing. Right. How does he get back? Right. And so then, so then... You know, and it's in in my opinion. I can't speak for him. Right, of course. Well, the, and well, the same thing happens for me when I get here. So I thought I was coming into a place that was different than w- what it was. And recovering addicts look an awful lot like fucking addicts. So, yeah. Uh, so well, and that's like, and yeah. we can talk about that. It's tough. You get out, dude. And and I don't know if they they don't prepare you for this at the rehab, and they should more. Yeah. And what's kind of cool, I should mention about rehab. The, that 18 year old girl watching you, she's been through rehab. Oh, shit. Everyone there, except for wow. like one person. Everyone wow. they hire has been through it. Damn. The chick teaching you yoga, she's been through it. Fuck. It, it's nuts. And so um, I'd, I'd actually say one of the therapists been through it and got so stoked they became a therapist. So they're like the only ones who have yeah. been through it. Yeah, yeah. And so when they're giving you, it's cool because you're like, this is one of us right they here. Trust these motherfuckers. And they treat you cool. And yeah. like, yeah. No one's side eyeing you, yes. thinking you're freaking doing something sketchy because so they've all been they, through so it. So what they don't tell you is that you're gonna get out. You got a rehab. Everybody's gonna be side. Everybody, you. dude. Yeah. They might yeah. have been your best friend. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, it's just really fucking everything you're doing is something sketchy. And, as, and imagine if you're a kid. Yeah. yeah. And you're maybe I don't know, 25 years old, and and you just get out of rehab. You have you've lost your home and shit. Maybe you're homeless and you're getting put back in with your family. They're gonna treat you like you're a fucking criminal. Totally. And maybe you are. You are in yeah. that in in the laws but, and maybe that you we were. have. Right. But maybe right. the only law right. they broke right. was right. doing drugs. Right. Right. But now you're a fucking you're a straight up criminal. Right. And they actually they tell you a bit like there's a whole equation of like time plus good acts equal trust. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna have to deal with that because time's the only thing that's gonna heal it with you like. Coming through on mm-hmm. what you say, mm-hmm. um, and it was uh, Chris and I ended up having a meeting like five days after rehab, and you know we we talked about the future, and I thought we actually had a great meeting. We hugged after and said meeting should be like this. He needed me to sign some document, and it said like he could end up. It was for his protection, a document for his protection because of what he went through. At the end of the day. I signed it because it is what it is. I needed him to feel safe. Mm-hmm. And it said he could like drug test me anytime and right, whatever. If that's what you need, let's mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he went on a snowboard trip, came back and fired me over the phone. And in my opinion, you know, it's like I can see all his sides and I had nothing but love for him. Uh, I was never mad at him. I was hurt. Because I thought we had something special can I, that was going to last forever. But I understand, dude. I get it. Yeah. Can and I, so, can I, can no I, animosity. I want success for him. Sorry, sorry to cut off or try and cut off in this. I think the question that every reasonable person or many reasonable pe- people would have is was there any reason? That's the first question, even T Bird. Oh, so you relapsed. I don't, I'm not saying, so you relapsed? No, no, but that was, that's the big question. In, you must have relapsed. Dude, in, there was. In your, in your, in your heart of hearts and in your most honest with yourself and with the listeners who are. There was, there was no relapse. And, okay. And okay, listen, Chris, okay, okay. Chris knew that. And he, I mean, he could have, I signed that document. He could have done the drug testing and then like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And. It's like he went away on this trip and just it was too much for him to handle. Um, all of it come together 
And I think it affected his, I don't know, his writing on that trip, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. It, like, just mm-hmm. his head, dude, everything. Mm-hmm. And it was too much. And I get it, dude. It's like... He's been through it before. Yeah. And, He's been through it and, before. And, you know, I, I looked at it as in the... Dude, getting fired, like, that's weird with a partner. I was kind of bummed. We should have maybe just talked about it and yes. separated. Yes. There's different ways to go. He didn't know what to do, in my opinion. He didn't know what so to it's, do. And I don't yeah. blame him, dude. Yeah. There's no... Yeah. There's probably right. no good way to look there's at no it. Right. There's no yeah. right way to do it. I, and I'm not apologizing for for him. I, I just see it from... Well, I don't think a, he, do, he doesn't even... From a neutral he doesn't sta- have to give an apology. From a neutral standpoint, it really does seem like... You were both in really difficult situations. Yeah, we were in, uh, and, and we could have just handled it differently, I guess, for each other. And it is what it is. It happened, and it would have been cool if certain things went a different way. And then after I was let go, you know, things started, I started hearing I was, like, too strung out to work. And this was after I got back. It was like, dude, that never happened. Like, right, and right, like, And yes, I don't know where it came from. Right, I have no right. clue. Yeah. But whatever, it's like... Thing, I mean, things had to look a certain way, and and I don't know where it came from. It could have been anyone who said because he's an addict, you know, like whatever. And so, to you learn in the rehab, things don't happen to you; they happen for you. And eventually, whatever happens, you know, you got to make the light side of it and the right side of it. Yeah. And here I am, being able to do this on my own, my way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably what was meant to be. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Let's let's uh, give some shout outs to a very uh, a very special past guest of the show, one of the uh, original pro snowboarders. He was Jamie Salter's very first sponsored snowboarder, George Pappas. Oh, damn. He uh, has reached out to the show and has said that he would love to talk to you directly he runs a that would be he, sick he dude. runs a a an outpatient home oh a, really he runs a like when you get out of rehab in colorado yeah yeah, yeah then that's he, the then my he, then he, the guy who uh runs my own my place yep dude he has like it turns into this thing because he has his operation with two mansions basically yep and then down the hill you go to his next phase which yep. is the outpatient there you go because some people you Business know they, their wives booming. kicked them out Business, yeah, is, business booming. is booming, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's a great business because it yeah. feels good. But his, uh, you might come out and you're coming out of jail. Your wife kicked you out. You don't have a home, yes. so it's ne- your next thing is just like you can. Does he have one where you can live at? Or yes. is it? Yeah, so you yeah. can live there. And right now, guess what? It's empty because he's fucking exhausted. He's, you know really? what I mean? He's so tired. He's like he not taking like, new people right now because yeah. he's exhausted taking a break. And also, he's going to the World Championships of uh, of downhill slalom skateboarding. Wow. In uh, in Salem he? coming up, fifty seven. He's like, damn, dude, he must have some amazing knees. He's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. He's racing against kids that are barely twenty. Or something. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, ripping. He's get, ripping. Get him on here to talk. He, oh yeah, you definitely need him. He's out in here Colorado, to talk. right? He's in Colorado. That's sick, yeah, dude. and and he wants me to give you his phone number. Dope. I would and, love and, that. And I think that's super sick. Uh, George said today, and it really affected me. Just this thing about how things don't happen to you, what you said. Oh, yeah? He he was he gave the... My example I always use on the show is someone cuts me off in traffic, right? Like, because that, to me, flares me up in such a specific way. <laughs> like, Some people get asshole. so upset. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm one of those guys that gets so upset. Yeah. But from, from a, a, a neutral standpoint, that guy didn't cut me off. That guy changed lanes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying out to get you. <laughs> He, and yeah. he's not an asshole. Well, you know, it's funny. He, he could be yeah. someone who just uh, didn't check his blind spot. Yeah, or he's who, trying to. Yeah, exactly. Or who had his he signal on trying and tried to get in. You know what I mean? He And he could be trying to get to a hospital. It could be a woman that's when they, trying to get home to make dinner When someone's always whatever. trying to like make it about them, it's Correct. taking a victim stance. Correct. And that's another stance. thing you're not supposed to do. You're you not know? supposed to do it. And I, I, I applaud you in this interview that you weren't going that direction ever because I think, I think that the, I think the, I could say from spending this time with you that the rehab has helped. Yeah, dude, it's, it's that it's helped. It's crazy. Um, it's, it's a, they're doing awesome fucking work. Dude. They're doing it's, awesome work. It's nuts. And, and it, like, dude, I got a yoga mats at the house here. dude. It's, you, you know what I mean? It's like, mats. it's like, it's yeah. like, I would, I used to hate 
Yeah. Think, thinking yoga yeah. was some whack shit. <laughs> yeah, and then too. these fools, I mean, remember the first day of yoga in there the first week. It's like, what is going on? You're like, I'm not doing it. Dude. I'm not doing it. I have this snowboard body, dude. Look at how <laughs> freaking stumpy I am, dude. My fucking legs aren't doing that. Yeah. And I remember when I graduated, she's like, you are good at yoga. Oh, Keep that's doing it. yoga. Oh, good. Like, yeah, dude. yeah. But it just makes you feel so good. So what's the what's the rough plan right now? Like, what's your schedule look like around recovery? Like, are you dude? You know what's cool? You... Yeah, we go to meetings, dude. Yeah. We uh, the big thing for me is staying in touch with the people I was in uh, in the thing with yeah. at rehab. Yeah. And it's like, like one of them texted me yesterday, like so and so. My my sister heard you're doing a new podcast, and it's like. They had no clue, you know what wow. I mean? It's like crazy shit like that. And it's wow. like all of a sudden, like I have in my life in the past, I mean, since high school, dude, I haven't made friends that weren't snowboarders. Right. It's kind of weird yeah, to think yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I and got it almost you. is like, am I only friends with snowboarders? And all of a sudden I got like 20 friends <laughs> that, are just that aren't randos. snowboarders, yeah, dude. Yeah, And, you know, we all make that pack. Like, dude, you're going to do something stupid. Here's my number, you yes. know, and like yeah. call each other. And I've cool. gotten calls from them. Yeah. And it's like, it's this really cool thing, dude. Um, I've been wanting to get back out and play volleyball, but I told you I got a little plantar fasciitis, but I yeah. think I'm at, yeah. I think I'm at the tail end of that, dude. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I want to go back up to Wasatch and play some volleyball with the crew. Have you ever? Because a lot of them actually live at that. Oh, uh, inpatient spot Oh, sick Because they don't have spots to live anymore Yeah So I'm yeah, so excited they lose some shit Yeah Right, their house or their job or their Yeah, living. dude They're yeah. sick So have you ever had to call anyone? Um, dude, what's cool is I got the wife mm -hmm. And I got her sister mm -hmm. um, And what's funny, dude Is the amount of people Shout out Becky, she's Yeah, rad. Becky yeah. Dude, everyone who's in that intervention room Plus Becky and yeah. and, and, and a lot of people So many people are like, you know what? People go through this, they have no one to talk to. Right. I want you to know I'm here. Yes. I have like 25, 30 people to talk to, and some of them are like on the internet. Yep. And are just homies that are through the, the podcast world. And uh, it sucks for those people that don't have anyone to talk to, but maybe they met yeah. in there. But it's so cool to know how many people have just said unconditionally. Like LeBlanc still hits me up all the time. How you Good. doing? What's going on? Good. And it's just such a... Excellent. Uh, Excellent. It's, I mean, random people. Kevin Jones just reaching out of nowhere. Russell Winfield yeah, out of KJ. nowhere. Just people. They've had people that have gone through it or they've gone through it. And, and they want to just offer that up because it's a very important thing to have that person to talk to. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's needed. And, and trying to stay, up, like, with that community is important, too, you know? And it's crazy, dude, because I met a couple of the people that I'll probably be lifelong friends with, dude. It's, like, it's really, really cool because I'm excited to have other people hear some of the stories they've told me because it's impactful stuff, dude. It's, it's crazy. Let's do, the, let's do the golden question. Five years from now, where's Ethan? Dude. Where's Ethan and Angie? Where are you guys at? Where the wind blows, dog. <laughs> No, nah, dude. If, I mean, dude. If it was up to me, I'd be like cruising around Europe or something. Okay. <clears throat> but that's a tough one with the dogs and family and all that. So sure. The reality of it, man. I I hope to be talking with people, podcasting, and doing this as long as I can. And uh, I'd like to build up, build it up, so it's not just one night a week. There's more to it, you know. Mm -hmm. Community on Discord and helping people, and uh, this is where I want to be. Podcasting. Yeah. Um. Five years, it's funny. You guys say that a young person is going to be like, five years. Dude, yeah. five years is like, Chow! it's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Five years. So like... I don't even know, dude. It's, it's Five years is fast. Yeah. Think of how fast the, the last year to me went past. And I can't even believe the acorns are falling. I think I mentioned that yesterday. Like, right. the dog's running around with his damn acorn setting traps for me again. <laughs> and, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's winter again. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's winter. It's like summer. Movie like, it's, premieres it's, it's, are it's, happening. Yeah, it's crazy, it's dude. Insane. So five of those, and the older you get, the quicker it goes by. Yep. Um, you know, I just want to keep mastering the craft and get better and better and better and, and, you know, hopefully help people. And that's why I say, dude, anyone, anyone that wants to talk, because you got to have people that... You can't, if you come out to them, they might treat you in a way that's not that cool. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing about rehab. You get in there and none of them treat you like that. You are not someone that did something bad. Right. And they are just there to help you. 
and having that support network and people to talk to is is so important. And uh, I'll talk to any one of you, man, and and let you know like if if there's a way to help or a way to line you up with a spot, like people who line me up with Wasatch, or I'll I'll get you a Wasatch. It's it's uh, it's there, there's help, and I guess people just need to realize that. Yeah, it's not yeah. it's hard. It's not impossible like I thought it was. Right. It's right. the help is there, and and I would love to talk anyone through any situation, um, hit me up, man. I'm here. And I hope uh, we can build this community around snowboarding and beyond. And and uh, I'm just excited to see what the future lies because for the first time, I can look at it and uh, not be living in the trap house and uh, be in a situation where if I'm going to go on a trip to fucking Europe, I have to, like, all of a sudden be worried that I might end up in a fucking prison somewhere <laughs> or take my arm cut off in Turkey or something because right. I got caught with something. Yeah. Like, or the the Russian fucking chipping rocks in Russia and the tundra somewhere. You know what I mean? That happens, totally, dude. Totally, man. That happens if you get caught with a joint. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's that's not happening, dude. That'll never happen again. And uh, it's, it's going to be a process, dude. And the percentage... Of, of uh, relapse is high, dude, and it's uh, really scary. But if it happens, it happens, and I'm gonna be here talking about it. Yeah, dude, and I'm gonna go get the help. Yeah, and you've done and it. There you've it done it once, and that's yeah. the start, right? Well, now like, I know how easy that is, it, and it sounded to awesome. go through the process. Yeah. yeah. Well, and another big thing is it's you know it's like type two fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? It sounded awesome. When you're in it, you're like, ah, fuck this. this is and you're talking with a dude that's there, and you get that, you're talking about it, because yeah. I can't believe they're doing that. This sucks. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, towards the end, you're like, oh, man, like, really? No one's going to cook me food anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't be like a 16-year-old kid anymore doing the dishes and not even having a cell phone? Yeah, yeah. Dude, when they told me they were taking away my computer and cell phone? Yeah. Dude, I'm just like, that. whatever, dude, I'm out. Yeah, I can't do this. And they leave the gate open, dude, for a reason at this place. You can walk. You you want out, you're out, dude. You're taking up someone's bed. If you're not serious, right. there's someone who, who might die tonight because you're in that bed and they're not. Right. So if you're not serious, get out get and, out. and, and right. come back when you're ready. Yeah, man. Um, And they leave that door open and I've seen a lot of people leave and you all try, you try to not let them leave. Yeah. You sit there and you're like, dude, yeah. as a friend, don't leave. Or even like not a friend, dude, the guy, my roommate ended up leaving uh, day one. Wow. He was with me one night. And I just got to know him in that short time. And yeah. he needed to be there. He had like a head injury oh, and man. he was an alcoholic. And it's Oof. like, I think he left because of the head injury, really. And yeah. it's like, dude, like, don't go, man. And yeah. he ended up leaving. They sneak away, too. It sucks because they don't give you that chance to get him to stay. If you're gonna do a uh, a recovery podcast, you just might have said the title. Come back when you're ready. Yeah, true, dude. Right? Because <laughs> if you're not process. ready, and they'll tell you that, dude, yeah. they will be the you're you're the staff there, dude. You're not ready. Get out, dude. Yeah. Like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna be like taking up space and and taking up everyone's time, or you're in in prison or jail, and you're only here because you're not. It keeps you out of there. Get out, dude, because you're yeah. not serious about it. Right. Or if they think you're that dude who could go to prison and you're, like, playing the system yeah, because it's keeping you out of there. It's like, get the fuck out. Get out, yeah. And they'll kick you out if yeah. you do certain things wrong, you know? Yeah. And, dude, there's people. They catch people with drugs in there, and that's another thing. Like, mm. dude, you're in rehab, and, you know, there's walls around this place, and apparently... They've seen people throw drugs over, you oh, know. Fuck. And it's like, dude, you're in rehab, but it's the people that are in jail, and or they other yeah. it's rehab or, sure. or jail, and it's like yeah. they're pretending because they're parole. They have to tell their parole officer that they're serious about it, serious, and so they try yeah. to weed them out. And and you can tell the ones that are serious because it's like you got to. Uh, and I think, dude, who was it? I want to say it was Jess Camara. When she was talking about getting some help with some stuff she was working about in the bomb hole. Yep. Uh, one of her friends told her, like, if you're going to do it, go all in and do the program that they're yeah. laying out. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly it. When you're at rehab, 
don't fucking half-ass it and do this because you like this, but you're not going to do that. Sure. They want you to do re- uh, yoga. Go do yoga. Go do They it, want right. you to go to the gym and do this. You, you're going to do that. They want you to process. You're going to speak. And yep. it's like, be 100%. Because if you half-ass it, you're only getting half the help, you know? Mm-hmm. If you're in the corner sleeping when they're, like, the Buddha class is going on and you're supposed to be meditating and you're, you're the dude snoring, it's like, you know, you're not doing it. Like, let's do what they're doing. Yeah. Because the, the Buddha recut, because there's AA, right? Yeah. Every Sunday, we got to do the uh, Buddhist version of AA. Oh, sick. And it's dope, dude. Yeah. First, you meditate, and uh, it's cool. These two guys come in, and they like, they're not getting paid, dude. They just believe in this. And they went through Wasatch as well, and then they latched on to the Buddha version. I forget what it's called. It's called, like, Recovery uh, Wellness. I'll, I'll put a link to because it's really cool. You can actually... Uh, they have like a, a internet version of a Discord, basically with the, the oh, Buddha. Sick. But sick. they talk you through meditation, yeah. And then they read from their book and then talk about situations um, in life that, like, I don't know, just uh, through recovery, and uh, it's awesome. And then you go around the room and talk about how the reading affected you that they just read, and it's super cool that they come and do that every Wednesday. I can go there for life, or every Sunday. I can go there for life. Yeah. Actually, I, I got to hit up LeBlanc because he wants to go because he's he's kind of he's been practicing in meditation for geez like 20, 30 years. Forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like all of a sudden your your eyes are getting open to all these new things that yep. I didn't even think were possible. And and uh, the Buddhist recovery thing's crazy because like one of the things my therapist wanted me to do was like figure out how to forgive my father. Let's say and. Uh, it's like all of a sudden you're going through this week and they assign something for you to do. And I went and talked. There's a life coach there, Todd. He's like the most amazing dude. He has a podcast. And I'm going to link his podcast because this dude, everyone there is almost like telling you all this negative stuff. Yeah. You go see Todd and he is just like the bring you up dude. And, Sick. and like just tell you this most amazing story. And my therapist was like, go ask Todd what it means to forgive, you know? And he told me this story that... It took him one second to pull a book off the thing and talk about this girl that was abducted and was kept in a shack for, I want to say, 20 years. Oh, shit. Had a baby Damn. from the abductors Fuck. and got out. She escaped, uh, kept the baby. I think she was in there 10 years or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll link the story. She got out, had the baby, and she he the way he found out about her, he was watching the news when it happened, and she was on there and the first thing she did was forgive the Oof. dude that abducted her and he's like that's forgiveness you know that's crazy and it's like and then you're at the the buddhist thing and somehow the uh readings about forgiveness and he's like what the fuck yeah dude? yeah and it happened yeah. every week and i'm sure it's because the the topics cross over sure and all that. synchronicities yeah. and stuff you notice but, that stuff yeah. yeah but all of a sudden you're just picking up on it it literally happened every week it was yeah. crazy oh that's epic yeah i'm gonna we're gonna put a we're going to put an end on yeah, this. Yeah, we're at four hours and 23 minutes. And I'm <laughs> going to say, on behalf of fans of your work, and now there's a lot of work to be a fan of, your photos, which include <laughs> covers yes. and and two-page spreads and ads and everything. Even, even little quarter-sized. Quarter-sized, uh, <laughs> even little guys. <laughs> thumbnails. And and then the podcast and what you brought to the bomb hole and Thank the community and, and the funny videos and the surfing and the fucking banter. You know, how do you feel about this? Dude, I'm fucking hyped. Oh, wow. <laughs> Am I, I supposed was... to say so good my not? <laughs> I was going to say it, but you know what, dude? I was eating hot dog on a stick earlier, and I was saying, so good, my dog. Yeah. I am on next level, so good, my dog. I got a whole pack of dogs over here, dog. That's it, man. And uh, I just can't wait to say that once a week. Yeah, man. And uh, I want to keep the new show exciting, dude. I'm going to have some different rotating co-hosts. I'm going to do some just whatever I want. Fun. Keep it loose. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it fun. Keep it informative. Uh, talk about the culture. If people want to talk about their hard times with maybe recovery, because there's a lot of snowboarders that go through it, or they keep it down, you know? Like, I, it's crazy coming out and telling a story, but I've always wanted to, and 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 just to be done with it and hopefully help other people. And 
it's sick to be at that point, you know? Love you, brother. Word. Love you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Good night, and thank you for tuning in. Peace. Dude. Nice. That was long, bro. That was so long. Dude, Dude I forgot to hit record. Just kidding. I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it now. 425 plus. Oh, we should have stopped at 420. Oh, yeah. F and Rad shoutouts this week to Ethan and Angie Forche. Extra special thanks to Chris Grenier, whose time explaining his side of the story left me knowing he's an absolute saint who did everything in his power to save Ethan from the throes of addiction. Shoutouts to everyone who showed up for Ethan's intervention, Justin Meyer, Mike LeBlanc, Pat Bridges, and Travis Wood. Thank you, Trent Bush, and everyone who donated to Ethan's GoFundMe. And thank you to every single listener who's made it to the end. If you're struggling with addiction, please reach out to someone you trust. You're worth it, and there's a community out there ready to support you through your struggle. If your addiction is just coffee and you want to kick it like I have, you can get a free sample of New Greens by following New Greens and tagging two friends and New Greens on any F and Rad Instagram post. I love you all. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding, presented by Skyview and produced by F and Rad Productions. <laughs>